Bai Wu is 18 years old and he is the author of a published book called Gross Slime, starting today. Now he was walking down the street and said that he was really thrown out on the street to rent or escorted him out and changed the lock. If he could not find money for rent, then he would have to sleep on the street. And the prices of new books have fallen, and at the same time the price of the manuscript continues to rise. He quarreled in his pockets and, finding a few bills there, said that with the remaining money he could eat only a couple of times. But maybe he should try his luck in a gambling house. Then he saw the sign and thought, what difference does it make whether he buys lottery tickets or not, if his life has already been destroyed? He went into the building and shouted to the man that he had five tickets, saying that I hope he will be lucky. The man put five tickets on the table and asked him what, which one does he want? Bai Wu said that if he was really lucky, then. But then he noticed something strange and fell silent. Next to all five tickets, the percentage ratio was visible. Bai Wu was surprised and thought, what is going on? Did he drink too much yesterday? What is this all about? He tried to touch the sign where it says 100%. Is it really only he can see? Or is it some kind of illusion? Maybe he should try it. He took a ticket that had 100% on it and rubbed it with a coin. I saw that his reward there was 10 yuan. He was very surprised and told the boss that he needed two more. And he pointed his fingers at those tickets on which it was indicated that they had a 100% win. On one of these tickets he won 5 yuan, on the other 50 baths. Bai Wu thought, isn't this an illusion? It turns out that the numbers above the map are a chance of success. After that, he told the boss that he would take 10 more tickets. After the man put 10 tickets on his table, Bai, after analyzing them, thinking that there are 10 lottery tickets on the table with a 100% chance, he will try to take 0%. He rubbed a coin into the winnings, where there was a ticket with a 0 winning percentage, and it was written there that he needed to try again. Bai Wu asked if he could really see the success rate. The boss told him that sometimes gambling can hurt him, so you always need to be able to stop in time. But Bai Wu shouted to him that he needed 10 more tickets for 20 yuan and one ticket for 10 yuan. The boss asked him if he was sure he wanted to buy them. He can say goodbye to all his money. But after 10 minutes, 20, 420 yuan was already credited to his account. The man said what kind of bad luck he had. And Bai Wu thought that the percentages over lottery tickets show the chance of his success, but the amount of the winnings is not known to him and he said out loud that it would be much better if he knew the specific amount of his winnings. For example, the probability of receiving 100 yuan or another amount. If you think about it, how is the probability calculated? But then he noticed something in the box with the lottery ticket again and asked the boss to give him more of those. Taking these lottery tickets in his hands, he saw many different success rates, which tickets were 150% of success, some 20, 10. There was also a ticket that was 200% of success. The man told him to just accept his luck when he sees the results. This time he doesn't think about ellipsis. But Bai Wu said he feels so good. And he thinks he should take another chance. But the man was clearly not very happy about it. And he thought that he had already earned about 20,000. He can't be allowed to win anymore. Well, this time she would see if he was lucky or not. One lottery tickets Bai Wu decided to take with a 10% success rate of winning. There he earned 20 yuan and said that he was still rushing. But the man was very angry at him and thought that really six times in a row. How can this even be? And Bai Wu had already tried all the tickets and said that he was incredibly lucky today, so he won again. He looked at the box of lottery tickets again and wondered how much he could win. But after looking at the different percentages, he thought that now he understood everything. The percentage of success depends on the question asked by him. As long as he asks the right questions and benefits from the interest, then he will be able to fool the owner of this shop perfectly and measure your destiny. Bai Wu grinned and told the boss of this store that he was very lucky today. The man was already on the verge, asked what was his luck. He's just the reincarnation of the gambling god. Bai Wu thought that his abilities, however, seemed divine. And he told the boss that since he was so lucky today, couldn't he give him a few dozen tickets, maybe even packs? To which the boss replied that he admits that he is very lucky today, but however he should not become addicted. I'm afraid you told him not to worry. He's lucky today, maybe he'll get lucky in these tickets. He thinks he can win 20,000 yuan. He put another lottery ticket on the table and began to rub his winnings with a coin. The man knows about strained, but when he saw that Bai Wu had won, he exhaled. He was unlucky this time. It was written on the ticket that he should try again. The boss told him that Putin would let him say something in this world there is no such thing as endless luck. Therefore, he should not believe in her so much. Bai Wu thought he was right, but however, it's not about luck. Therefore, he began to try researching lottery tickets. But it was written everywhere that he should try again. 
The boss told him that he had warned him, but he did not listen to him. Having won that time, he ran out of luck for the whole year. Bai Wu analyzed all the tickets once again. They were all with 0% luck. Only one of them accounted for 30,000% of success. Bai Wu took this lottery ticket and thought that there are things that are difficult to explain. And one of them is his new ability. He just bought a lottery ticket with a 0% chance of winning. He once again asked the boss to give him those 20 lottery tickets. Bai Wu thought that he had bought them on purpose in order to divert suspicion from himself. And yet the owner did not suspect anything. The boss told him that it was fine, he would return him 1,000, and he would keep the rest for himself, and left him. His chance of success is 1 in 10. However, Bai Wu thanked the boss for his kindness and said he couldn't believe his luck had turned against him, and he thought that now it was time for him to use his new ability to the maximum. The boss told him to forget about it already, but then Bai Wu showed him another lottery ticket and said that luck had returned to him. He won another 20 yuan. The boss thought it was good that it was only 20 yuan, Otherwise he was already scared, thought he would lose a few more 1000. But then I screamed again that he had won again. He has a victory again. But after looking at how much he won, he asked, is it really only 10 yuan? His biggest win was 100, which is still very small. The boss thought that really this guy cloaks neither the demon himself. Bai Wu began to pray, saying that spirits, heaven and earth, give him 1 million yuan in the last ticket. The boss told him that even though he had lost many times, his luck and chances of winning 1 million would not increase. He should understand that. He won't be lucky. But then Bai Wu shouted that 50,000. He's incredibly lucky. The boss was terrified and shouted, what? As a result, another 15,000 yuan was transferred to our Bai account. Bai Wu asked the boss that he had recently said something about luck, to which the boss replied that it was nothing. But then he remembered something. The boss thought that printing factories distribute packages evenly, and since he has the winning tickets in his hands, his chances of success are incredibly low. And I turned to Bai Wu, he said that he was incredibly lucky today. How many more tickets does he want to take? And he himself thought that if not him, then someone else would come and buy these tickets in the Po, because only the losing ones remained in the pack. What a good business. Bai Wu thought about it and after analyzing all the tickets, he thought that what is the probability of success of the remaining lottery tickets. But when he saw that there was a lottery ticket with only 5% luck, he told the boss that he didn't need it. He's already used up his luck and thinks it's time for him to finish. And I thought that according to this coefficient, the chance of winning starts at 30% and ends with 5%. But the boss kept trying to persuade him and said that thanks to his luck, he was able to win as much as 35,000 yuan. Since he is so lucky today, then he should use his luck to the maximum. To which Bai Wu replied that he also understands that he can lose and lose several hundred yuan, and this is a lot of money. There is a time when it is better for them to stop. The boss thought he just didn't want to do it. Bai Wu added that he knows that the boss only wants the best for him, but he already feels great. Walking to the exit, he thought that today he was just incredibly lucky. However, can he use this power somewhere else besides the lottery? But stopping at the door, he thought that he wondered what the chance of success of opening this door was. He touched the door and saw that the chance of success to open it is 100%. Bai Wu was very happy and thought that he could see this too. But then he saw that the interest began to fall. He asked what was going on. He staggered away from the door, and when the chance of success was zero, a dog crashed into the door, breaking it. Bai Wu exhaled and thought that fortunately, he had avoided this disaster. This dog is so careless, she almost knocked him down. Then the boss was horrified and thought that how did he know that this would happen? Who is he? He grabbed Bai Wu's hand and said that he couldn't just leave after that. Bai Wu cursed and thought that had he really been burned. The man was very surprised and asked him what, how did he find out about it? Bai Wu thought that, of course, it looked very suspicious in his eyes. What is the chance that he will believe that he is a psychic? After analyzing this, he was given that this chance is 50%. Then Bai Wu thought that if he told him that his parents were known clairvoyants, the chance was already 64%, and he thought that the chance of success was growing, and he told the boss that he was actually a psychic, and let him not compare him to street charlatans, his parents have passed this ability on to him from generation to generation for 2,000 or 3,000 years since the Zhou dynasty. The boss felt cheated and asked what for 2,000 or 3,000 years. He's actually an educated man, and he doesn't really believe in his words. In addition, if his family had inherited such an ability for more than 2,000 years, then it would be famous. He's already heard that you're like that. Then Bai Wu noticed that the success rate began to fall. 
and he thought that, of course, he was thinking straight from the point of view of science. And he exhaled and said that his family has existed since ancient times. If they were to tell everyone about their abilities, they could be used in dynastic wars. Hearing this, the boss was stunned, and the success rate began to rise again. Bai Wu thought that he had a chance of success, began to rise, after which he added that, by the way, he had already seen his psychic techniques. That success rate has increased to 80%. The man said it could be. Bai Wu said it was true. He just counts the chance of success, lucky or not, will be decided by the will of heaven. Those 10 losses were a heavenly omen. The chance of success increased to 90%, and the man said that so that's it. And he didn't believe that such luck could exist at all. It turns out that he can win several million just by wanting to, right? Bai had already pointed to the door that the dog had broken and said that when he wanted to leave, he suddenly felt that something was wrong. And he also heard a whisper that warned him, and that's why he took a couple of steps back. The man grabbed his hand and was already calling him Mr. Said that could he ask him if it wasn't difficult to calculate something. Bai Wu thought it was an opportunity to test his new ability and said it wasn't really very difficult. In this case, they pay attention to the causes and consequences of the response. He just got a good fortune that can help him deal with it. There are causes and effects. And I asked him that, based on the above, what does he need to calculate? The man was very happy and said that he would like him to help her. His hometown was recently demolished. He never received compensation. He would like to find out from the master how much money he can be paid for this. Then Bai Wu asked him what was a reasonable compensation for him. The man thought about it and said that there are 200 or 300 square meters, and each square costs about 10,000. Hearing this, Bai Wu thought about it and thought that, let's say, what is the chance that the boss will receive compensation of 2 million? He was given that 100%. Then Bai Wu thought, what if 3 million? He was given 100% again. Then Bai Wu thought, what about 4 million? I gave out 100% again. Bai Wu thought, what if 5 million? Then he was given 10%. Bai Wu thought, what if 4 and a half? All this time the man was looking at him very carefully. Then he asked him if he had found out the answer. To which Bai Wu replied that if he asked for 4.3 million tons, he would guarantee that he would not be refused. If he asks for 4.5 million, then the chance of success will be 80%. And if he asks for 4, 8 million, then the chance will be 50%. The man was surprised and said that 4 million, is it really that much? But is he sure it's true? To which Bai Wu replied that if he did not believe him, then he could call and find out directly from them. And he thought that soon he would realize how cool his ability is. The man told him that he would call them right now. A minute later, when the man finished his conversation, he said that he completely agreed. He couldn't even believe it. And grabbing Bai again. Wu by the hand told him that he was really a real psychic. Causes and consequences. So that's what it's all about. He gave him such a useful prediction. He will give him 300,000 yuan as his thanks. Bai Wu could barely contain his joy and said that heavens will be done. And he himself thought that how lucky he was today. After some time, he received a notification from the bank, which said that the Bank of China notifies him of the receipt of funds on his card in the amount of 300,000 yuan. Bai Wu said that he felt so uncomfortable. But in fact he was elated and thought that getting 300,000 was so easy. With this ability to see the success rate, he could fulfill any of his desires. Then they said goodbye. Coming out of this store, Bai Wu thought that just fine, as long as he uses this gold mine correctly, he will be able to change his life, achieve success. Then he saw that dog and thought that dog was still here. But maybe he's looking for someone here, too. He was given that it was 100%. Then Bai Wu said that since he had helped him earn a lot of money, maybe he would help him find its owner. Then this dog took the ball in his teeth, and it popped out. He started hitting the walls of buildings and hitting the dog on the head, bounced off and hit Bai Wu's head. The dog began to whine, and Bai thought that how his master copes with him. We need to find its owner, but where? After that, the dog rushed off somewhere, angering all the people in its path. Bai Wu ran after him and said that she could handle it without him. But should he follow her? Three minutes later in Huzhong Park, the dog kept running and Bai Wu followed her. Then he saw a girl in front of him, who was standing by the bench and taking selfies. He was delighted with her beauty and thought that this girl was right 9 out of 10. Bai Wu, seeing the girl, thought, what is the chance that this girl is the owner of this dog? He was given that with a probability of 100%. Bai Wu thought that it turns out that this beautiful girl is the owner of the dog. Initially, he wanted to help the dog find the owner because she helped him. He will try to talk to this girl using his new ability. But then he saw that she was not paying attention to him or her dog at all, but continued to take selfies. Bai Wu thought she had time for a selfie that she had lost her dog. 
That girl turned around and saw the dog and told him that he also had a husky. Their dogs are so similar. Bai Wu thought that she couldn't even recognize her own dog. Why does he get the feeling that he is being deceived? The girl started stroking this dog and said that she even barks the same way. But her Oreo is more fun and much smarter. Bai Wu wanted to tell her something. But the girl did not pay attention to him at all and said that her family gave 501 bags of natural Oreo feed. And her dog's fur is smoother than his. Bai Wu started coughing and thought that really this cutie seriously does not recognize her dog. Then the girl turned to him and asked him if something was really wrong. Bai Wu exhaled, said that the fact was that it wasn't his dog. But her girlfriend laughed and said that it wasn't a very witty joke, because her dog was tied to that bench. But she saw that her dog had chewed through the collar and ran away. Five minutes later, the girl apologized and thanked him for returning the dog to her. I'm afraid he said that everything was fine. He was very happy to help her. And at that moment he found her page on social networks and started looking at her photos. He thought it was his first time adding a beautiful girl as a friend. He looked through her photos and saw how her dog behaves at home. She tears up furniture, spoils clothes. Therefore, Bai Wu could not stand it and said that they were having so much fun that the whole house was collapsing. If he had behaved like that, he would have been kicked out long ago. However, it's not for him to tell her about it. Because he himself was kicked out of his rented apartment today, even the lock was changed. The girl said that you are quite an interesting story, but it's time for her. When the girl left, something came to Bai Wu. He thought that if he could see the success rate, then why would he pay rent at all? He can become rich and just buy a house for himself. But, by the way, how can he get rich and buy a house then? 300,000 won't even be enough for the initial payment. He needs to come up with a quick and effective way to make money. A quick way to make money. Maybe then this lottery. Or antiques. Then I passed by the buildings, on which it was written that collectible antiques. Bai Wu decided to walk there. When he entered there, everyone started calling him and saying that an 80,000-year-old set called Tang Zion Kai had arrived available for everyone to buy. Someone said that the calligraphy of Tang and the song of 30,000 particles only now one person who came up will get a discount. And someone said that let them look, because this is a porcelain cup from the Northern Song Dynasty, and quite inexpensive, he's going to sell it for 50,000. They also said that there was no need to pass by, because these are the best works of his idol. A crowd surrounded him. Two men who watched this picture said that what kind of a fool is he? Judging by his gait and actions, it is clear that he is still a beginner. Bai Wu was also at a loss and thought that these people were treating him like a brainless novice. Easy prey, and all in order to rip off his money. Then, unbeknownst to himself, he sat down next to some guy who told him that he inherited it all. His last name was Li, and his ancestor's name was Tang Shizong Lai Shimin. Bai Wu pretended to be very happy and said that if he didn't mind, he would look at his goods, and he thought that they didn't even guess. That a beginner like him has such an unusual ability. No one will ever deceive him with her. So, what is the chance that there is a real antique among this junk? He was given that it was 100%. Bai Wu thought about it and wondered if it could be that it was all faked. Why does he smell some kind of trick? Something is wrong, but what? Let's say he knows it's all antiques, but he doesn't know how old he is. If he knew that, then he might find something rare. Then he should ask the question a little differently. What is the chance to get an antique worth 10,000? It was 0%. Then Bai Wu asked the question what, what about 5,000? He was also given a zero. Then Bai pointed to some kind of bracelet and asked the man if he would sell this. A man named Lee said he had a sharp eye. This is the most valuable antique here. Sixie herself has worn it in the past. Sixie is the great dowager empress of Gypsy China, who ruled from 1861 to 1908. The man said that she would give him this bracelet for 20,000 yuan. Bai Wu got up and thought that some garbage could cost 20,000 yuan. Of course, he is not an expert, but it seems to him that he has just been deceived. Then the man started shouting at him not to leave, because he was going to give him a discount and asked him what about 10,000 yuan. But Bai Wu only quickened his pace and thought that, as expected, most of them are ordinary street scammers. I wonder how much he will be able to lower the price. He decided to take 10,000 as a price determinant. And I thought that there was a chance that there would be something more expensive than 10,000 yuan in this shop. He was given that it would be 10%. Then he asked what, what about 20,000? He was also given 10%. He asked what about 30,000? Everything also amounted to 10%. He asked the question what, what about 200,000? Everything was also 10%. Then Bai thought he thought he could make a lot of money. The man whose tricks Bai was standing on now thought that it looked like he needed to teach this guy a lesson. 
and I told him that buying antiques depends only on his vigilance. He conducts his business honestly, and unlike others, he never tries to deceive his customers. Therefore, if something interests him, then let him not hesitate and ask him. He pointed to the vase and told him to look at it. This is a pretty good product, but he was given that the value of this product is 0%. But Bai Wu said no and pointed to another green vase and said he wanted this. The value of this product was 500,000. Bai Wu thought that he was not an easy beginner, whom he could deceive so easily. Having the ability to see the percentage of success in his hands, he Bai Wu will immerse himself in the world of antiques and become an expert appraiser in the future. Let the formation of a new legend begin. This man called Bai Wu a jerk and thought, what's wrong with him? Why is he in such a hurry? Does he really not care what kind of object it is? Ten bronze items out of nine fake ones were sold and one item remained. How can he inflate the prices of this garbage? And at this time, Bai Wu thought that this fatty would surely take advantage of the opportunity and try to inflate his price. He slapped himself on the cheek and thought that he shouldn't have shown his interest too soon after he saw the success rate. He was so overjoyed that he lost his vigilance. After that, the man handed him a vase and said that he seemed to have good taste. However, he should listen to his advice and first look at this porcelain. He should look at it more closely. He thinks it's very interesting to him, so he will only tell the truth. He should look at this circle, because it is completely handmade. He hit the jug and asked him if he could hear that clear sound. However, it is not cheap, and its cost is about 50,000. If he can resell it, he'll make a lot of money. Bai Wu made an interested face, and he himself thought that his price did not exceed a couple of yuan. The sly fat guy offers him not a wine glass about some garbage. But Tun came up with something and thought, wait a minute, could it be that this fat man does not suspect that he has an antique worth 500,000 yuan? And apologizing to the man, he said that he thinks that buying antiques is an interesting thing. This porcelain is also not bad, but he is not interested in it. However, he was very interested in this wine glass. The man immediately changed his face and asked if he really liked this bronze glass. He has a very sharp eye. It's not a bad antique. He bought it here in China for 8,000. If he really wants it, then he can sell it to him at the original price. No more no less, so how about this? Bai Wu has already evaluated this glass with his new ability and estimated it at 500,000 yuan and even more. And I thought that 8,000 is nothing compared to the real price of this glass. This fat guy does not even suspect anything about the real value of this bronze glass. What is the possibility that he knows about the real value of this glass? It seemed that 0%. Bai Wu thought that, of course, the percentage of success is on top, and what he has on his mind is generally on his side. What if he pretends to be a beggar novice now? Then he thinks that he will drop him the price regardless of what offer he makes. It will not affect him in any way as long as he knows the lowest price. If he uses his new ability, then he can find out the lower price. And he asked what is the chance of getting this glass for 4,000. It seemed to him that 100%. Bai Wu was very surprised and thought that. Is it really 100% for 4,000? What about 2,000 then? For 2,000, success showed the same 100% and even for 1,000 rubles. After a while, when Bai Wu had gone through enough options, he thought, okay, don't be so greedy. 2,000 is also a good price. And I have already turned to the man and said that 8,000 is too much for him. And I asked him that he could drop the price a little for him. The man said that in fact 8,000 is not too expensive for such a high quality antique. With his keen eyes, he can give him a chance to bid and the man himself thought that such garbage costs only 10 yuan. It turns out that it's so easy to make money on this. Bai Wu without thinking twice said that 2,000. The man was surprised and thought that this kid cut the price too much for 2,000, which is also profitable. Bai Wu asked him if he wanted to sell this glass to him for 2,000. The man exhaled and said that it was only 2,000. In general, he received two items worth 8,000, and all the others were sold to a beautiful girl yesterday. After that, Bai paid for his goods. When Bai had already gone far enough, the man was very happy and said that items that cost a couple of yuan were sold for 1,000. It's so easy to sell trash if you display it as an antique. Some newbie still wants to learn how to earn. What kind of stupid idiot is he? Thanks to him, he earned as much as 2,000. And yesterday the girl bought an old thermos from him for 9,000. And today this kid bought a bronze wine glass for 2,000. Buying is not as good as selling. How easy it is to make money. The man who was sitting next to him asked him what and what is he proud of here. After that, he turned to this man, whose name is Lao Wang, and asked him that wasn't this the girl who sold her thermos yesterday. Looks like he's in trouble. Lao Wang was scared, but still said he didn't care about it. 
When the girl approached him, he told her that, unfortunately, this shop is a small business, so as soon as the item is sold, they do not provide a refund. But the girl, it turns out, did not come for this at all. She asked what was missing. Why is he already gone? Lao Wang asked her what is it. The girl said that there was a bronze wine glass here yesterday. Where is it now? She's going to pay 10,000 for it, not even 50,000. Hearing such a big price, Lao Wang was very surprised and asked her how much she said. And I thought, is this bronze glass really so valuable? But wait, that guy couldn't have known about it, could he? This girl wondered if this fat man was so stunned that he was just looking at her. Then she told him that if he was not satisfied with the price she offered, then she could increase it. And I asked him that for 60,000 he would sell her this glass. Is it still not enough for him? Then how about 70,000? And 80,000? The girl was already losing patience and asked him if he could hear her at all. Lao Wang sobbed because he was so fooled and said that an inexperienced goose plucked the old tail. His 80,000 are missing. His friend, who was sitting next to him, laughed at him and said that he had never deceived anyone. And now, looking at him, so many ideas are born in his head. This garbage, it turns out, can be sold for a few 1,000 yuan. Lao Wang asked the girl what if for 100,000. The girl said that it was great, she agreed to 100,000. Hearing this, Lao Wang fainted. The man who was sitting next to him told the girl that he should let her tell him something. Lao Wang had just sold that bronze glass she was looking for. And does she know how much he sold it? For 2,000 yuan. He thought it was just junk that cost a few yuan. The girl asked what? Did he really sell it? Then Lao Wang got up and told her to stop, because he would be back soon. But then screams were heard. Someone asked, is it really 300,000? This kid is so lucky. A bronze wine glass that costs 300,000. Then Van was laying. His neighbor turned and told him that they were talking about some kind of bronze glass there. Is it by chance the same glass that he just sold for a penny? The girl thought that was another problem. But Bai refused to sell this glass for 300,000. Then he was asked that if so, then maybe for 350,000. The old man told him that 400,000 and no more. Bai, Wu sighed and was about to put away this glass when the old man stopped him and told him not to hurry. Bai Wu thought that this old man was a real expert. He would be difficult to deal with. And I asked him, what about 501,000? The old man smiled at him and said that the younger generation at this time is so extraordinary. He's willing to pay the price. Lao Wang was completely desperate and said that as many as 500,000. The man who was standing next to him grabbed his hand and said, Is Lao Wang here too? He heard that this jug was bought at the nearest shop. He does not know how much he bought it for, but he, but he is sure that the seller has already regretted a lot. And asked Lao Wang what was wrong with his face. Did he really sell it? Is it really possible that the unique Lao Wang with many years of experience sold such a thing? Then this girl appeared and said that she was offering 550,000 for this glass. Bai Wu, noticing this girl, thought that the girl with white skin had long legs, she was such a beauty. She appeared like Miss Kyan Jin, straight goddess of luck. But do not test her patience, of course, she has the ability to see the percentage of success. He won't abuse it. The girl thought that what was he staring at like that? Apparently there was something wrong here. She needed this glass of wine at all costs, otherwise her grandfather would never forgive her. Bai looked at the glasses, thought that did she really want to buy this bronze glass too? Maybe he also wants to resell it only for even more expensive. It makes him think. Then he saw the man from whom he bought this glass, who was summoned by Lao Wang and waved to him, told him that he had also come. A bronze glass that he bought from him for 2,000. It turns out that it costs more than half a million yuan. Everyone started whispering around, asking if it really wasn't Lao Vavan. Someone else said that even a resourceful Lao Vanna can be fooled. Did he sell this glass for only 2,000? Next time, maybe he will also learn how to run a successful business. Here the girl could not stand it anymore and once again asked by what for 550,000. Would he sell her that glass? Then the old man intervened and asked the girl for forgiveness, saying that he was the first. To which the girl told him that, in fact, he had not agreed with him. The old man thought it was a girl. Why does she remind him of someone so annoying? And they both stared at Bai. Yu Bai Wu said that it wasn't that he didn't want to sell this jug, but wouldn't it be great if they agreed among themselves first? The girl thought that whoever has a higher price won. These are the rules of the antique market. He's really a fool if he doesn't understand the obvious things. After that, the two began to bargain. The old man offered 560,000. The girl offered 570. When the man wanted to offer 700,000 already, he stopped and asked the girl that she reminded him of someone. Did she know Lao Gia? 
The girl said that he was her grandfather and asked what he had, what was he? The old man laughed and said that the water had spilled into the dragon temple, he was his old friend. Had he asked her to buy that bronze glass? His name is Lai Waigo, just like his grandfather. He is a professor in the history department at Hanju University. The girl said that her grandfather talked about him very often. Lai Waigo asked her that, by the way, how is he doing there? The girl said he was fine, he even runs in the morning. But they were interrupted by Bai um, who asked them if they would buy this glass or not. The girl looked at him menacingly and said that she would. And already turning to grandpa, Liz, told him to go first. If he has free time, he can meet her grandfather and have tea. She will personally drive him to her grandfather. Then Bai Wu's message came that 600,000 yuan had been credited to him. He thought that even though there was a small mistake in the translation, he still turned out to be in a big plus. To become a billionaire the day before he can already carry the title of Master of Antiques. Maybe they should try to hook up with her and ask the girl to give him her number. He will add it to WeChat. The girl was confused and then Bai Wu told her that she looked like a person who was interested in antiques. If he had something interesting, he could write to her. The girl told him that it was enough to fool around, and she thought that this was not the case with him. Bai said she was a rich girl. The girl was embarrassed and asked him what he was allowing himself, and I thought it was very close. Failure blocked luck. Does he really think that he is blessed by the goddess of luck? And she told him that he was faithful, that he was older than her and could afford to talk to her in this way. Then Bai Wu thought, what is the probability that she is older than him? He was given that the probability is 0%. Then he thought that she really has something to be proud of, however, he has the ability to see the percentage of success granted to him by heaven itself. With this ability, he can deliver her, trust her. What is the probability that she is now 20 years old? He was given that this is 100%. Bai Wu thought that these girls are 20 years old and he is the same age, but his birthday is September 30th, this girl. After that, he began to sort through the months to find out what months she was born in. October, November, December did not fit. Bai Wu thought, why? Maybe she's younger than him. Is this a coincidence? Maybe she has the same date of birth as him. And it completely coincided. The girl asked him what was wrong with him. Bai Wu said she shouldn't worry about anything. And he threw himself into reflections and thought that he was born at 1523. Then what are the chances that she did not degenerate younger in the interval from 7 a.m. to 12? But the success rate of this outcome was 0%. Then he thought that maybe she was born after 17 p.m. But this outcome of events was also 0%. There you thought that he didn't either, but what about 16? Then maybe 1530. But everything was by. But finally, after learning the answer to the question, it turned out that the difference was only a minute from his birthday. And he thought, does she really want him to call her big sister? But that's not going to happen. The girl turned away from him and said that he was some kind of fool. But Bai stopped her and told her, calling her a younger sister, so that she would not think badly of him. And I thought I should surprise her first. Then he said she was 20 years old and she was born at the end of October, wasn't she? The girl was shocked and asked how he found out about it. Bai Wu asked her again, asking that how did he know? Well, of course he read everything. The girl thought, is this really another stalker with a terrible acting game? Then she turned away from him and said that you'll think about it. Here she will also listen to the next freak. Bai Wu thought how much she underestimated him, and he told her to let him guess again. She was born on September 30th at 1530. The girl was even more surprised and asked him what he had just said. A crowd gathered around them. Who did you ask that how is this possible? Another asked if he was a psychic. And the other one said that look, this girl is just shaking all over. Are you the luckiest person since the 21st century? The elderly man said that he was not surprised, he often saw guys spying on young girls. Insults rained down on his address. Bai Wu thought that how it all turned out, even though he explained everything in great detail. But he stopped the girl again and said that she was born earlier than 1530, which means that it is 1524. And I thought it wasn't difficult. He went on to say that she was born on September 30th at 1530 and 36 seconds. Then the girl couldn't stand it and dialed her mother who asked her what, did something really happen? The girl asked her mother what time she was born, to which her mother replied that about 1530 on September 30th. And calling her daughter by the name of Kin Kin, she asked her what had she really forgotten. Kin Kin tried to whisper to her mother what, and if more precisely, wasn't she born at 1524? Mom asked her to stop, because she doesn't remember exactly. She's going to look at the birth certificate now. After three minutes of intense waiting, 
After that, mom replied to Kin Kin that she was born at 15.24 and 36 seconds, and I asked my daughter how she found out about it. She turned to Bai Wu, waiting for his answers. Bai Wu told her that it must surely be very interesting that how did he know all this, right? Kin Kin with Nova turned away from him and said that she was absolutely not interested. He should not waste her time. Bai overtook Kin Kin and told her not to be nervous, because he just guessed right. Kin Kin said that he guessed the time of her birth exactly to the second, and now he says that he just guessed. Did he think she was stupid? Bai Wu didn't pay any attention to her at all and thought that her beauty could be compared to a deity. She is the incarnation of a deity, and he said that she would be calmed down now, the dream would tell her everything, how he found the answer. Kin Kin took a step back and asked him that he would tell her another lie, right? Bai Wu called her a goddess girl and said that all psychics should not be called charlatans. She had seen him before, hadn't she? If his guesses are correct, then she is wearing black panties today. Kin Kin was embarrassed and told him to shut up. Bai Wu thought that, by the way, this girl probably doesn't have a boyfriend, does she? And it was 100% information. Then Kin Kin couldn't stand it and asked him, what was he staring at like that? He had to leave her. Bai Wu thought that if his suggestion was correct, then this girl hates men and does not start a relationship on purpose. He's not sure that's the case, of course, but it was 100% information. Seeing this, Bai Wu became nervous and said that this was not good. This is already a very bad sign. Kin Kin was shaking all over and asked him what he had just said. Bai told her that she understood everything perfectly, didn't she? Kin Kin took his hand and told him to follow her. She took him into a corner and pressed him against the wall, after which she told him to tell her everything now. How does he know all this? Bai Wu still remained as unperturbed and told her that he had just guessed right. Kin Kin said that it was simply impossible. Bai Wu asked her if she didn't believe him and he can also guess the location of her three moles, based on pure calculations without personal interest. Bai Wu added Kin Kin as a friend, and he told her that if he found anything interesting, he would write to her right away, and she can also contact him at any time. Then they said goodbye. Bai Wu thought that recognizing other people's games using the ability to see the success rate was too cheesy. However, he did not expect to see such a beautiful girl here, and also to test his ability on her. Then he saw the old man to whom he was going to sell this glass and thought that he was calling someone. Can he hear their conversation? What is the probability that Kin Kin is looking for a home? The success rate was 0%. Bai Wu was surprised and thought that the success rate had changed. The success rate started to grow, now it was already 20%, and he thought, did he really find Kin Kin or not? Well, could it be that it's related to him? His acquaintance with Kin Kin was foreshadowed by the heavens themselves. However, but then he thought of something and asked, what is the chance that this old man is communicating with someone from the Kin Kin family? The success rate was 100%. Therefore, he decided to write a message to Kin Kin, in which he wrote that for 600,000 he was ready to tell her fortune again. Her secret, apparently, is about antiques. It seems to him that they already know about him at home. Kin Kin was surprised and texted him what he meant. Bai Wu wondered what the odds were that Kin Kin's parents would call her in the next half hour. The success rate was 100%. And if you slow down a little, maybe in 15 or 5 minutes, the success rate was 100%. Then he wrote to her that he had read a little fortune for her, and his congratulations her parents will contact her within 5 minutes. At that moment, Kin Kin's mom called and told her to hurry up and come home. Rather, they want to ask her something. Bai Wu said it looked like she would have to explain everything well. Of course, parents are above everything else. It seems that from the moment he left his home and got the ability to see the percentage of success, his world has changed a lot. However, he still doesn't have a beautiful girlfriend. Then his phone rang in surprise, he almost dropped it. His mother called him. Bai Wu picked up the phone and asked her why she had called him so suddenly. Did something really happen? And it turns out that mom had set up a blind date for him. Bai Wu asked his mother that if she was serious to him, then he would not go anywhere for only 20 years. At 2015 Bai was already sitting in the cafe. He was looking at a picture of a girl who was supposed to come to him on a date. Blindly said that since mom promised, he had to come. It's strange, such a beautiful girl probably has no end of guys. So why would she go on a blind date? Then this woman walked into this cafe, followed by Kin Kin. Bai Wu thought, isn't this Kin Kin? But why is she here? But could it be? And asked that what is the chance that this girl is familiar with Kin Kin? The success rate was 100%. From this information, Bai Wu already choked and thought that how did this beauty meet Kin Kin? One wants to break off the relationship, and the other, on the contrary, to keep their too violent plot. Then this woman noticed Bai Wu and pulled her hand away from Kin Kin was very upset about something, 
and Kin Kin was already crying out of anger. Then even Bai Wu was scared, who thought that this murderous look. A girl came up to him and said that he was probably Bai Wu. She said her name was Mu Yir, and she thinks he's a very nice person and she offered to meet him directly. Qin Qin cried harder than ever. Bai Wu, noticing this, said that it was somehow wrong. Mu Yir asked him if he really didn't like her. Bai Wu said that's not the point. No matter how you look at it, it's good everywhere. And I thought that she was just an angel. Mu Yir came closer to him, pinched his ear that she was absolutely serious, she wasn't joking. Then she snuggled up to him. Bai Wu thought, is this really all for real? But the success rate was 0% and he thought, why does he have such a bad feeling? Then the girl pushed him away and kissed him. Seeing this Kin Kin, she was completely upset and was about to leave. Mu Yir asked Bai Wu that maybe they would go. Bai Wu had not yet moved away from the kiss and was a little confused, but he asked her what was going where. Mu Yir said that how to wear, to her house, meet her parents. But there were tears in the girl's eyes. Bai Wu thought that Mu Yir didn't look happy at all. Even if she didn't force herself, it seemed to him that she was using him to break Kin Kin's heart. And the chance of success was 100%. Although he will say that he did not take advantage of the opportunity himself. Most likely, what happened was due to compassion. If it wasn't for his ability and his familiarity with Kin Kin, it would be hard to tell if her feelings were serious. The girl got up and asked him if he was an idiot or not. Bai Wu thought that did she really want him to meet her parents? The success rate was 100%. Wasn't she joking? Doesn't she think of him as a shield? Is she really looking for a guy? Maybe she's looking for a boyfriend in order to appease her parents. The success rate was 100%. Then Bai Wu called out to the girl. She turned around and asked what? Did he regret what had just happened? Bai Wu thought, does she really think that if she is beautiful, then everything is allowed to her? He won't buy such a cheap trick. But then he saw that she started crying and said that, of course not, he was not sorry. And I thought, what the fuck is going on here anyway? Why is she so upset about Kin Kin's departure? Could it be that they were dating? And what is Muir thinking about now? After some time, the two of them arrived at Muir's home. When she entered the house, she called her parents, said that she was back. Then a disgruntled mom came into the room and told her that she had returned from a blind date again. And who did she bring this time? Muir told her mother that this is her new boyfriend and his name is Bai Wu. Bai Wu was shaking all over with fear and said his name was Bai. And he himself thought that when he came here, it felt like he had been dragged against his will. And everything that was happening here was just to play along with her. And this is not a hot scene called a hero rescues a beautiful girl. Then mom immediately calmed down and made a happy face and put the broom behind her back. Told her daughter that did she really have a boyfriend? Why hadn't she mentioned it before? Then shouts were heard from the other room. Did he really hear right now? Bai Wu was even more scared. He thought that this sound was really him with a knife or was it coming? Papa Muir came out of the room and grabbed Bai Wu by the hand, saying that this young man looks so excited. Muir nudged Bai Wu and told him that they had actually known each other since high school. His grades were drunk so much that they broke up, and suddenly you connected on this date. Mom was happy. She said that it was a pity that the reason for the separation was some grades from high school. The father pulled Bai Wu to him and said that they were standing in the aisle, as if they were not relatives. They have to pass about his wife will cook them a delicious lunch. Mom turned to her daughter, asked her what? Why didn't she warn her? After all, this is such a good event. The father brought the two of them into the bedroom and tapped Bai Wu on the shoulder, told him to sit down and talk. And he and his wife are now preparing fruit for them. Then the man left. Bai Wu asked Mu Yir if she was really their daughter. Success said that she is their biological child 100% after which they both laughed. After that, mom burst into the room with fruit, but her father pushed her out of there and asked her what she was doing. After that, he apologized for the trouble and told them to continue where they left off, and his wife will cook the most delicious soup tonight. Muya said that her parents had long hinted that it was time for her to find a boyfriend. Amir they are just very concerned about her future. Then Bai Wu realized something and thought that it turns out he's the first guy she's brought home in a long time isn't it? All this time her parents were standing outside the door and listening. The father was angry and asked why nothing was happening until now. He showed this guy a special sign. Didn't he understand what to do? Mom exclaimed, asking if he really doubted the sincerity of this boy. Her father covered her mouth with his palm and said softly, she must not let them hear her. And he thought that if they didn't try, they would never know and wouldn't be able to test him. If he doesn't dare, Bai Wu thought that he had not quite figured out the situation yet, he would like to check something. 
Then he turned to Muir, but the girl was afraid of something and jumped away from him to the wall. Baiwu said he meant they needed to sit down and talk. Muir apologized to him and said that she needed some time so that she could get used to their relationship. Bai Wu asked her that if the fact that he approaches her makes her nervous, then maybe he should keep his distance from her. Then he walked away. Mu Yu was shaking all over, but she took a step forward and thanked him, saying that, however, it was not necessary. It's okay, she can get used to it. Bai Wu thought that she was a beauty, no matter how you look at it. But if she really is his girlfriend, then what is the probability that she will feel comfortable if he takes her hand? The success rate was 80%. Then he asked what if he hugged her. The success rate was already 76%. After which Bai Wu asked what if he kissed her. The success rate has already been 59%. Bai Wu was shocked and thought, is he really that lucky? But no, he should not deceive himself, because this girl uses him to deceive her parents. He is physically and mentally healthy, a handsome and intelligent young man and still single. What should he do in such a situation? First of all, this girl must be honest with herself. He wanted to reach out and take her hand, but he slipped and fell. Then the parents burst into the room. The father forgot about the knife and asked what happened to them, and asked your daughter if she's okay. When Muir saw him, he asked his father, what is he doing here? Mom took her husband by the ear and said that everything was fine. It's just that his dad is very worried about her. And taking him out of the room, I thought that he had run into the room with a cleaver. Bai Wu was still sitting on the floor and was very scared. He wondered what had just happened here. He hasn't done anything yet, and he pushed him here himself. So why did he fly up here with a cleaver? He exhaled, but then he heard her parents' screams. The wife slapped her husband in the face and asked him what? Did he really not see that he was their daughter's real boyfriend at all? He's just crazy. Moreover, why is he walking around the apartment with a kitchen knife? Her father told her that even if this guy has a kind heart, they can't blindly trust their daughter to him and all because she is too beautiful. Hearing this, Bai Wu thought about what and how he could then claim the place of her boyfriend. Everything is going absolutely not according to the script. Then Muir came up to him and asked him if he was alright. Bai Wu thought that nevertheless, this family, how long does he have to play this role? He got up and told her that he thought they should discuss the matter a little later. Muir got angry at him and asked him if he was really sorry. Bai Wu was firm in his decision and asked her if she really thought that she could hide everything from her parents with this theater. Yes, he wants to end there. They are trying for her because they care about her, and she wants to deceive them. The only way to solve her problem is just to talk to her parents. After that, Bai Wu decided to leave. Muir grabbed his arm and asked him to stop. She told him to help her just this once. Bai Wu just grinned. The parents were still standing outside the door. Father asked what was there. But Little was delighted and said that this young couple was fighting because of him. It's so unusual. But then he stopped and said that, most likely, they had a fight because he flew into them with a knife. It's not the time to think about it, they have to stop it. Then they rushed to their room, but they saw that Bai had already left her and moved to the exit. He thought he could stay here, but the only thing he did was hurt her. He started to put on his shoes, but the woman shouted at him not to put them on. She apologized and said she accidentally ran soup on his shoe. Muir asked mom, what, why was she with the soup here and not in the kitchen? Her father also asked her that how could she be so irresponsible? If his shoes are so wet, how will he get home? To which mom replied that so let him stay. Bai Wu thought that he had already explained everything to Mu Yer, and how she would act would depend only on her. Then her father called out to him, and asked him if he can spend the night with them today. To which Baya replied that today he had to go to the hospital to visit his grandmother's niece, otherwise her son was ill. The son of his seven grandmother's niece is already there, so he will have to leave them. After which he left and slammed the door. The father and mother began to count, because they did not understand that my grandmother's niece's son was sitting there. In the evening, Bai Wu was lying in his bed and said that it had become very easy to earn money. Of course, this is very good. And by the way, it would be very nice to visit that antique shop tomorrow. The next day Lao Wang was frantically rubbing his antiques. He said that yesterday he went into the negative because of some newcomer, and also publicly disgraced himself. He had a great opportunity. But then we saw the shadow of his visitor and, raising his head, he smiled and said that he was welcome. Let her look and choose an item that he likes. But it was Bai Wu. He told him that he would be able to replenish his goods and asked him if he had anything interesting. Lao Wang said what a coincidence he came on time again. And I asked him what he wanted to see. And he thought that this time he had prepared something unusual for him. If he buys it, he'll make a lot of money. Bai told him to show it to him already. Lao Wang told him to take a look because he had brought all these things from the nearest village. Bai Wu asked that how much does it cost. Lao Wang said 50,000 for the whole set. 
did he know that he had talked to the villagers and from them he learned that one family had inherited Lai Shimon towards the end of the Sui dynasty, and he had a huge fortune. Therefore, that porcelain is incredible. But he stopped because he saw the face of Bai, who was very happy and asked, Is it really Tan Senkai? Lao Wang said that most likely yes. Well, judging by the carving and texture color, this porcelain is most likely made according to the Tang Sanka Tsai technique, and for him is his best customer. But Bai Wu does not listen to him. I asked him what he would sell it for how much. Lao Wang said 60,000 and asked him what he thought about it. Bai was surprised and asked if it was really 60. But 1,000? Why is he so kind today? Are the kits really worth 60,000? In his opinion, this porcelain is of excellent quality. Even if he goes to a porcelain factory, wouldn't it be easier to buy a dozen or a hundred of them? Lao Wang said how wrong he was. But Bai Wu interrupted him again and patted him on the shoulder and said that no 60,000 is not enough. If he buys the whole set for 60,000, then his conscience will torment him. Lao Wang tensed up and said that his words touched his heart. To which Bai said that he could not allow such a kind person to suffer. Yes, let him let him think, and he will tell him his price. Bai Wu thought that this porcelain was definitely made according to the Tang Sen Sai technique. Authenticity was 14.28%. Apparently, it's still a fake. Phew, but wait a minute. 14, 28%, right. Does this mean that the original is present among these seven porcelain pieces? Is that even accurate? If this is true, then it will be worth at least a million. The probable was 100% and the cost of 1 million was 90%. He turned to Lao Wang and asked him what he should repeat, how much is there for the whole set? Lao Wang chuckled and thought that this was an exact success, and told him that he was giving him a friendly price, 600,000 and he's his. Lai Wu asked that 600,000. Lao Wang said that if it was too expensive for him, then he would give him a discount, and then it would cost 500,000. Lai Wu said that it was fine, no problem, he would transfer the money to him right now. When he transferred the money, he immediately took the whole set and sped away. Lao Wang even wondered if this porcelain was definitely a fake. But no, it can't be. He bought this set from Tang Sen Kai's warehouse in a mountain village. Unfortunately, the younger generation thinks they are the smartest. He really thought he could buy genuine Tang Sen, the king of a seller like him, not grown up yet. From 15,000 he was able to rise to 501,000 today is just a great day. A beginner will always remain a beginner as long as he plays with a professional like him. Then a pink jeep pulled up to him, stopped, a girl got out of it right at him. She approached Lao Wan and asked him what? Where are those fake 15,000 Tan Sen Sen that she sold him last night? Will she buy them back for 1 million? Lao Wang was shocked and asked what is 1 million. The girl began to beg him and said that this porcelain set was very important to her grandfather. He should give it to her. Lao Wang no longer knew where to go and said that 1 million. Not that he didn't want to sell it to her. He just sold it to someone else a few minutes ago. The man who was sitting next to Lao Wang said it was true. He had just sold some kid all the china. And he spent 500,000 on all these crafts. And turning to Lao Wang himself, he told him that he was so jealous of him. I wish he would have been lucky too. To which Lao Wang replied that he needed to be patient first. The girl was very upset and said that it turns out that way. And I thought that she was playing with the chicken, so she put her grandfather's favorite porcelain on the wrong shelf. It's bad. If grandpa finds out about it, he will punish her. Lao Wang tried to calm the girl down and told her not to cry. Even if it was grandpa's favorite porcelain, it was just a fake. She just has to apologize to her grandfather and the problem is solved. The girl started yelling at him and asked who said it was fake. One of the porcelain is the real Tang Sen site, which was inherited from her ancestor. Her grandfather didn't sell it, and she has already offered 10 million. Lao Wang's friend laughed and said he was so amazing. Yesterday, a bronze glass of wine, which table 600,000 he sold for 2,000. And today, Tang Sen Sai worth 10 million, he sells for half a million. He loves to please people. The girl asked what? He should tell her where the man who bought the porcelain from him went. Lao Wang said that he went to the other side of Guyun Pavilion. Meanwhile, Bai was already sitting in the house of some old man who was evaluating all the porcelain. The old man said that it looks well-groomed, it's a great gloss, simply stunning. He has the same statuette at home, exactly the same. Porcelain that is more than 1,000 years old is very rare. He definitely couldn't sell it to him, but could his granddaughter. Lai Wu took a sip of tea and thought that their San San comes from the Tang Dynasty. Exactly. What chance is there that this Tang San site belongs to this old man? He was given out that the probability that this Tang San Kai belongs to this old man is 100%. Bai already choked. The old man anxiously asked him if something had really happened. 
Bai Wu said there was nothing, he was fine, he just choked a little. And he himself thought that what is the chance that Tang San San was stolen by Lao Wang? He was given that the probability that it was stolen by this person is 0%. Then he thought it might be Lao Wang. Maybe this old man's granddaughter sold him to Lao Wano. The probability of this was 100%. After learning this, Bai Wu thought that he just had a crazy granddaughter. The old man told him that at the auction, Tang San San is usually sold at a price of 12 million. If Mr. Bai doesn't mind, he would buy it for 9 million. And I asked him what he thought about it. Bai Wu reflected that 9 million is quite a lot, considering that this is only the beginning of his career in the world of antiques. So he said okay, they had a deal. The old man said that it was fine and handed him a piece of paper, said that this was his business card. If he found something interesting in the future, he could call him at any time. Bai Wu accepted the card and thanked the old man. Then he left his house and at the same moment his granddaughter arrived in a pink jeep. Bai Wu said that this girl is running so fast, yes, she's going to fall. The chance that the girl will fall is 100%. Bai Wu shouted at her to be careful, she might fall now. The girl stopped and asked him what, why would she fall? He worries too much about her, she knows how to drive a car, and then suddenly she may fall. He probably thinks that she, Chi Zio Zio, is stupid and that's why he warned her in this way. Bai Wu thought she was really dumb, and asked what Chi Zio Zio, and I thought that she was the granddaughter of Mr. Chi, who also sells cheap porcelain, wasn't she? The probability that she is the granddaughter of the master, whose is 100%. What a coincidence, it really is her. Then the girl went and stumbled a stone fell, but Bai managed to catch her. Chi Zio thought what kind of trick it was just now. Why did she fall? A crowd had already gathered around them. One of the men asked yes, what is wrong with them? Another asked that don't they know the rules of decency? What kind of habit is this? Ch Zio Zio, embarrassed, pushed Bai away and told him to let her go. Bai Wu told her that as he had already said, she should have listened to him, right? Ch Zio jumped away from him and Bai told her that if there was nothing else to discuss, then he would go. But the girl stopped him. Bai Wu shouted that he hadn't done anything to her, so don't let her touch him. H. Zio Zio Zabra. He took his phone and said that today he was just lucky. She has an urgent problem here that needs to be dealt with. Could he leave her his contact and contact him next time? He took his phone back and saw that she had written there that she was begging him for help, because she did not expect to meet a brother like him. After that, Bai Wu started walking around all the streets and thought that now he has a lot of money, and he can spend it on anything. Well, is it better to buy a car or a house? Here we pass Lao Wang again. Lao Wang stopped Bai Wu and asked him who he had sold this porcelain to, and for how much. Bai Wu said he sold the pavilion to the owner for 9 million. Lao Wang said it was fine. Bai Wu thought that this fatty looked so calm. He wasn't even surprised when he found out how much money he had lost. And Lao Wang said he was a stinking scoundrel and they would look again. Meanwhile, Ch Zio Zio looked into her grandfather's room, saw that he was looking at the porcelain. Then she said that since he had found his china, then she would go. But the old man got angry at her and called her a stupid girl, told her to go to him alive and not hide from him. This old man sold his porcelain for 200 yuan and returned it for 9 million. He stopped his granddaughter and asked her why she suddenly decided to visit her grandfather. Today is such a good day. Then Zio Zio was confused and thought that not only was she late, but the porcelain had already been bought by grandfather, so she didn't know how to tell him about it. Master CH asked her what was wrong with her. CH Zio Zio waved her hands and said no, she was fine. The old man said that lately she has been acting as if she really sold his favorite porcelain. Then he guessed and said that let her wait, or maybe it was by chance not the porcelain that she sold last night. CH Zio Zio unwrapped. Hold on, she told her grandfather that she didn't think she needed to go to the hospital urgently. Her whole body ached. The old man got up and called out her name loudly. Ch Zio Zio panicked and fled her grandfather dialed her grandmother and told her to save her. Grandpa wants to punish her. The old man stood behind her and told his granddaughter to look at what she had done. But then a voice came from the receiver to his grandmother, who asked him what he was shouting. Did he decide to scare his granddaughter? What right does he have to shout at her at all? Meanwhile, Chi Zio Zio rushed to the bow for a leak and thought that she did not know who managed to sell the porcelain so fast and because of what she almost got from her grandfather. But wait for the person who just came out of the Gu Yun pavilion. By any chance, this is not the guy who predicted her fall. Meanwhile, Bai Wu looked very tense and worried. He looked around and thought, why does it seem to him that something is wrong with this fat man? Maybe he's angry and wants to take it out on him. He was given that the chance that he was playing with him was 100%.
Baiwu swore and said that she thinks the system is ambiguous, such a funny thing. And he himself thought that he had sold him antiques, and then he would find someone to take revenge on him and take his money, so what? The system said that the chance that Wang wants to take his money is 100%. But, I'm afraid, he didn't look so scared anymore and said that he still has a reliable system that shows him the percentage of his success. He stopped, took out his phone, thinking that antiques is a profitable business. But even with superpowers it is difficult to find gold in the trash, if not for the security of CH Zio Zio, he would never have earned so much money. It's hard to be rich. But is it all right? The girls he met recently are all very strange for his own safety. He'd better not mess with them. It would be interesting to see what would happen if he didn't miss this opportunity. But he had an idea. The system told him that the probability of having non-fake antiques on the market tomorrow is 100%. Bai Wu thought that, well, of course, you can continue to speculate on antiques. Daily income of a million yuan, it's not a dream. Thanks to God, he now has a huge amount of money, and he needs to spend it. The guy should have a car, but you can get to the dealership from this stop. He got in line for the bus and noticed CH Zio Zio in the queue and wondered what she was doing here. Then he received a message from her, in which it was written that she was so unlucky today. She mixed up something and eventually sold her grandfather for a statuette, and not the product she was supposed to sell. And because of her grandfather's anger, she would not dare to drive. Bai Wu thought, is she really that stupid? Here he is in the crowd, mind you, at some man's and thought that this guy looks very suspicious. Is he a thief? The chance of this was 50%. This man carefully approached Chi Zio Zio. Then Bai Wu understood, and the system told him that the chance that he is a bus pickpocket is 100%. He wrote to her that the guy in the black jacket next to her is very muddy, she should be careful. The check immediately raised her head. She turned around and saw Bai Wu, and wondered what he was doing here. You shouldn't expect anything good from him. And I texted him that he was croaking again. Bai Wu replied to her that she is an ungrateful person, she is not able to distinguish a good person from a bad one, which she is. A minibus arrived here. They announced that passengers can get on the bus. Then this man crept up to the girl again and touched her, but the girl felt it and turned around. Then the man apologized to her and said that he did not intentionally push him just someone from behind. Chi Zio Zio started looking at her phone again and said okay. Bye. Watching all this thought that this girl was not listening to him at all. Has this man already started acting? Don't you girl understand anything at all? Then Bai Wu couldn't stand it and rushed to her aid. But the girl herself was not a blunder. She immediately disarmed the man. Using the technique, I threw it on the road. People were alarmed and asked what was going on. CH Zio Zio said that he wanted to possess her. Bai Wu looked scared and thought that Ba Shi was also standing in front of him. Isn't this the movement of a martial artist? CH Zio Zio looked at Bai and thought, why did this raven croak again? Maybe he just wanted to help her. No, there's definitely something wrong here. Bai had already rushed to the leak and thought that he was finished. It seems that this strong girl is the same person who sold the sand sand there that he bought. He needs to get away from this girl as soon as possible. He will need a couple of minutes in order to get to the car dealership. But the system said it would be 0% for him. Then he got even more scared and thought, what happened? Why can't this bus get to the dealership in a couple of minutes? Why is he so unlucky? Bai Wu, getting on the bus, thought that today was some kind of unlucky day. But is it possible that it's all because of traffic jams? Is it possible that a traffic accident will occur? But the system said traffic jams are 0% and crashes are also 0%. But why does he have such a bad feeling? He walked away from the bus and wondered if there could be a criminal inside. The chance that the bus will be hijacked is 0%. The chance that there will be hostages on the bus is 0%. The chance that there will be a fire in the bus is 100%. The chance that there is a criminal on the bus now is 100%. Bai Wu grabbed his head and thought what should he do? Now there is a criminal on the bus and he wants to set it on fire, what should he do? If he carries out his plan, a lot of people may suffer. He wants to prevent it, however, he is not sure he can handle it. He doesn't have time, he needs to call the police urgently. He took out his phone and called the police. He said he wanted to inform them that there was a criminal on the bus who wanted to set it on fire. The police asked him if he could tell them his location. Bai Wu whispered to them that the bus number 666 stops near the antique market and goes to the car market. There are too many people on the bus, he mixed up with the crowd. The police said that well they will mark this call as an emergency. Bai Wu said yes and asked them to hurry up because the criminal has 8 or 9 liters of gasoline. He can set everything on fire at any moment. Then the police asked him if he could prove it. 
Bai Wu thought that if he couldn't prove it, he would be severely punished for providing false information. Then he was bombarded with questions from the policeman that how did he know that the criminal would set fire to the bus, and where did he get the information about the number of liters of gasoline and how did he know that he would sit at this particular stop. Bai's head began to boil, and he thought that how could he prove it all? There's no way he can do that. Why can't they just believe him? Then he saw that the bus was about to leave. Having challenged, he thought that they would not have time to help. If there were no police nearby, then he himself should stop the criminal by any means. He looked at Chi Zio Zio and thought, is she really driving a bus too? Well, now is not the time to think about it now the most important thing is to save people. Then Bai Wu suddenly remembered how she had neutralized that man and thought that at least this girl was also dangerous. Now we need to think about how to catch the criminal. Then the police called him back and said that by a lucky chance their police officer, who is now on vacation, was on this bus. If he discovers the culprit, then no hasty action should be taken. Hearing this, Bai Wu was very happy and thought that are the police here. He squinted at Chi Zio Zio, then thought that. But a policeman doesn't know what a criminal looks like either. But he has an idea. It is interesting to know what is the chance that the criminal is sitting now. The criminal is sitting 100%. The criminal is sitting in the front seats, equal to 0%. The criminal is sitting in the back 100%. After that, Bai Wu began to make his way to the back seats. Then he looked at Chi Zio Zio and thought, why is she chasing him? But he doesn't have time for games, he needs to find the culprit. It would be difficult to get 8 or 9 liters of gasoline on the bus, most likely he has a backpack with him. Then he noticed a man who was all dirty and unshaven, and was holding a backpack on his lap. And then Bai Wu thought that maybe it was him. Then the man turned away from him and tightened his grip on his backpack. Bai Wu thought, did he guess right? He shouldn't have behaved so suspiciously. He suspects this guy. He's too nervous. And he also clung very tightly to his backpack to hide his suspicions. Wait or pounce on him while there is an opportunity. What should he do? Then Chi Zio Zio grabbed him by the shoulder and told him to hide. Bai Wu thought that he was very sorry. But he must not be up to games right now. A police officer is watching him. It was 100% information. After which he started shouting that he was not mistaken. Is she really the aggressive girl from the airport? She should stop following him. He hadn't done anything to her. In this way, Bai Wu tried to attract attention. And I thought that now is a good time to attract the attention of the officers and bring this guy to the surface. Excellent opportunity to kill two birds with one stone. It needs to be done now. But then Chi Zio Zio told him to save himself. Why doesn't he run? After that, the girl bumped into him. But I'm afraid he managed to duck, saying that it was just a misunderstanding. By chance, who Zio Zio grabbed that man's backpack and it opened. The man got angry and asked what she was allowing herself. After which, the enraged man stood up. Bai Wu was really scared and thought that why did everything happen so quickly. But then this man got hit by CH Zio right in the face. After that, she finally neutralized him. She took out her handcuffs and said that the police were working. He was arrested. She picked up one of the bottles of this man and after sniffing it said that it really was gasoline. Bai Wu was very surprised and thought that she was also a police officer. He needs to get out of here right away. All the passengers got off the bus. Bai Wu tried to leave quietly. And Chi Zio Zio, exhaling, said that finally. And grabbing Bai Wu by the shoulder, he said that she heard that he was the one who alerted the police. Bai Wu thought that she was pissing him off. Why does not continue to pursue him all the way? He wouldn't be able to explain to her how he found out about it. We need to come up with something. And turning to her, he said that if he would tell her from them alone. The monk, confused, from the mountains told him about it. But why does she look like she doesn't believe him? She should think about what happened earlier. Ch Zio Zio thought, why is his crow's beak talking such nonsense? Bai Wu clutched his head and thought what the hell he had just said. As expected, he failed to hold it. Therefore, he needs to get out of here faster. But he was blocked by Chi Zio Zio who told him to stop talking this nonsense. And she asked him how he knew he should tell her about it immediately. Bai Wu was very scared, asked her what to say. Chi Zio Zio asked him that, in his opinion, an ordinary citizen somehow knows the information about the arson of the bus, right? Bai Wu pushed her hand away and told her to thank him better. As a law-abiding citizen, he should have alerted the police. Chi Zio Zio said she didn't really believe it. She pressed him against the wall and told him to remember now that when he called, he had not yet boarded the bus. Is he personally acquainted with this criminal? Bai Wu told her that it was just her guesses. Chi Zio Zio said that of course, maybe they would move to a more convenient place where they could have tea and talk. Just the same, there he will tell her everything in detail. 
Bye. Wu was even more scared and thought that my god, how insidious she was. This time he's in serious trouble. Nu Yir was also in this place. She asked if it was really Bai Wu. Bai Wu asked her what she was doing from there. Chi Zio Zio loosened her grip and asked them, what, do they really know each other? Nu Yir said her car broke down and she was taking her to the workshop. And turning to Bai Wu, she asked him what was going on here. Bai Wu wondered why this situation was like being caught with a mistress. But this is a great chance. He winked at her, then shouted that it wasn't what she thought. He has nothing to do with her. He began to sob and fell on his knees in front of her. And he continued to say, pointing at Chi Zio Zio, that she herself had started to molest him. He doesn't know who she is at all. And he has a girlfriend that he loves very much, so let her stop running after him already. Shi Zio Yao didn't even have time to react to anything, as people already began to condemn her. A man in the crowd said that this girl is so beautiful for what she allows herself. That's just terrible. Another man said he thought this guy had just been caught with another one. Let them just look at his face. The woman was horrified and asked if he had changed one of them. What kind of horror is it? The blonde said that such beauties. This guy is a success with girls. Chi Zio Zio asked him that yes, who is running after him here? Bai Wu turned to Mu Yir and said that she could see she wouldn't let him go. They looked at each other again, and the girl said that he was her boyfriend, maybe she would stop touching him already. The audience was very focused on this scene. Zio Zio clenched her teeth hard in anger. Bai Wu noticed and thought that more and more people were gathering. Ch Zio Zio didn't wait for any response from Bai Wu and punched him in the gut. Bai Wu started to clear his throat, and Chi Zio Zio passed by his so-called girlfriend and said that he was not interested in him, but she advises to be careful with him. After all, this guy is far from who he pretends to be. After Chi Zio Zio left, Mu Yir, turning to Bai Wu, asked him what, how is he, is everything all right with him? Bai Wu said that, at least for a while, he was able to get rid of this problem. Thanking the girl, Mu Yir said he helped her too, so now they're even, and she apologized to him again for that incident. They were watched by Kin, the sun and gnawed his nails, she said that it was so decided after all. Molest Mu Yir, but this time he won't get off so easily. They too. Bai Wai finally bought a car for himself and now, sitting at the wheel, he thought that he was not decisive enough for the appearance of any feelings, and in general he was confused by them alone problems. He won't contact them anymore. In the future, we need to stay away from them and focus on making money. The whole life is just a fiction. He came to the same place again and thought that only the money was real. He got out of the car and thought that he felt this feeling, familiar to him from yesterday, the feeling of money. He came to his usual place and asked if Lao Wang was not here. The man who was sitting next to him said that yes, yesterday he told him that he would go to the village for a new product. And he'll be gone for a few days. Bai Wu asked already what is the chance that he will have a genuine antique. The system said that the success rate would be 100%. Realizing this, Bai Wu exhaled and said that well, okay, but will he be able to find antiques today? He was given 0% and he thought what it meant. And I thought, what is the chance to buy an antique on the market? The system told him that the chance to buy an authentic product was 0%. Bai Wu scratched his head and thought that. Why is the data so much different from yesterday? It seems to him that there are antiques here, but he will not be able to find it without help. But what difference does it make, he can handle it himself. And from around the corner, Kin Kin was watching him. 30 minutes later, he approached the man who was selling the product and taking the pot. He realized that it was a genuine antique 100%. And I asked the man if he could sell it to him. The man said it costs 3000 but he can give him a 5% discount. Bai Wu didn't like it and told him that 50% was better. The man smiled at him and said that it was good. 50 so 50. Bai Tu repeated that the discount is 50% and he agrees. And he thought that, it seems, this merchant does not know that the goods are real. But why is the chance not found? Is the system out of order? Then Kin Kin came up from behind and said that she wanted to purchase this item for its original cost. Bai Wu did not expect to see her here and looked at her in fright, wondering what she was doing there. The man was very happy and handed Kin Kin this product and said that it was good, of course, let her take it. But their way was blocked by Bai Wu, who told them not to hurry because he was the first to come here. He will pay 10,000. Kin Kin said 30,000. Bai Wu realized what she was doing, it was all on purpose. It seems that the stall owner has already guessed that the cost of the goods is much more expensive than its initial price. He exhaled and asked Kin Kin, what if he pays 50,000? Of course, she can pay more and get this stuff for herself. But Kin Kin said that well she would give 100,000. 
and I asked him, what, how is it for him? Bai Wu realized that he would not be able to spend it in such ways, she would continue to raise prices. Kin Kin thought, does he really want to trick her? She had just bought this trash, and what was he going to do now? Bai Wu turned around and said that she took it well, and he thought that this girl herself did not notice how she raised the price instead of him. He's not stupid enough to measure money with her stranglehold. But still he continued to increase prices, despite the success. The man handed Kin Kin her goods, the girl, after examining it, thought that it really was the Ming Dynasty. This guy is not that simple, so she decided to pursue him with her. After some time, Bai Wu could not stand it and asked her that she would ever leave him alone. To which Kin Kin asked him, is it really forbidden for her to walk on this road? She followed him everywhere and spoiled all the raspberries for him. He was already going to buy one item for 100,000, but the girl offered her said she would pay 200,000. At that moment, he could not stand it and, turning to her, asked her, What, is it really necessary to do everything on purpose? What is Kin Kin for? He was told that if he couldn't afford it, then that was his problem. Of course, he can try to raise the price, but she doesn't care. She has a lot of money. She approached him and said that he had just turned 20 and dropped out of high school. Bai Wu said that, but he can already afford a premium car. Kin Kin asked him if it seemed to him that it happened too quickly. Bai Wu asked her if she had really made inquiries about him. He was just lucky to find a good income. He never committed crimes. Then Kin Kin asked him if he had told her about some super abilities. Or is he just very lucky? It's so cool. Until he was 20, he had nothing. He was an ordinary person. And even no inheritance. She doesn't even know what tricks he uses in order to achieve success. He was a pathetic loser, but she is not interested. Because today he has a good income and she will destroy him. Kin Kin felt very confident and told him to answer, or he was so scared that she might deprive him of his earnings. Bai Wu told her that today she repeatedly prevented him from earning money and wasted his time, and now she's threatening to deprive him of his earnings. Kin Kin asked him that did he really not believe that she was capable of such a thing. Bai Wu told her that he wouldn't let her do that. Kin Kin just grinned and asked him that he wouldn't cry if he lost, would he? After all, he understands that she will not give him money today and she herself thought that if he decided to buy something, she would deliberately inflate the price. Let's see what he will do with it. The great day followed on his heels, and when Bai Wu stuck to some man and started whispering something to him, Kin Kin was right there and thought that was he really going to buy goods from him? Would she have to destroy him again? But Bai Wu only said goodbye to this man. Kin Kin thought, what's the matter? What is this guy doing? Is he just chatting with every seller and not buying anything from them? Bai Wu squinted at Kin Kin and thought so. What is the probability of success? The system said that the probability of success is 100%. Bai Wu said that fine today he would teach her a lesson. After that, he called everyone he talked to and said that he wanted to buy all the goods they had. Kin Kin, hearing all this, thought that it turns out that he just wanted to buy all the goods from all the likes. He is afraid that she may create problems for him and decided to hide his plan until the last. And she asked him what, did he really think she couldn't do anything? How naive he is after all. Bai Wu turned to her and said that if the bosses don't return, then let them make a deal together right now. But Kin Kin intervened and said that she wanted to buy everything they have in the stalls. Bai Wu told her that she was going too far. Kin Kin asked him if something was wrong. She also wants to buy, like him, all this product, and deprive him of his earnings. Bai Wu said that of course he knows that she has a lot of money, but they have a lot of goods. Would she be able to buy them all? She can't throw words to the wind just to scare him. Kin Kin asked him that did he think she was stupid? Where did he get so much courage from? And I asked the sellers to name the total cost of the goods that they have. She will pay a 10% surcharge. The sellers exchanged glances, and then Kai Kin began to put pressure on them, asking if they really didn't want to earn more on delivery. They should hurry before she changes her mind. The sellers told her that she could just leave her address, and they would certainly deliver everything. Kin Kin asked them to give her their contacts and her assistant would contact them. The sellers said that, of course, no problem. After that, Kin Kin looked at Bai Wu and asked him what and how would he react to it. Didn't she just deprive him of his earnings? Bai Wu just grinned and walked past her. He went to the sellers, and the sellers were very happy to see him. They said it was a great money, and they would not divide it 50 minus 50 as they had agreed. One of the sellers said that he would transfer his share to him, and another seller said that he had already transferred part of it to him. If there is a similar offer in the future, then he should immediately write to him. Yes, he should address them right away. Bai Wu showed her his phone and thought that she was really surprised. She didn't expect this, after all. Kin Kin was very angry and asked him if he had been in cahoots with them from the very beginning. 
Baiwu said that yes, he was just strolling around the Veni Wan market and looking for merchants who would agree to cooperate with him. Does she look so annoyed right now? He is in a win-win situation. Even if she buys all the goods, he will still be in the black. He repeats to her once again she will never be able to deprive him of his earnings. Kin Kin said it was okay, but don't let him be so happy because they will meet again. Bai Wu shouted after her that he would not accompany her. Then he noticed that the system update had started. Bai was very happy and thought that. Is it really a system update? Thanks to Kin, Kin Bai Wu has earned a fortune today. According to her, she has a very large influential family. They cannot compete with each other. He thought that there would be some changes in the system after the update. But nothing has changed. But perhaps the difference will be noticeable a little later. At the moment, his strength is not enough. If he wants to earn a lot of money, then he needs to expand his social circle. However, how can he do it? It's going to be quite difficult. Bai Wu came out of the market, and then he was met by a man. He greeted Bai Wu. He said that he was Mrs. Kin Kin's assistant and asked him if he could come with him. Bai Wu asked that after everything that had happened between them, did she still want to meet? And I asked the man that he was actually a scent killer or a former special forces soldier, wasn't he? But the man remained calm and told him that he was just laughing at him. His task is to come for him and take him to a social event. As an apology for today's misunderstanding, Bai Wu asked, what is an invitation to a social event? And this is as an apology. And he thought, why does it seem to him that Kin Kin is up to something bad? On the one hand, he may not go anywhere because of the risk. But on the other hand, when he still has such an opportunity to expand his social circle. And he told the man that he would go well with him. One hour later, Kin Kin met him and told him that she thought he wouldn't come. They went inside the building and Bai Wu said that even if she invited him with malicious intent, he was not afraid of anything. Kin Kin looked at him and told him to follow her. She will introduce him to her friends. They approached the three people and Kin Kin began to introduce them. The man with the blonde hair was young Mr. Wang. He is the future chairman of XINGHAI Group. Older men it was Mr. Zhu. He is the owner of STRITCH. There was also a girl who was young Lady Liu. She is the CEO of Top Eve Media. Bai Wu must have heard of them. Bai Wu was surprised and thought that there really are a lot of influential people here. When he sees them, he gets a little nervous. Kin Kin noticed this and thought that this upstart was so nervous in front of the guests, but she would look at how much he would screw up. Bai Wu sensed something was wrong and thought that just look at Kin Kin's expression. She was clearly waiting for him to disgrace himself. He needs to stop being nervous. It would be a shame if he really became a laughing stock. But he had an idea, despite the fact that no matter what kind of distinguished guests they are, they all eat and even more so drink. He just needs to imagine them in the toilet and everything will get better right away. After that, he shook hands with all of them and said that his name was Bai Wu. He is very pleased to meet them. Kin Kin was surprised and thought, why did he start acting so relaxed? Five minutes later, Kin Kin and Bai Wu were sitting together at the table. The girl told him that he had done well. To be honest, she was very surprised how quickly he found a common language with them. To which Bai Wu replied to her that there is not much difference between people of the upper and lower classes. Kin Kin told him that the difference between the estates is visible even to the naked eye. At that moment, a man came on stage and said that he was asking them to go to the auction hall and take their seats. The charity auction will start soon. Bai Wu asked, what is the charity auction? Kin Kin grinned and, calling him a redneck, asked him if he really needed to explain it. Bai Wu said he didn't need to, and he's not a redneck. He knows what a charity auction is. Kin Kin said it was wonderful. There is a Ming Dynasty porcelain cup here, and she wants to put it up for auction. As she had already found out before, he is well versed in antiques, and she really hopes that he will help her evaluate it. Then she put the box on the table. Bai Wu asked her what to evaluate her antiques, and then what will he get in return? Kin Kin said she was kind today, so she would let him sell it on her behalf. He wants to make a lot of money, doesn't he? And he also needs to leave a good impression in front of the guests. Bai Wu thought that it was true, he needed to earn some reputation among the local guests. This is a great opportunity. He told her it wouldn't do. He doesn't believe she just wants to help him. Kin Kin just spread her hands and said that she really had no malicious intent. But Bai Wu was still tense and thought that it was better not to trust this girl. He is 80% sure that this is a hoax. He looked at the box and thought, let's see if it's a fake. But the system told him that it was a real antique 100%. This Ming Dynasty is a. Its approximate price is 12,500,000. Then Bai Wu thought that maybe something is wrong with the auction itself. But the system told him that the success of the auction is 100%. Then Bai Wu exhaled and thought that the antiques were real and everything would be fine with the auction. 
then it turns out that he has nothing to worry about. Apparently, he's just thinking too much. Even if Kin Kin decides to throw something, then in this case, he has a system. Kin Kin asked him if he agreed. If not, he might forget about her kindness. Bai Wu said he agreed. He loves kindness. After that, the man said that he was already presenting one lot of a charity auction. Bai Wu carried this antique to the man and looked at Kin Kin. It was clear from Kin Kin's face that she was up to something. Bai Wu tensed up a little and thought that looking at her face, you can 100% understand that she is up to something bad. And the man announced that the representatives of the lot is Bai Wu. Bai Wu told himself that he just needed to stop thinking about the bad. After all, he has authentic antiques in his hands. Its success rate is 100%. He needs to find out what tricks she wants to throw out. After that, he took the place of that man and greeted all the guests, saying that his name was Bai Wu, and he's glad to see them all here. He would like to present his lot to them. But when he opened the box, he saw that it was not antiques, but toilet paper. The girl, one of the guests, was very surprised and asked if he had just auctioned a roll of toilet paper. The elderly man chuckled and said that the organizers had done a good job on the whole atmosphere. Bai Wu was at a loss. He thought that he knew that there was clearly something wrong. Is he so scared that he can't even move? But he calculated everything. There was definitely an antique 100%. Then he remembered that Kin Kin had told him that her earring had fallen right next to his foot and asked him to help get it out. While Bai Wu was picking up her earring, Kin Kin changed the boxes. But it was precisely at that moment that she switched them. He squinted at her and thought she had gone too far. The man who was the host of this auction asked him if by any chance he was in a hurry to go to the toilet. He had just grabbed half a roll of toilet paper. Kin Kin watched this picture contentedly and thought that this time he had completely disgraced himself. Bai thought that no, if he runs now, he will embarrass himself even more. He must find a way out and somehow get out of this situation. Today is already ruined anyway, but he has to come up with something. Then a man shouted to him from the audience and said that it was better, let's not show. They're not here to watch him fool around. The man who was sitting next to him asked if they could remove him. They don't want to look at this fool. Then the man turned to him and told him that he could not come down. Bai Wu thought that he couldn't just give up. Get away with it. He should calm down, because the success of the auction is 100%, which means that there is a way out. He can't rely on the system at a time like this. He needs to use his skills and abilities. It's not for nothing that he has been writing books for so many years. After that, he picked up this roll of toilet paper and said that in their eyes it could be an ordinary roll of toilet paper. However, this is a very important thing for him. All the guests started up and started listening to him. Only one Kin Kin was unhappy and thought, what is he up to this time? Bai Wu continued his speech and said that now they might not believe that such a tall, handsome, courageous man constantly cried as a child. Then they mocked him and called him a little girl. He told a story that it was his birthday that day. His mom made him noodles, and my father put a beautifully wrapped roll of toilet paper right on the table. Bai Wu then asked his father that why did he give him a roll of toilet paper. His father patted him on the head and said that he was a real man, and real men don't cry. The next time he cries, he should wipe his tears with her, and dad will always support him, no matter what happens. But soon after, unfortunately, his parents left this world. His family lived very poorly, and therefore he was left with nothing but debts, and just one roll of toilet paper. Every time he remembers his father's words, he overcomes the urge to cry. He has endured a huge amount of adversity in life, and he remembers his father's instruction. He must be strong. Thus, step by step, he went to his goal. Finally, he is here. Half a roll of toilet paper is his evidence of struggle. Today, on this important day, he made a very important decision for himself. He will sell this roll at a charity auction. Kin Kin was shocked and thought, how could he? She looked around at the expressions on people's faces and thought that, however, fortunately, it didn't work. Bai Wu thought, is it really a failure? It turns out that he failed. But then one man started applauding him and said that his story touched him very much. He really liked this guy. He will pay him 10 million. Bai Wu asked, is it really serious? The auction host said that he congratulates him on his victory. Bai Wu looked at him and thought, why does this presenter look so much like a donkey? He exhaled, but he was still shaking all over. He is lucky that he has experience in writing novels. However, he is still a little ashamed. He looked at Kin Kin and asked her what, did she really want to frame him? He was ready for it. Kin Kin said that he was lucky again this time. However, let him know that luck is not infinite. Then she got up and left there. Bai Wu wiped the sweat from his forehead and thought that he had just saved himself from disgrace. But the plan to meet all the celebrities seems to have failed. 
He went down to the parking lot and thought that even though he got out of this situation with the help of a fictional story, but in their eyes he was still a clown. And Kin Kin also left. And without her, no one will pay attention to him. In order to get a high status, you need to work hard and earn a lot of money. Then a car drove past him. He saw the man to whom he had sold his toilet roll, and Muir was driving. Bai Wu thought, is this really the same person who bought a roll of toilet paper from him and Muir with him? But why are they together? Bai Wu thought, are these two really together? What is the system for? He was told that Muir has a joint business with this man, and they will get married soon. Bai Wu was surprised and thought that had his abilities improved. Could it be because of that update? So they will get married. So that's why she was acting so cold with Kin Kin. Now he understands everything. It's so difficult with these rich people. It's better not to get involved with them. Now he has an eye on it to earn money quietly. So, he needs to find an assistant among the antique dealers. After all, he doesn't really understand it. Then he remembered about Lao Wang and thought that, by the way, he remembered about him. I wonder if he's found anything of value lately. The system told him that Fatty Wang had valuable things again. Bail thought this guy was just amazing. Does he always find something cool? And that makes him richer all the time. Well, if he cooperates with him, wouldn't it be great? He has connections among antiquaries, a well-hung tongue. In some inconvenient moments, he can go for a break instead. Having him as an assistant, in the future it will be easy for him in antique circles. Well, now it's time for him to implement this idea. The next day, Lao Wang was talking on the phone and asked how he hadn't reached yet. Is it coming already? He's been waiting for him for half a day, so he needs to hurry up. After which he ended his call. Bai Wu came up to him. Lao Wang immediately changed his face and said that it was him. He has to get out of here because he has nothing for him. Bai Wu told him not to be so vindictive. After all, he came to discuss cooperation with him. Lao Wang asked, what is cooperation? Bai Wu told him that he was always lucky, so he always finds expensive antiques. And he can determine his true value, and not with him just created for each other. And as soon as they start cooperating, they will divide the profit from sales in half. What does he think about it? Lao Wang didn't trust him, so he told him that he had already used it two times. He ate meat and soups himself, and he didn't even lick the plate. Does he really want him to cooperate with him after that? He came to mock him, didn't he? Let him fail, he doesn't want to see him. Bai Wu thought that Lao Wang still hated him for those two times. He is very angry now, if he continues to persuade him, he may run into a fight. He didn't come here to swear, so first he needs to calm down. It is necessary to use the opportunity while it is there, and eventually it will crawl to him. At the moment when he had already moved away from the shop, Lao Wang, two people approached him. Lao Wang asked them what, why did they take so long? Bai Wu stopped and thought that it looked like Lao Wang had a big deal. Lao Wang told the man to take it out, and he would look. The man told him that it was the seven-star dagger of General Cao Cao himself. Lao Wang took this dagger in his hands to take a look. Bai Wu stopped and thought, is it really the seven-star dagger of General Cao Cao? That's a lie. He examined so carefully, how can this dagger be real? The system said authentic was 0%. Lao Wang told those two men that the price was not bad and asked them to name the price. Bai Wu, hearing this, got angry at him and thought that was he crazy to buy this fake. But wait a minute, could it be that this fake is specially made so that it cannot be distinguished from the original? The system said that the probability of detecting a fake was 0%. Bai Wu chuckled and thought that Fatty Wang was still a sly one. If this dagger even he can't tell the difference. This means that the level of fraud is quite high. However, he has the ability to see everything secret and explicit. However, is there really not a single flaw in this fake? Is there any way he can find out? He tried to ask if he could find any flaw. But I thought that's not how things are done. The system showed him the flaw of this dagger. Bai Wu began to examine it carefully and thought, is the gem really broken? Is the gem a fake? It can't be because Lao Wang has been selling antiques for a long time, but still damaged, maybe it's really fake. Or is it not all about the jewel? But could there be something under the stone itself? How dare he reject his cooperation? We need to show him. Now he will show him a master class. He approached their group and Lao Wang immediately hid the dagger. Bai Wu told him that he didn't have to hide it. And he asked, what else is a seven-star blade? It's a fake. Lao Wang asked him what he meant. Bai Wu said that he had lost face. Lao Wang was angry and said that she was looking at this knife. If the blade was damaged or the shape was broken, he would have noticed. But he was fine. He has been in antique circles for 10 years. Does he really think that he will not be able to distinguish a fake from a real product? He realized what he really wanted. He has already told him that he will work alone, 
and that's it. Lai Wu told him that, and if he proves to him that this knife is a craft, will he go to talk to him in this case? Then Lao Wang asked him what if the blade turns out to be original. He wants to use this situation to cooperate with him, but he doesn't need him. Bai Wu asked him that how much would he sell this dagger for. Lao Wang told him that he had already said that he would not cooperate with him. Bai Wu said 500,000 yuan, but if he makes a mistake, he will pay him 10, no 100 times more. Lao Wang shoved this blade at him and told him to watch and not forget his own words. He must take into account that he does not trust him, because he has a reason to lie. So let him open their eyes. In what place is the blade fake? Bai Wu started looking at the blade and told Lao Wang that he would teach him a lesson today. He picked up some kind of thing and said that it was a combat weapon after all. Lao Wang asked him what he was going to do, but Bai Wu did not listen to him and swung, hit the blade, so that a yellow stone bounced off it. Lao Wang was very angry and asked him what he had done now that he would not live. Bai just chuckled and thought, is he still not willing to cooperate? After that, he showed Lao Wang the blade and asked him if he was sure there was a QR code during the Three Kingdoms. Lao Wang took the blade in his hands and realized that there was actually what Bai Wu had told him. He couldn't believe his eyes. Bai Wu told him that he had already told him that he was a master of antiques. And I asked him that maybe they would start their cooperation after all. Now Lao Wang was angry at those two men who brought him a fake. He told them that they were already completely fucked up. Did they really think to deceive him? Are they really tired of living? He turned around, but those two men were no longer there. Then he shouted to them that let them run. Otherwise, he's lying to them. After that, he turned to Bai Wu and asked him that how did he know that the dagger was fake? Or maybe he hired these two at all. Bai Wu asked him if he really thought he was with them. If he could make fakes of this level, does he really think he would look for it? He's got talent, too. Lao Wang said to hell with him. He couldn't listen anymore. Bai Wu turned to him and said that according to their agreement, he was winning, now he was working with him. Lao Wang said that he was so veiled, but he is really afraid that he will throw it. So Putin would rather look for another person. Then Bai Wu began to lose patience and told him that it wasn't fair. Lao Wang said that he is an ordinary antique dealer from the market, and he also talks to him about honesty. Once you open your mouth, the bigwigs will come right up. Probably, they will explain about honesty. Bai Wu asked, what are the bigwigs? Lao Wang said that he would still have to forget about cooperation with him. But Fat Wang was kind to him. He could not leave his help unpaid. He can take anything. It will be considered his gratitude for the help provided. Bai Wu asked, what is this garbage? Lao Wang asked, what is garbage? He traded it all. Let him just look, because this Kesuk Shu and Zhang himself put it on. Bai Wu asked him what kind of theatrical costume he stole from which troop. There are even cigarette buttholes here. Lao Wang was confused and then showed him a wine cup from the Jingyang area of Wu Song himself. I'm afraid he asked that why does it seem to him that this bowl is made of ordinary noodles? Does he even have normal things? Lao Wang started rummaging through his things again and said that he would show him the thing now. Where did she go? While Bai Wu was watching Lao Wang, he thought that this pile of junk seems like Fat Wang really has a life about nothing. To tell the truth, he has profited at his expense many times, and he would not be surprised if he did it on purpose. Then Lao Wang said that here they are. Bai Wu was very surprised and asked what else is that? Did he steal it in the parks on morning exercises? Lao Wang told him to open his eyes, because these are the twin swords of one of the most powerful generals of the Three Kingdoms era, Liu Bei. The system told Bai that it was 100% original. The owner of these paired swords is indeed Liu Bei, but other data is not available yet. Bai Wu asked what is the original. Lao Wang said that of course, but he could not give them to him, thanks to him he would start a new life. Wu thought that it turns out Lao Tu has such swords. This is really God's mercy. Having this golden key, he will definitely be able to negotiate with that person. He needs to figure out how to get those swords. Lao Wang asked him what he had already seen. Did he really think he didn't have any worthwhile things? When he took them out, he almost died of envy. Bai Wu said that recently there was a seven-star dagger of Cao Cao, and now Liu Bei's paired swords. He is right on the way to the Three Kingdoms today. Lao Bei told him to just look at the condition of the shape and structure, and the design is so detailed. Bai said that he was also talking about the seven-star dagger just now, wasn't he? Lao Wang didn't know what to say to that. Then Bai Wu continued to put pressure on him and asked what he thought these swords had a QR code. Lao Wang completely drooped and picking up this sword thought that their dagger and sword looked the same as the original. The one who created these silver coins is magnificent. Instead he thought he could collect Liu and Cao's weapons and sell them at sky-high prices. And in the end, after that, he started shouting that fakes were coming across one after another, the Lord wanted him dead. Then he was stopped by Bai Wu, who said he was watching. Apparently, he failed. 
He needs these swords, so let him set prices for him, and he will bargain with him. Lao Wang said that he also said that he would thank him by choosing himself, so let him take it already. He's furious, so he gives it to him. Bai Wu thanked him. Then he left. After that, Lao Wang sat down on the table and lit a cigarette, thinking that Wu was actually a loser. Bai Wu noticed this and thought that he would look for something else, let him earn a little, otherwise he would also feel guilty. In the beginning, he wanted to get acquainted with Qi Lao. However, he is a first-class tycoon in antiquarian circles. A simple gift at a meeting is not enough. There is a whole hierarchy of authorities. At the very top is a mysterious buyer. After that comes Qi Lao, the authority of the business circle. After that comes Bai In, a new potential strength of the business community. After him comes the fat man Wang S, an old sly businessman. And the very last stage is called business students. Bai Wu thought that it was just possible to give these swords to Qi Lao. After all, then the thing will really meet a good owner. He stood at the entrance to Qi Lao's house and thought that if only he would not meet those uncooperative assistants of Qi again. He went inside and saw a woman there. He came up to her, greeted her, asked her what should she tell him that Qi Lao is here now. The woman told him that Qi Lao was busy right now and was temporarily not seeing anyone. Bai Wu thought that if C.H. Lao found out that he had come, would he want to meet him? The system said it's 100%. Then he asked this woman to tell him that the person who sold the porcelain to Tang Sin Kai last time had come again. The woman was surprised and said that it would be good to wait for the stomp, and she would give Qi Lao. There was a shout that he had come again. Bai Wu was scared and thought that there was no need to be afraid, he had already come. You need to control yourself. He came into the room and said that they had seen each other again. Qi Xiao Xiao was in the room. She was doing her workout now. Bai Wu thought, what's the matter? Qi Xiao Xiao said that he gets in her way too often. Today she must teach him a lesson. Then Bai Wu received an urgent notification, in which it was written that if he continued to stand, he would grab 100%. H Xiao Xiao was already swinging in order to hit him, but Bai Wu managed to dodge in time. Qi Xiao Xiao took the vase and asked him that where did he run to, but then her grandfather appeared in front of her. He was very angry with her and asked why she was making noise again. She should put the vase in its place. She's getting worse and worse every day. She should go home and think about her behavior. Chi Zio Zio said it was fine. But finally she told Bai to look, God forbid, she would see him somewhere. When she left, Bai Wu exhaled and thought that he was lucky. But why does it seem to him that Zio Zio will not leave just like that? Then the girl stopped and said that after all, she couldn't just leave. Chi Lao apologized to Bai Wu and told him that their granddaughter was spoiled and spoiled by her grandmother, so stupid. Bai Wu said that everything is fine. Madam, Chi is very sincere. He thinks that such a temperament is very good. And he thought that looking at Chi Lao, you can understand that he cares about something. The system said it still couldn't read thoughts. Bai Wu wondered if the system could even have such an ability. Chi Lao told Bai Wu that he should follow him up the stairs, they would talk in the tea room. They went up to the room and sat down at the table. Bai Wu said it was no wonder Mr. Chi's tea room was so unusual. Mr. Chi apologized for the inappropriate understanding of his granddaughter. Bai Wu thought he was apologizing again, or just being nice. Although no, he thinks it's just dust in the eyes. Sir, Chi asked him that he had visited him, so he must have brought something, didn't he? Bai Wu showed him the paired sword and asked him to take a look. Mr. Chi took this sword in his hands and asked, what is this thing of the Three Kingdoms era? Bai Wu said that nothing would hide from his sharp eyes. Such an extraordinary thing suits him perfectly. Mr. Chi, he said that these swords are products of the Three Kingdoms era and the price of such a product is now about 5 million. Bai Wu said that in addition, he can say that this thing is by Liu Bei himself. Mr. Chi said that if these swords were really Liu Bei's property, then the price could increase by 10 times. Bai Wu said that, as they say, a rare sword is given to a hero, and respect is given to a person with the highest virtue, so these swords are for him. The younger generation wants to present a gift to Qi Lao as a sign of his admiration. Mr. Chi said that there was no need to flatter him. If he sold these swords to an international buyer, the price would be fabulous. Bai said that antiques have one way. The main thing is that the thing meets its good owner. These items should belong to him. Even if others offer more money, he still won't sell them. Mr. Chi offered to drink tea. Bai Wu thought, what's the matter? Is Chi Lao not interested in these swords? Or is he just dissatisfied with it? The system said that the percentage of interest in swords was 100% and the percentage of satisfaction with them was only 10%. Mr. Chi told him that this gift was very expensive, he could not accept it. 
In addition, in friendship, he values deeds and relationships, and expensive gifts. They still have the friendship of noble people, don't they? Bai Wu was confused and thought that this was a direct refusal to him. Does the discontent lie in the fact that he is uneven for friendship with him? He just lacks status. Mr. Chi said that he was directly finishing him off. These swords are good. The market value is from 5 million. He will pay him. Bai Wu remembered that then Mr. Chi had told him that next time, if he left some more good things, he could bring him. He would not let him down. He is an authority in this field, and he treats him the same way he treats Fatty Wang. After which, Strutting says that the swords received this gift, implying that he wants to rise to his level. Bai Wu thought that this old man was right. He needs to turn this situation around and not let him think badly about him and told Mr. Chi that business is business. If Chi Lao decided to buy swords, then the price is not suitable. Mr. Chi asked him what was the matter. Bai said that he had just said that if the swords of Liu Bei himself, then the price would increase to 50 million. Mr. Chi asked him if he was sure that these were the swords of Liu Bei himself. Bai said that of course, because of his years, Wu has never met such things, and he is wondering if it is possible to verify the authenticity of fencing. Sir, Chi said that his intelligence is really like fire, did he really inherit it? Is he from a family of scientists? Bai said that, in truth, he really comes from a family of scientists, but he does not understand the valuation of antiques at all, only at random and calculates. Mr. Chi said that it turns out that Mr. Bai understands art and how much can he calculate. Bai Wu said that not only antiques are enough, but all other things as well. For example, at the moment Zio Zio is listening outside the window. Mr. Chi asked what? Bai thought that today, thanks to her, he would be able to solve another case. Chi Zio Zio said that this Bai Wu is a real scoundrel and most likely he will want to cheat grandpa again. She should listen to what they're talking about. But when she went up to the window, her grandfather was already standing there and looking at her with displeasure. Bai Wu smiled and thought that it was good that he had checked Chi Zio Zio's location with the help of the system. Chi Zio Zio wanted to justify herself, but didn't know where to start. Then Bai Wu got involved, who told her that he didn't know that she could climb buildings. Chi Zio Zio asked him that he still dares to make fun of her. She's going to teach him a lesson. Her grandfather could barely contain his anger. Chi Zio Zio told her grandfather not to scream, she knows she's wrong. Jumping off the building, Aunt shouted that she was already returning home to repent. She will be doubly remorseful. After that, Bai Wu asked Chi Lao what to hope. Is he now confident in his foresight abilities? To which Chi Lao said that he could just hear the sounds outside the window and guess that it was Zio Zio. Obviously, he won't believe it. Bai Wu thought that he would not believe him so easily. Then he decided to ask, what does he need to do to make him believe him? To which Chi Lao replied that if he had the gift of foresight, he would not have asked him this question. Bai Wu thought that CH had given him a check. If he didn't come up with something right away, then he was unlikely to get the opportunity to cooperate again. But can he convince him? The system said that the chance of convincing him is 87.25%. Bai, seeing this, was very surprised and thought that really such a high percentage. Well, how should he act? But he came up with something. Is he able to fully describe in detail all the antiques in the room? Then will he be able to convince him? The system said that the chance of success would be 100%. Bai Wu thought that it would be good if he did so, and he said that he had just inspected his tea room, and in it he saw 26 antique items. Chi Lao was not very surprised by this and asked that he had considered all 26 things. Then let him try to describe them. If he can describe them in detail, then he will believe in his abilities. Bai Wu said that you, let's say he lets him start. Chi Lao said that in that case he would listen to him carefully. Bai Wu laughed to himself and thought that just let him wait, now he's going to be awesome. And he ordered the system to start, after which every 26 products had a characteristic that only he could read. Bai Wu walked up to the table and, hitting it, said that this set, made of sandalwood from the Qin Kianlong era, isn't it? Kianlong era, September 25th, 1711 to February 7th, 1799. Qi Lao was a little surprised, said it wasn't bad. Bai Wu continued that it was probably from the room of the emperor himself and the approximate cost of 20 million. And I asked him what he was saying, right, wasn't it? Chi Lao said that was absolutely true, but if he wanted to convince him, then it wouldn't be enough. Then Bo picked up the next thing and said that this is a top quality ink pot made of black jade from the reformation era of the Ming Wanli dynasty. And the approximate cost of this product is 10 million, isn't it? The Wanli era begins from September 4, 1563 to August 18, 1620. 
Chi Lao said yes. Bai Wu added that the ink pot is because of the black jade when you use it in the Shufu Palace by Jan Jijino, the chief secretary of the Ming Dynasty. Shufu Jan Jinjino is the building of the main Daxu in the Ming era. Chi Lao was very surprised, and I asked him that how did he know that. They spent two whole years on this, studied a large number of historical books, in order to find out the exact origin of the ink pot. Bai Wu said that he had calculated it all. Shi Lao asked what he calculated. But how can this be? It's just not possible. Bai Wu smiled at him and told him that his ears were not lying to him. He shouldn't be so worried, because it's true. Shi Lao said he was already impatient and asked him to continue. The next thing Bai Wu said, it was a brush stand from the Imperial Library and King Jiaqing's staffs. 1760 to 1820, and these brushes are the same from the era of mines. This turquoise tea is not from the Song state of the Chunkyu era. From 722 to 479 BC Tsinghua porcelain of the Yuan era from Jingdezhen county of the Hushan pottery. Qi Lao was shocked. After that, Bai Wu said that so, he told in all 26 antiquities, and I asked him that he believed him now. Qi Lao said he would never have believed it if he hadn't seen it with his own eyes. Then Bai Wu asked him if he believed that these swords really belonged to Liu Bei. Then Lao said it was flawless, he admires the things in this room were given to him by inheritance, they were all examined. However, to confirm her authenticity of these swords, relying only on arguments, he thinks it would be unreasonable. Bai Wu wondered if he didn't believe him anyway, but the system said he believed him 100%. But if he believes him, then why argue with him like that? Was he provoking him, or does he want to use it? The system said it's 100%. Bai Wu thought that this old man was not a blunder. He thinks about how to use it and doesn't even bat an eye. It is not surprising that he is an authority in these circles, smart as he is. He seemed to understand why he was looking at him so strangely. Did he really have something to do with him? The system said it's 100%. Does he really care about a thing that is related to antiques? The system said it's 100%. Is there really a thing he wants to ask to check on him? The system said he wanted to ask for a 100% examination. Bai Wu smiled and, turning to Mr. Chi, asked him what he had, and if he wanted him to help him carry out an examination. Chi Lao was very surprised and asked him, how did he know that? Chi Lao said that since he had guessed, then he would tell him. He's really been worried about an old thing lately. And if Mr. Bai can help him figure out if this thing is fake, then he will help him a lot. Bai Wu thought that Qi Lao had indeed encountered difficulties. If he helped him solve this issue, then wouldn't this be a great chance to improve their relationship with him? After that, he said that Qi Lao's affairs were his affairs. He promises to give his all. Qi Lao said that then he expresses his gratitude to him. After that, they went to the basement. Bai Wu asked that there is such a big basement here. Qi Lao said that they have to be careful because a lot of valuables need to be well guarded. They went to a huge safe and Chi Lao said that they once quite accidentally received a vase with patterns of nine dragons, a masterfully executed masterpiece. Bai Wu thought that the old man was really very influential in his field. He keeps valuables in an upper class place. Compared to him, he and Fatty Wang are nothing at all. Meanwhile, Chi Lao went to the safe and, opening it, went in there with Bai Wu. Chi Lao said that he had tried different methods, but no matter how you look at it, this thing is genuine. Bai Wu thought, why does he have doubts then? Chi Lao said that he doesn't know why, but there is always some kind of calmness in his soul. It always seems to him that something is wrong. That's why he can't finalize the deal. If Bai Wu can prove the authenticity, then he will immediately purchase this vase. Of course, no matter what the outcome will be. He will thank Bai Wu with 10 million yuan anyway. Bai Wu thought, does he really think he's here for the money? The system said it's 100%. Bai Wu mentally told her that can she shut up? After all, his goal is far from that. Then CHK Lao said they came, this thing is here. He opened the door and told Bai Wu to come through. When Bai Wu went there and saw the vase, he was surprised and said that this thing is amazing. Chi Lao said that this is the same thing with patterns that he had previously talked about. The market value is approximately 1.3 billion yuan. Bai Wu was shocked by the price. Chi Lao said that he really hopes for his cooperation. Bai Wu said that there was no need to be so ceremonious, he would try his best. After which, he began to stare intently at this vase. Chi Lao looked worried and asked, what's up? Bai Wu told him that there was no need to rush him so much, he was still calculating and she thought that the system usually always answered him right away. Why isn't she working today? The system told him that this system answers and analyzes only his questions, not his. Bai Wu then asked her what she had damaged, so let him answer is this vase a fake or an original? 
The system said it was a 100% fake. Bai Wu asked her if she had any proof. The system said the evidence of forgery is located at the bottom of the vase. The way to recognize a fake is to break the vase. He will be able to find evidence with a chance of 4, 24%. Bai Wu thought that 4, 24% is very little. After all, it is worth 1.3 billion. Even though he knows that this is a craft, however, a tiny fraction of this 4% will disappear, and he will fall. And while there is no exact evidence that this fake, he cannot act recklessly. Even if he sells it, he will not collect so much money. Usually an appraiser can certify that it is a fake. The system said that there is no such super powerful level of system similar to it that can accurately assess the possibility, 1, 47%. Bai Wu called the system a braggart and said that okay, so an ordinary person is practically unable. Even Mr. Chi Lao with his level is not unable. He's afraid that the other appraisers won't be able to either. And if you knock it down, there is a risk that with the slightest carelessness he will dig his own grave. And if not broken, then it is obvious that his abilities will not cause him respect. Mr. Chi was hoping for some results from him. Bai Wu told him that he could claim that this vase was a fake. Mr. Chi asked him to fake it. But is he sure of it? Does he have any proof? Bai Wu told him that the proof was under the vase. They looked under the vase together, and Mr. Chi told him that he had already looked under the vases many times, and there were no differences. Did he talk about what evidence? Bai Wu said they were inside the vase from below. Mr. Chi asked him if they really needed to break this vase. Bai Wu said that was the only way to make sure it was a fake. Chi Lao said that the deal has not been completed yet, and they haven't bought the ownership of this jug yet. To teach the jug is a very important matter, he must notify Mr. Lawyer. Bai Wu thought it would be scary if he couldn't handle this jug, but he has to take a chance. He asked Chi Lao to contact the owner and he would talk to him. Chi Lao took out his phone and said that as he wished. After some time, a man came to them and asked Chi Lao for forgiveness for making him wait. He asked if something had really happened. What's the matter? Bai Wu thought that the old man was worthy of coping on his own, but this time it was better for him to stay away. It is clear that he is an outsider here, however, since he brewed this, then he needs to take the initiative. He asked the men that he was Mr. Zhen, wasn't he? And he himself thought that first he needed to provoke all this fake dealer. And he said that, looking at him, it's hard to believe that his antiques are real and not another fake. Mr. Zhang immediately changed his face and asked him what? Who is he anyway and what is he doing? Where is his place? Bai Wu said that his name is Bai Wu and he is here to help Mr. Chi Lao buy a jug of nine dragons. Mr. Zhang asked him what he says is fake, right? He went around dozens of experts, and they all confirmed the authenticity of this jug. He is absolutely wrong. He knows it himself. What's he trying to be cool about here? Maybe then he will tell him what is wrong with this jug. Bai Wu thought that he was very confident in his forgery, but the probability of making a mistake is high. His forgery technology is unusual. So he reached for his sword and said that whether it was true or false, they would find out now. He thought that although there was a risk, there was nothing to lose. He picked up this weapon and said it was unusual. He never beat such expensive things. Mr. Jang defended his jug and said he hadn't sold it yet. Why is he breaking it? Bai Wu thought that his reaction, he just proved it now. And I asked him that he was asking why. Because it's a fake. Mr. Jang was already angry and asked him if he really wanted to joke with him. What kind of impudence is this? Bai Wu thought that he was so angry that he was ready to melt right now, but this is a very good moment for. Then he swung this weapon and said that he didn't care what they thought. Then he hit the jug. He told Mr. Zhang to get out of here, calling him a fake seller. Mr. Zhang turned to Chi Lao and asked him what, why did he let him do this? Ch Lao was calm and told Mr. Zhang not to worry. If Mr. Bai did not prove that this craft, then he would personally pay him off. After which, he looked at Bai Wu. Bai Wu thought that he knew what he was going for, and he knew that he could lose everything. What he did could have huge consequences. But then Mr. Chi added that, however, if Mr. Bai finds evidence that there is something wrong with this jug, Bai Wu realized that it wasn't easy for the old man either. He, like him, takes a lot of risks. They should both hope for luck. He started rummaging through the fragments in the vases and thought where was the flaw. The system pointed it out to him. He swung again, but stopped and thought that if he kept hitting so hard, then couldn't he break the spot of the flaw. The system said that, given the power of the hammer, the probability of destroying the flaw is 58.7%. Bai Wu was scared and thought it was close. He almost broke his heart in his heels. After that, he began to gently poke and thought, what if so? The system said that the probability of destruction is 13.7%. Bai Wu thanked the system and thought that he seemed to understand. There's not much left. 
but after a while he was in a panic and thought, what is going on, why is he so unlucky, he just can't screw up. Then Mr. Zhang turned to Mr. Chi and said that everyone said it was the original, only this boy said it was a fake. He keeps hitting and hitting, and not a single proof. They don't even know what a loss it is anymore. To which Mr. Chi told him not to worry. If the attack seems wrong, then he will pay extra. Bai Wu looked at Mr. Chi and thought that he was staring so intently. If he does not find anything, then he will not be able to explain himself to him and he will be finished. Then he struck one last time. In a panic, he began to prowl among the fragments of some flaw, and thought that why is there nothing? But then he finally found it. A piece of paper with a QR code was hidden inside the vase. Bai already showed it and told them to see it with their own eyes, what is it? Mr. Chi took this fragment in his hands, and when he realized that the vase was a fake, he changed everything in his face very much, and asked Mr. Zhang to explain it to him. Mr. Zhang said it's impossible, it's just impossible. After Mr. Zhang was taken away, Bai Wu exhaled and remembered something that the broken blade also had a QR code and this means that they were produced in one place. Mr. Chi said he was very grateful to him. Bai Wu told him not to be so kind, he was always happy to help. Mr. Chi handed him a business card and said that if he had any problems in the future, he should call this phone and he would be happy to help him. Bai thanked him for his generosity, and he said he thought it would come in handy, and I thought that he had succeeded. Now he has a patron. After he came out of his house, he thought 50 million for a pair of swords, plus 10 million for helping Mr. Chi. He is extremely lucky today. Now it's time to proceed to the next step. He needs to earn even more money. Bai Wu was driving in his car and remembered Lao Wang and thought that he thought he should visit his friend today. He has already made friends with such an authority like Chi Lao, the fat man will not be able to resist. It will be necessary to give him 10 million steam swords. He can't refuse. Bai Wu arrived at his destination just in time. After all, a car stopped at Lao Wang's shop and forcibly shoved him inside. Lao Wang asked them what, who are they? Bai Wu was surprised and thought this was happening. Is this really a kidnapping? The system said that the probability of abduction is 75%. I'm afraid I rushed to catch up with them. Can't he leave him? But why did this gang need a fat man? Had he been kidnapped for ransom? The system said that the probability of a ransom demand is 12%. Bai Wu thought it didn't matter because he had to call the police first. But he didn't have an internet connection. He thought, is there really no signal? Shouldn't he be fishing all over the world? The system said that the probability of blocking the signal with a special device is from 89 to 95%. Bai thought, is it really blocking? Does he really need to go there and what kind of gang is this anyway? What is the percentage of a successful rescue of a fat man? The system said 37%. I'm afraid Wu thought that was enough, he would see who could stop him. The system informed him that in 5, 8 seconds the guard would go to take a leak. He should enter and go to the right. He has 3.8 seconds for this to sneak in. Bai Wu passed unnoticed by the guard and thought that he was risking his life in order to save this fat man. Just let him try to refuse him. And ask the system what, where is he now? The system showed him the map. And she said that 30 meters straight and then you need to turn right. After 8 seconds, the guards will disperse within 13 seconds it is safe to pass. The men were talking among themselves, one of them asked why the boss needed this fat man. To which his partner replied that because of this fat man, they lost a 7-star dagger, who will be responsible for this. Meanwhile, Bai Wu had infiltrated the place where Lao Wang was being held. He was tied up and beaten. Bai Wu motioned for him to be quiet, then untied him. Lao Wang asked him what, how did he know he was here now? Had he been following him? It's a gang, his. Bai Wu slapped him in the face and asked him if he was completely crazy. Does he have fat instead of brains, or what? And asked him if he knew who had abducted him. Lao Wang said no. They grabbed him, beat him up and left him here. Bai Wu thought that most likely the system would not be able to answer this question either. The situation is not easy. He got to his feet and told Lao Wano that he needed to avoid it first, then they would talk. Stop sitting around here already. Lao Wang said that he should not be so fat and even wounded, he would not be able to escape. He shouldn't worry about him, let him save himself. And when he escapes, then let him go to the police. Last time, thanks to him, he went broke because of this seven-star dagger. So they better forget about their enmity, it was already in the past. Bai Wu couldn't stand it and told him to shut up already. He doesn't know about his abilities yet, does he? It's easy to pull it out. After that, he asked him what he remembers, that he offered him cooperation. Lao Wang said he remembered, so what? Apparently, now only in the next life. Bai Wu showed him a piece of paper with 60 million on it. Lao Wang immediately jumped up. And I asked him, what, where did he get so much money from? 
Beiru told him to stop talking already, they need to get out of here. As soon as they escape, he will give him 10 million. Bao Wang's eyes lit up, and he said that then we should get out of here as soon as possible. At this time, two guards were moving towards them. One of them said that the boss said that this fat man doesn't know anything, we need to deal with him. He's just a fat meat carcass we'll have to dig a big hole for him, so they need to get on with it. Lao Wang got scared and said it was the end, they were screwed. Bai Wu told him not to be afraid, because he is already here, he will definitely save him. These two men entered the room, but they did not find Lao Wang there and asked where he had gone. Then one of them saw an open window, and the rope sticking out of him and said he escaped through the window. We need to go after him as soon as possible. Then they sped off. In fact, Bai Wu and Lao Wang were hiding behind boxes. They looked out the door, and Bai Wu said that, fortunately, he was witty enough, he made it look like they escaped through the window in order to distract the chase. Lao Wang said that even if they really tried to escape through the window, he would not have escaped in such a form anyway. Meanwhile, all the guards rushed in different directions to find Lao Wang. Meanwhile, they were already hiding in the bricks. When all the guards ran away, Lao Wang exhaled and said that he had been blown away. Bai Wu grabbed his arm and told him that they needed to run there as soon as possible. He asked the system, which way is the chance of escape higher? The chance of a successful escape in one direction was 72%, and in the other 33%. Lao Wang asked him if he had been here before. Bai Wu said that anything is possible. Lao Wang asked him, what is it, why is he so sure that they need to go here? Intuition, will they really be able to escape? Bai Wu stopped and told him that he had an extraordinary talent. He has the skill of prediction. Or does he still not trust him? Lao Wang asked him if it's really true. Since childhood, he dreamed of being special. It's so cool. If they really get out, then he will be very grateful to him. Bai Wu asked him again that, then as soon as they get out, they will start their cooperation. Does he agree? Lao Wang said it was a deal. Then one of the guards was watching him on the security camera. The man told his boss that here he is. He is Bai Wu. The boss asked that the people who were sent to catch him never returned. And how many years did the kid do it? The man said that last time this kid ruined their plans. About the seven star knife and the urn of nine dragons. Did this guy somehow find out about the fake? And also implicated Chi Lao in this story. The boss said that he believes that he is like a fat man. He will not interfere with them in any way. The real obstacle is the old man. The man said that the boss is right. These small shrimp will not be able to create large waves. With the biggest problem, the old man Chi will also be dealt with tomorrow and he will be caught. Then the boss kicked him in the stomach and asked him what to catch the old man. Is he an idiot? If someone destroys their plan for one, blood will be spilled from him. And he himself thought that how did that brat find out about those items? It must be the old fox's tricks again. He saw and knew everything, but he was silent and even used a small rat to quietly destroy his business. This guy is very famous, so he won't let him go just like that. And he said that today they will not deal with these two brats, and then we will figure out how to defeat this old man Chi. It was already evening when Lao Wang asked if they hadn't made it out yet. She said that the way, and the farthest you need to make your way along the wall. The success rate of escape is 48.5%. The path without is the closest. The rate of successful escape is 39.2%. He thought that the road with a lower level of risk passes through the wall, and the probability of failure is much lower. But, of course, it is best to go this way, but they are too tired. He also found that when they or they commit any action, the probability is constantly changing. Then they will sing along the nearby road, they will monitor the changes. They came out on some road, and Bai Wu said that at the end of this road there is a passage through which he entered. Lao Wang said that salvation is not far off. Bai Wu told him not to celebrate the victory so early, he should be careful. Bai thought that the closer to the door, the higher the chance of escape. Will everything really go so smoothly? Lao Wang said that these people are similar, they were lost, this is a great ending. But then the door slammed right in front of them, and the man told his boss that the rest was on him. Then the level of successful escape began to fall sharply. Bai asked what was going on. Then the boss came by car with his people. One of his men asked that the little ones were still trying to escape. They should try harder, they will see how they can escape this time. Bai Wu thought, is it really over? Bai Wu asked Lao Wang for forgiveness and said that he seemed to have screwed up. Lao Wang said it was nothing, so they need to kick their ass together. Then the fight started. All this time, the boss was watching them. After Bai Wu and Lao Wang beat up all his people, the boss said they were nothing like that. So let them both immediately fit on it. The boss turned out to be many times stronger than his people. 
He got the two of them instantly, and he told them not to stop and to continue. After all, he hasn't even warmed up yet. Lao Wang was lying on his back and said he was tired, he was too fat, he couldn't continue. So let him finish him off already. The boss just grinned and said that by preventing him from getting his money and knocking out so many of his people, let them not think that he would let them die so easily. Did Bai Wu think that they were preventing him from earning? What is he talking about? But it doesn't matter, now is not the time to think about it, we need to get out of here. And I asked the system what is the probability of a successful escape. The system said that the chance of a successful escape is 33%. Bai Wu thought there was a chance, but what should he do? Lao Wang looked at him and thought that he seemed to have some kind of plan. He should buy more time. And turning to the boss, he said that okay, even though he was fat, but he would try again. But the boss shoved him again. Lao Wang was already barely able to stand on his feet. Bai Wu thought that the fat man would not last long, but he was holding up very well. But wait a minute, is he the key to escape? The system said that the fat man is the key to escape 100%. Bai Wu thought that he couldn't die by accident, could he? After which he shouted to him that he was their last chance. He has to use all the techniques he knows. Lao Wang asked him that did he really want to see him impersonate a kung fu panda? But I thought I had to fight. He grabbed the boss by the leg and started telling him to spare him. He will ask his wife to pay a ransom for him. How much does he need? Let him name the price. While everyone was confused, Lao Wang knocked down the boss. The boss called him a fat jerk and said he dared to attack him. Then he kicked him and told him to die. Then he started beating him. Bai Wu couldn't look at it. But then he remembered something and thought that when people get into a rage, they lose control of their emotions and stimulate the release of adrenaline. Thus, you can exceed your potential several times. Suppose that if the fat man goes into a rage, then what is the chance that he can defeat Scar? The system said that he would have a 78% chance of defeating Scar. Meanwhile, while Bai Wu was talking, Scar had already beaten Lao Wang enough, after which he lit a cigarette and said that it was boring. He hadn't even really warmed up. His people began to grin, and one of them said that the Wheel of Fortune had turned to them. Bald Man C, addressing Lao Wang and Bai Wu, said that if they have the last words, then they should say them faster before going on their last journey. Bai apologized to Lao Wang again, saying that he had been hiding something from him. Those blades really were real. Here the system said that the chance of a successful escape is 6, 75%. Bai kept telling him that did he remember the check he showed him. This is the real price of those swords. Here the chance of a successful escape increased and became 22.51%. Bai Wu thought that it seemed to be working, he needed to continue, and he said that, by the way, when reporting to Mr. Chi, he said what he was doing, many things in the antique shop, Shi Lao said he would kick him out of the antique street, not make him disappear from business, Lao Wang was already seething with rage, and the system said that the chance of a successful escape had increased again, to 38.25%. Bai Wu did not calm down and said that also those people who tried to sell him the seven star blade actually worked for him. The chance of a successful escape is now 47, 47%. Bai wanted to say something else, but Lao Wang couldn't stand it anymore and told him that he was a beast. He's a king animal. The chance of a successful escape is 62-76%. Lao Wang shouted that everyone would die today. After that, he began to carry everyone, and the chance of a successful escape is 78, 06%. Each time the chance of success increased. When Lao Wang dealt with those people, he hit Bai Wu as well. At this point, the system said that the chance is 100%. After that, Lao Wang was exhausted and fainted. Then the Bai mind rose. He said that, fortunately, he guessed to plant a piece of iron, otherwise the fat man would have killed him. He dragged Lao Wang into his car and said how heavy he was. But Lao Wang didn't even move. Did Bai Wu say that he went to heaven or something? They still need to figure out where all these people came from and what they want from them. Turning to the fat man, he said that the time had come. The time when they can start cooperating. Meanwhile, the boss got up and said that it was fine. Now Bai Wu will have to look around more often. Bai Wu brought Lao Wang to the hospital. Lao Wang called him names and asked why he had such injuries. Bai Wu told him to calm down. They may not be quite in shape, but they are alive. And he added that apart from those blades, the rest was really fakes. He promises that in the future, if he cheats on him, then he can just let him die on the street. Lao Wang started crying and said he was such a crook. He's such a liar. Bai Wu hugged him and told him to stop crying. He would make it up to him. Lao Wang immediately cheered up and said exactly what. He promised to take him as an apprentice and teach him his tricks. Bai Wu told him that with his level, it would be quite difficult for him. Lao Wang said he didn't care, but he shouldn't forget, because he owed him. And I asked him what, why not give him a small material gift then? 
Bai Wu called him a stingy nutcase and said he was just incorrigible. Lao Wang laughed and said that from now on the ancient society is their life. Sounds promising, doesn't it? Then, from a sudden movement, his arm was stabbed, and he fell and began to scream that he was in pain. Bai Wu asked him if it was true that he didn't know everyone who kidnapped him. Lao Wang said that if he had known, he would have made them pay for everything they had done. He never even had any enemies, but he remembered something. He studied one fake seven-star knife. Maybe it has something to do with this. Then something came to Bai Wu and he said that all the fake items had a QR code. Then what is the chance that all these crafts were made by these bandits? The system said that the probability of fraud by this group is 100%. Bai Wu thought that their level of fraud was how they were taking revenge. The members of this group have a lot of experience. He broke off two fairly large deals in a row with them. But wait a minute, they must have been following him from the very beginning. The system said that the probability of surveillance by a group called Machigami is 100%. Bai Wu asked that then what is the chance that the fat man was caught because of him? The system said that the probable connection of the abduction of the fat man with Bai Wu is 60%. Bai Wu thought that the fat man was partly caught because of him and partly because he checked them himself. It will be difficult for him to resist them now. It looks like he really pierced a hornet's nest. Lao Wang told him that he got into trouble this time because of him. Bai Wu thought it looked like the fat man didn't know about anything. Since he recognized him as an elder, then he shouldn't put him in danger anymore. And I told him that she should leave it to him, and he should get better in the meantime. Lao Wang said it was good. It seems that he is right, he will try. Then Bai Wu called, Mr. Chi. Bai Wu picked up the phone, and Mr. Chi said that he was aware of his adventures and asked him if he was okay. Bai Wu said he was sorry for bothering him with this, but they are safe. Oh, he himself thought that since Mr. Chi was calling him personally, it had something to do with the ancient society, didn't it? Sir, Chi told him that he would be out of town for two days, they should be careful. This gang won't forgive them so easily. Bai Wu asked him if he really knew something about this gang. Mr. CH said that so far not very much. He only knows that this is a professional group of forgers with a long history. Bai Wu thought that according to Mr. Chi, it looks like it won't be easy. Sir, Chi told him that, simply put, he should wait for him to return, then they would meet. Bai Wu said it was fine, and he should take care of himself too. When he finished his conversation with Mr. Chi, Lao Wang told him to listen to his conversation with Mr. Chi. It is easy to understand that this friendship is not so simple. Now they are also part of the ancient society, they should be careful. Bai Wu thought that something seemed to have happened to Mr. Chi, and it all had something to do with these people. It's much more complicated than he thought. And why would he do all this? He just wants to enjoy life, doesn't he? Why did everything go wrong? He doesn't understand it. Maybe he shouldn't have messed with these fakes in the first place. Being a good person is so hard. Meanwhile, Boss Scar was on the phone and said that Old Man Chi has a deep foundation. They had recently become convinced of this, and he would like to avoid it. So they have to come up with a solution. The man said that it was fine, let him leave it to them. People from society. Scar thought that it would be necessary to use the ancient society to fight them. Ch Luo and his younger brother with the surname Bai, the game is just beginning. A few days later, Lao Wang has already been discharged from the hospital. Bai Wu was just picking him up from there right now. Lao Wang disguised himself and told him that maybe they would hurry up. Who knows which corner these killers will be waiting for them. Bai Wu told him that it was morning now, no bandit would dare to attack in broad daylight. Lao Wang told him that the organization of these forgers is strong. Maybe they should lay low somewhere for a while. And there they can wait for Mr. Chi. He knows a resort that's not a bad place, maybe they'll go there. Bai Wu shook his head negatively and said that he had already thought about it, but there was no need. Sitting and waiting for death is not the best option. They'd better take the initiative themselves. They got into the car and Lao Wang, taking off his mask, asked him if he really wanted to deal with them. Then a man passed by them and called Lao Wang and asked him if his wife was also giving birth here. Lao Wang exhaled and said that he had scared him. This is a gang of scumbags, they are very dangerous. Their team must survive. Bai asked him if he was still planning to hide. Where did all his coolness go? Should he not forget about it? They're good, but this gang is bad. But well, first they need to collect more information about them. You shouldn't go to them without knowing anything about them. Didn't he say that they would dominate ancient society? His words will come true, he must believe him. Lao Wang was angry and said that those who were afraid of wolves and tigers dominated the rot, and called them all names. Bai Wu told him he was like an old rattle. 
and ask him what and how he offers them to get information. Lao Wang told him that he had just come to the right place. There is a man in the north side of the city. He has sources. There is nothing that he could not find out for a certain price. Bai Wu thought that would he really have to go to the ghost market. But it can be useful. The system said that the probability of receiving information is 100%. Bai Wu thought, is this informant really that useful? Even if it concerns such a serious gang. The system asked him again that how useful is he? The request is too complicated to answer. The probability of receiving information is 0%. Bai Wu was at a loss and thought that visiting the ghost market would help them, but they wouldn't find out anything. Now it is clear to him, they will not receive information from this informant. Or is there someone else in this city who could help them? The system said that the probability of getting help from the master is 100%. Bai Wu grabbed his head and told the system that talking to her was just brain torture. And already turning to Lao Wang, he said that go ahead. Their destination is the ghost market. Towards nightfall, they finally reached their destination. Bai Wu said it's quite interesting here. And he asked that how in general it is possible to see the goods in such darkness. Lao Wang told him that he just didn't understand anything. The ghost market is created for people who constantly live in darkness. He should take his time and he will soon get used to it. There is no need to rush to the informant so quickly. They have to take a walk in order to get used to it. Bai Wu said it was fine, why not? At this time, someone was watching them. This person called on the phone and said that they really came to the ghost market. He will follow his instructions. He was told that they would consider that he had done well. Good job. This man said 100,000 for spreading a few rumors. If he did it for two, wouldn't his reward double? Mentally turning to the fat man, he asked for his forgiveness, saying that he was a bad friend. Lao Wang told Bai Wu to believe him, because he is an important person here. There is nothing he can't find out. Then he saw his friend, whose name is Zhao. He waved to him and asked how he was. Old man Zhao didn't answer him, just turned away from him. Then his friend, whose name is San, was walking towards him. He asked him what kind of good things he could show. But this friend of his ignored him too. Lao Wang was at a loss and asked that all of them had taken the wrong pills. What's going on here? Bai Wu said he was really cool. Lao Wang said he just made a mistake with people, they need to move on. In this stall, he is a frequent customer. He and their boss are on solid ground. They approached this friend of his, and the man, without even looking at them, told them to look and choose what they liked. His name was Sun. Lao Wang asked him that they had not seen each other for a long time. They say he has another child. He'll buy a few things. Sun looked up and said that it was him. It's a pity, of course, but he will have to find another shop for this. Lao Wang got angry and asked him what he meant. He shouldn't joke with him like that. It seems to him that he has confused something today. Sun also started to get angry and told him not to get on his brain. He said he wouldn't sell him anything, and he asked if it was clear to him. Then Bai Wu intervened and whispered to Lao Wang that he was not the only one here, and asked him to look around. Everyone was staring at him and discussing something. Lao Wang asked what he was, that now he couldn't even go outside. Why are they all looking at them so strangely? Bai thought he needed information, but the locals are clearly aggressive towards them. He said that today was clearly not their day. He took Lao Wang by the hand and dragged him somewhere. Along the way, they were all called violators, and asked them to leave and never come back here. They also said that their spirit was no longer here. Lao Wang was worried and asked his boss what was going on here, something strange. He has been buying here for more than one year, but they still treat him that way. Bai Wu told him to keep quiet and do as he told him. After 10 minutes, when they disguised themselves, they came out on this street again. Lao Wang told himself that he was always polite, diligent and liked by everyone. And now he has become an enemy of society. Bai Wu asked him to drive quietly and said that they would sort it all out. They approached Lao Wang's friend again. Now he was smiling at them, because he didn't recognize them and told them to look and choose what they liked. Sun asked his friend if he had heard anything yet. The fat man became a member of the ancient society, now he is a subordinate of old Chi. The old man liked the vase of nine dragons. Almost no one can afford even the initial price. Therefore, he ordered the fat man to break the vase and slander the seller, calling him a forger. The man who was sitting next to him was horrified and asked if he really did it. Then another man came up to them and said what they were saying. He had an accomplice, a man named Bai Wu, and he also heard that the loader was thrown into a reservoir in the west of the city. The elderly man was horrified and asked what was really killed. Didn't anyone call the police? Song said that old man Chi is a big shot with big connections, so the fat man has nothing to fear. That's why he just walked around the market. The man said that everything would come back like a boomerang, let them rejoice while they can. After everything he's done, Kara will come to him. 
That old man asked them what, where did they get these rumors from? Do they have proof? Sun said there was no proof, but rumors don't appear by themselves. Everyone is talking about it now. The man said he was right. Rumors do not appear by themselves. The fat man is clearly not clean. The old man said that he rarely sees him lately. Probably it's all true. That must be what he was doing. Hearing all this, Lao Wang began to boil with rage. And he was about to say something. But Bai Wu managed to shut him up and take him away. When they got away from this place, Lao Wang said that it was clear to a fool that they were framed. Bai said he knows that. And I thought, could it be that this is connected with this gang of forgers? The system said that the chances are 67.5%. Bai Wu thought that it had something to do with them anyway. Lao Wang said they were completely clean. Who could have slandered them? Bai Wu said that this rumor is not directed at them, but at Mr. Chi. Mr. Chi is a very respected person. He does not need to be afraid of this, but it can interfere with the two of them. Lao Wang said that they call them creatures. They say that Mr. Chi is their boss. This will definitely not lead to anything good. Bai Wu said it was a very dangerous trap, but fortunately they found out about everything in time. Lao Wang suggested that they could find someone who was spreading rumors and refute them. The rumors have spread so much, how can they look for something further? Bai Wu grabbed him by the shoulder and told him that he thought they didn't need to come up with anything. His ability suggests that some master should help them. Lao Wang asked, what is the master? What kind of master? Bai Wu said he doesn't know yet, but first of all they need to find him first. While Bai Wu was reasoning, Lao Wang rushed to his friend, and he picked up a box. His friend said that this box is from the time of the Qing Dynasty, it is very ancient and mysterious. But it doesn't open, he will give it to him for 30,000. Bai Wu said that he changed quickly. Lao Wang told him that 3,000. His friend said that it was a very valuable thing. He could not give it away for such a price. For this price, it will go into the negative. The system told Bai Wu that this man was lying 100%. And I thought that the price for it is small. He should continue to bargain. Lao Wang understood him and told his friend that he was doing well honestly. 5,000 if not, then he will leave. His friend said that he admits that he knows how to bargain, but he won't earn anything from it. Lao Wang jumped up and asked him what and how much he wanted to get. The man said that this thing was left to him by his father. He is telling the truth. But then a man intervened and told the seller that these two are unreliable buyers. He should not sell anything to them. Bai Wu tensed and wondered how he knew. And who is it? Lao Wang knew this man. And he asked, is this really the Wu Junta? What is he doing here? Bai thought that the most important thing right now was to find that master faster. But who else is he? Lao Wang put on his mask again and asked Wu Hongtai what, why can't he buy it? Wu Huangtai said that this box belongs to the Ming Dynasty, not the king and it costs about 300,000. Bai Wu asked Lao Wang that he knew him. Who is he? Lao Wang said that he is a martial artist. His name is Wu Junta. He was born into a family of wealthy antique dealers. I had to deal with him once. I asked, what then turns out that he revealed them and deliberately found fault. Lao Wang said he didn't know. He is strange. He is always unflappable and always behaves as if everyone owes him. Wu Hongtai told them that stupid blind people are not given to understand this. He's even ashamed of them. Bai Wu thought that this was clearly a provocation. Had he figured them out? Lao Wang asked him what? Is he the blind fool? Does he really think that he has learned martial arts and has become really cool, doesn't he? Decided to become a boss in the antiques industry. And decided to set your own rules here. Has he decided that since he knows how to fight, he will rule the whole world? Is it really not enough to be a martial arts leader? Does he think he's Jackie Chan or Jet Lai? Bai Wu thought that the fat man was so self-confident, wasn't he scared at all? The system said it was 0%. Bai Wu said no, but when, where does he get this confidence from? Lao Wang said, in a whisper and guiltily, that it sounded cooler in the movies. A crowd gathered for this scandal. One of the men asked that who is this fat man? How dare he threaten a martial artist? Another man said he thought he had seen him somewhere before. Bai Wu thought that if they continued like this, they would definitely be discovered. Their chance to find this master is rapidly falling. And he told Wu Hongtai that since this gentleman knows the price of this thing, they will not buy it. They were about to leave on this man, block their way. Bai Wu asked him what he meant by that. Wu Hyundai asked him that they did it intentionally, didn't they? And since they don't deny anything, it means he's right. And they deliberately didn't tell the seller the true price of this box. Or are they really just stupid blind people? Lao Wang said they were surrounded. Bai Wu thought it was over, they were discovered, he was clearly looking for trouble. He deliberately attracts the attention of the crowd, but why? The system showed him some strange symbols. Bai, you asked her if she knew anything other than symbols, and asked her if the box was from the Qing or Ming dynasty. 
the system said that the probability that this box is from the Qing Dynasty is 100%. Then Bai Wu told Wu Hongtui that this box was really from the Qing Dynasty. He apologized for criticizing him, but he said he was from the Ming Dynasty. Wu Hongtui said that then they would see which one of them was right. Lao Wang asked them what, how would they find out? Wu Hongtai said that, of course, by checking. And if he turns out to be right, then he will buy the box at its real price. Lao Wang asked Bai Wu if this box was definitely from the Qing Dynasty. Bai Wu just nodded at him. After that, Lao told you that they argue well. But if he disgraces himself, he will immediately leave them alone. Wu Juntui said that of course. And he began to quickly disassemble this box. Bai Wu was surprised and thought that did he really know how to open it. He's really good at what he does. Wu Hongtui disassembled the box, said that the box consists of two parts. The outer layer was made in the Qing Dynasty. The inner part was made by a master from the Ming Dynasty. And its market price is 300,000. The seller of this box told him that it really opened his eyes. Lao Wang was angry and asked what? Was there an inner compartment? People began to rejoice. They said what was expected of Mr. Wu. Then someone started laughing at Lao Wang and asked what and where all his courage had gone and one of the men said that these two look like you are familiar. Another agreed with him and said that he was right, he had also seen them somewhere before. His friend laughed at him and said that with his eyesight, let him not make him laugh. Lao Wang turned to his boss and told him that it seemed they had made a mistake. Bai Wu thought that yes, they really have big problems. The system did not lie the outer case of the box is really made in the Qing Dynasty, but who knew there was another one in it? Does he really want to set them up so badly? But why would he do that? The system will not be able to answer this question, because he knows little about this person. Today he has to let go. After that, he said that the master had excellent skills and a sharp look. He justified, admired his knowledge. Lao Wang realized that they had failed and said that it was okay, calling this man Jackie Chan and said that it turns out he is really cool. Wu Juntui told them that they had lost, they had to fulfill their agreement, and we should also apologize for everything they said before. Bai Wu thought he was arrogant and cruel. He looks scary, but he doesn't look like a bad person. In addition, the Wu family works in the antiques industry. But then I realized something and thought that it was definitely the Wu family. This is the master he is looking for. Someone from the crowd asked that it wasn't a fat man by any chance. Another man replied that they had disguised themselves on purpose. They wanted to ruin the ghost market. The bald man shouted that they were scoundrels, and they had no place here. Another man asked that since they could not earn money themselves, they decided to deceive the others. Here Lao Wang could not stand it, shouted that everyone who believes these stupid rumors, let them come forward. He will show how honest he is. Bai Wu stopped him and thought he was the master he was looking for. The system said it was 50%. Bai already thought that it was clear. Even if it wasn't him, then he was somehow connected with him. Wu Hongtui thought that this was just his quirk. But the master appreciates him so much. An elderly man who was watching them from around the corner said that old Chi's eyesight had apparently deteriorated. And this is the kid he needs to look after. Bai said he knows what to do. Lao Wang asked him to explain it to him more clearly. And asked what to do what. Bai. Wu said that Mr. Wu's keen eyesight and amazing skills he really admired. But this box is worth more than 300,000. Wu Juntui asked what is more than 300,000. And in what way? Bai Wu said that the Wu family has such a rich heritage. He has no doubt that he already knows this. They have already seen that the box is not easy, so maybe there is something else inside. Wu Hongtui said that the Wu family has a similar box, and the techniques of deciphering ancient riddles have been passed down from generation to generation. The mystery of this box is already open inside there is nothing of value. Bai Wu asked him if they could then not try to open it. Wu Hongtai looked tense but said he was fine. When he started opening this drawer, he thought, is there really something in it? Maybe a treasure. But when he opened it, he saw that there was nothing there, and exhaling, he said that he said he was the same as in their family. He had nothing inside. Bai Wu said it wasn't and asked him to let him. Wu Juntui handed him the box. Bai started putting it back together, but he couldn't do anything. Then the old men from the crowd began to swear and asked what he was showing off before. Let him not dare to spoil such a good box. Bai Wu took another look at this box, and this time he realized something. He started to collect it again. Then he pulled out a tablet and showed that there was a drawing on it. He turned this drawing to the top and began to twist it. The system said that the first layer is a lotus flower, and the second layer is a maze, and showed him the picture. Bai Wu smiled and thought that even the masters did not know about it, and this box is encrypted with a Chinese and Western lock. And when Bai Wu had done all the machinations, the drawer opened and there was a broken bracelet in it. Everyone was very surprised. Someone said that is there really something there? 
didn't the Wu family even notice? Bai Wu thought that. Fortunately, he had studied everything in detail from the system. Complete shame is postponed. And turning to Mr. Wu, he said that he had no talent, but he was still capable of something. Mr. Wu said that he has exceptional abilities, he admits defeat. Bai wondered if the master he was looking for was Wu Hongtai, but he understood. Most likely, Mr. Wu did not intervene on a whim. The master must be watching them from the crowd. Mr. Wu said that since he have lost tons, he would buy this box and give it to Mr. Bai. Lao Wang asked him that where had all his mood gone. He knew that his skills were complete bullshit. Now everyone started talking about Bai Wu. One of the men asked if his last name was Bai. Another picked him up and said that he was the same Bai Wu that everyone was talking about. He doesn't look like the one they described, maybe he's not like that. It looks like the Wu family's pride is hurt. Then an elderly man came out and said that these youngsters are so talented now. Let them give the old folks a look at it. Bai Wu thought that he had finally appeared. Then an elder came out to them. Lao Wang slapped his cheek and said to be pinched. Asked what he was doing here. Wu Hongtoi greeted the elder. People around were delighted and surprised. One of them said that something serious must have happened here. Some man said it was all because of Bai Wu. But the elder said be quiet, let him see. Bai Wu also greeted him. The elder asked him that did they know each other. Bai Wu said that there is no one in this field who does not know about him. Just now, his comrade almost made a mistake. But, fortunately, they managed to help him. The elder asked, what is this fat man? Was he really wrong? Lao Wang's eyes shone and he said he couldn't believe it. He had always treated him like an idiot. And again turning to Bai Wu, he said that his name was Bai Wu. Bai Wu said yes. The elder said that it was good, it was very good. He beat the Juntai, and he wants to see if he can handle him. Bai Wu said that how dare he. The elder laughed and said that, as they say, he was small and he was good. The old ones also need a warm up and ask to play with him. Bai Wu thought that so Elder Wu was their mysterious master. The system said that Mr. Wu is a mysterious master at 100%. Bai Wu thought that this old man is not a blunder for his support. He needs to show himself and told the elder that since he personally asks him, he does not dare to refuse him. Perhaps this fate, and ask him, what does the Lord want from him? The elder really liked this reaction, and he said that he was not a blunder. Then he took out two bills. Lao Wang asked him if this was really some kind of trick. The elder got angry at him and asked him if he really thought that a representative of such a family would be cunning. Had he completely forgotten himself? Lao Wang said that then why these bills? The elder said that in an hour, with only 100 yuan in their pocket, they should buy the most valuable thing. The winner is the one who buys the more valuable thing. Bai Wu said that it was fine, they agreed. After that, they went to different sides. Shouts of people were heard. Someone said that today is just an amazing day. They will see the battle of the masters. Someone said that for 100 yuan you can buy something only on Taobao. This is a Chinese platform for online shopping. One man asked the other what he thought. Which of them would win? To which he replied that, most likely, Master Wu asked that who else could. The man said yes, but this Bai Wu is not so simple either. Lao Wang told Bai Wu that this blade looks good, he should take a look. This is King Long Yan Yu's Azure Dragon Blade. It was used by Guan Yu himself. After Lao Wang pointed to the portraits, said that this portrait seems to be the original of Tang Bohu's work. Tang Yin, also known as Tang Bohu, is a Chinese artist, calligrapher and singer of the Ming Dynasty. After that, he started pulling Bai Wu again and said that this porcelain vessel looks very expensive. This is the eighth treasure from the Roasting Furnace of Ru. Roasting Furnace Ru is one of the five famous furnaces that were produced in ancient China. Then Bai Wu could not stand it and, turning to Lao Wang, asked him if he could be silent for at least a second. Lao Wang was a little upset and said he was trying to help him. Bai Wu said he was pointing to some fakes. Therefore, let him be silent. Lao Wang said that it was just dark here, and he didn't have time to see. Bai Wu said it was okay, because he would still lead them to success. And turning to the system, I asked her to show what she can do. One hour later, they gathered again. Bai Wu said that this is a blue and white vase recognition that mimics the Qing dynasty from the earlier Republic of China. Let it be a copy, but his master's skill is magnificent. It costs tens of 1,000. The elder was surprised and thought that did he lose. This child is not so simple, he was able to find such a thing. Vases that mimic the era of the Qing dynasty. That's pretty good. And exhaling, he said that these are old books that were published after the development of the Republic of China. Lao Wang said, Elder, that apparently he didn't take them seriously. After all, a complete set of these books cost only a few 1,000 yuan. He laughed and patted Bai Wu, patting his shoulder, saying what a beautiful victory. The elder told him that he still had milk on his lips, and asked him, what's a few 1,000 yuan? 
Does he think he's an idiot? For those who know their business, these books are priceless. There are tens of thousands of them worth nothing next to a priceless treasure. Lao Wang told him that yes, he was just joking. Bai Wu was at a loss and thought that the master was clearly not going to lose. The master laughed and said that they still have to study and study, and asked them if they really dare to doubt his rightness. After that, he looked at everyone. People shook with fear and began to say that yes, Mr. Wu won. Lao Wang said that these people just don't want to offend him. Bai Wu was upset and thought that he had calculated everything but he did not even expect Master Wu to pull something like this. After that, Master Wu said that he would be fair. He is not going to forcibly convince them of the pricelessness of his treasure. Today's battle ended in a draw. Tomorrow Bai Wu should come to his house, he has what he wants. He thinks he's already figured out what it's about. Bai Wu said that he would do it well. After that, Master Wu turned around and, addressing the Hong Tai, said that they had to go. Bai Wu thought that this old man was really something. Then Master Wu asked him if he wanted to find the one who spread these rumors. Has he dealt with it yet? And he himself thought that this child was why you were looking for him. And the old man Chi seems to be still out of town. Lao Wang was shocked and asked, did he just say that he had dealt with him? How did he know? Bai Wu thought that he didn't know how many members there were in the ancient society. But he knew one thing, he was definitely moving up. But what awaits them tomorrow? He's looking forward to it. Together they asked if the informant was spreading rumors. Lao Wang tried to call, but was told that the subscriber's phone was turned off or was outside the network coverage area. Lao Wan said that he never turned off his phone. What happened? Lai Wu wondered if the informant was spreading rumors. The system said it's 100%. Did he ask that he was hired? The system said it's 100%. But why would Master Wu put on such a show? Can't he help him out in the open? Okay, he needs to forget about it, because it's useless to think about it. Now we need to find out what Master Wu is up to. Then Lao Wang said that Master Wu called them to him and asked him that they would go, wouldn't they? Bai Wu told him that Master Wu was only calling for him. Lao Wang hugged him and said that they were comrades. Where Bai Wu went, Lao Wang also went. And I asked him if they were going that way or not. Bai Wu said that Master Wu was not their enemy if he asked to come. Most likely, this is very important. Lao Wang said that okay, even on their deathbed, they are together until the end. The next day, they both came to Master Wu's mansion. Bai Wu asked, what is this mansion? Lao Wang stood and photographed him. Bai Wu said that this is the life he wants. Lao Wang kept taking pictures and said he would send them to friends. He wants to show off. The fat man was invited to the Wu estate. Bai Wu asked that why brag about visiting Wu's house. In the future they will have their own home and much better. Lao Wang said he was right. They will achieve everything together. After that, they shook hands and at the same time said that they were going to a rich future together. Then the dog appeared. The same dog that Bai Wu helped find a mistress. Bai Wu thought that this feeling seemed to be deja vu. Then that girl came running and asked for forgiveness, said that she was going to fasten it. Bai Wu was surprised, asked her, what, is it really her? The girl said that he looked familiar, she had already seen him somewhere. But where was it? She'll remember now. Lao Wang asked his boss in a whisper that who was it? Did he really know her? Bai Wu said he could say that, he had met her before. The girl said she remembered, he's Bai Wu, isn't he? Bai University said that yes it is. The girl asked, what are they doing in front of her house? Bai Wu asked if this was really her house. And Lao Wang asked her what she was to Master Wu. The girl said that's how they came to her grandfather, and offered to take them to him. Lao Wang asked Bai Wu if she really wanted to see them off. Should they be more careful? Bai Wu thought that she had an open character, but it seems to him that something is wrong here. Then the girl had already opened the gate and called them. The three of them went into the courtyard. The girl asked that where is her grandfather. Lao Wang whispered to his boss that this girl even knows what family she was born into. Escort strangers from the front door straight to the head of the family. Bai Wu thought, what's going on? What was she up to? Did she want to lead them into a trap? Then the girl told her dog to take them to their grandfather. Bai Wu, hearing this, thought that or maybe she is by nature like that. Then Wu Hongtai came out of the house. He asked the girl what she was doing here. The girl was very happy to see him. And she said that they had come to grandpa. She wanted to see them off. But she doesn't know where he is now. Wu Hong Tommy told her that he had already warned her so many times not to take anyone home. And after looking at them, he said that especially rootless, suspicious strangers. And having already addressed them, he said that they needed to go. The master was waiting for them on the terrace. Bai Wu said goodbye to the girl and followed Wu Hongtai. Bai Wu thought that it turned out that he was just making it up. This girl is pure and innocent. Then they came to the terrace and Wu Jintami told the master that they had come. 
the master showed the flash drive and said that this information was for a group of forgers. They have to prove their abilities if they want her. Bai Wu said to the master, does he dare to ask how he can prove them? The master got up and said that he had heard about him and old Chi. He is so young, and already so talented, but is it true? It's very simple. He should look at the treasures from his office and tell why they are so valuable. And if he recognizes his abilities, then he will get this flash drive. Bai Wu said that it was fine, it was agreed. The master brought them into the room and said that this was his office. He's been collecting all these treasures for years. Bai Wu said that in that case, he would show what he was capable of. He looked at the vase and was very shocked, thinking, what is it? Lao Wang thought that Bai looked so serious. He has such a strange expression on his face, is something wrong? Here the master could not stand it and asked that really there were no decent values in his house. Bai Wu said he would like to take a closer look. Then Lao Wang came up to him and asked, is something wrong? Bai Wu said what he was thinking. Lao Wang said that he seemed to be out of shape today. Let him let him help. He knows the value of almost everything here. Nothing can be done, he will have to shine. He was about to say something, but Bai Wu stopped him and told him not to get involved. This is a serious matter. The master of the university asked him what, why is he silent? Silence will lead to nothing. Apparently, he was so praised in vain. Lao Wang thought that Bai Wu looked upset. It seems he will have to intervene. Two heads are better than one. Why not say a few words in order to appease Master Wu? The rich are such conceits. Then he said that the Buddha's head looks great, because it's from the Northern Wai Dynasty. She is so rare and unique, he is amazed. It's priceless. Master Wu asked, what was he talking about this head? It is forged. It is well preserved because it is several decades old. Bai was said that the approximate price could be 30,000 yuan. Lao Wang asked what is really a fake. And I thought that brother Bai, even if it's a fake, it can't be so straight. We need to fix this. And he said that it was okay, because even tigers miss. There is no sage who has never been wrong. And taking out the next thing, he said that he had never seen such beautiful antique things. He was placed in the very center in the exclusive hall of the museum. Master Wu is so lucky. After all, he can see them every day. But Bai Wu said that a copy of the candlestick of the period of spring and autumn. Their forgery was popular 20 years ago, but it's worth admitting that all this is a great job. The approximate price is 100,000. Lao Wang was shocked and asked if this was also a fake. Bai Wu looked at Master Wu and realized that he was very interested. But Lao Wang got scared and thought it was over. Master Wu will kill him with his eyes. He needs to fix it quickly. And he said that Master Wu is so good at calligraphy and painting how awkward it is, apparently. Even bronze can be pierced. But all people are as gifted as he is, but he thinks it's okay. Then he saw the calligraphy on the wall, said it was an excerpt from a book. And he asked that calligraphy can't be forged, can it? But Bai Wu said no, it's a fake. Lao Wang asked if this was really some kind of joke. Is this fake, too? And he whispered to Bai Wu that Master Wu seemed to doubt his abilities. Otherwise, how could they be forged? Is he sure that he is not mistaken? Master Wu is a very important person. It's better not to anger him. The master may be old, but he could easily finish them off and not even sweat. But Bai Wu continued to say that this calligraphy was forged just last year. Using the technique of recognizing submitted paintings, you can easily make sure that he is right. But even such a fake would cost millions. He went up to the jug and said it was an imitation of the Ming Dynasty. He approached the vase, said that it was forged under the Qing Dynasty. After he said that the jade of the era of enmity of the states was forged and it is also a very good copy of Zhang Datsun's calligraphy. Then Master Wu couldn't stand it anymore and got up from his chair. Bai Wu said that at the moment there are 73 antiques here, and each of them is a fake. Lao Wang said it was impossible. Master Wu said that he wanted to say that he, Wu Bufen, the head of this family for 17 generations, had collected a collection of fakes. Lao Wang was very scared and wanted to say something to the master. He said that's not what the boss meant, but Master Wu pushed him away. And he asked Bai Wu what, is he really so confident in himself? Bai Wu said that yes, everything is forged here. Lao Wang asked Master Wu not to get angry. There must have just been a misunderstanding. His brother didn't get enough sleep today, that's why he's out of sorts with him. He must have just not seen his treasures. And asked Bai Wu, is he in his right mind? How could Master Wu put together a collection of fakes alone? Bai Wu thought he was right. How is this possible? The probability is 7 to 7%. But could the system have made a mistake? Before that, the system said that they would be able to get the support of the master today, but how to do it? Bao Yu told him that you need to apologize faster or they will definitely not leave here alive. Bai, did Wu think they would leave? What kind of cards is he hiding? 
Master Wu approached him and said that he was giving him one last chance and asked him if he would admit that his treasures were real. Bai Wu apologized and said that his entire antique is a fake. Lao Wang was in a panic and said they were finished. Master Wu asked him if he was ready to take responsibility for his words. Lao Wang intervened here, as he could not stay away and told Master Wu that everyone just needed to calm down. But Master Wu had him pinned down. Bai Wu began to worry about the fat man and said that the fat man had nothing to do with anything he said. He shouldn't render it just because they came together. After which, Master Wu released the fat man, and he said that okay, in that case, let him not blame him for it. After that, he used some kind of force against Bai Wu. Bai Wu thought that this was the end. Did the system make a mistake? Master Wu didn't seem to have any intention of helping them. But is he exactly the master they were looking for? But why does he do this? His house is full of fakes. Lao Wang was very worried about Bai Wu and told the old man. What would he answer for this? He doesn't dare touch his brother. Bai Wu's head started to get cloudy, and he wondered what was going on. What is this old man even trying to achieve? Master Wu said he was asking again. Will he change his mind? Bai Wu said that originals will never become a fake. A fake will never become an original. He cannot change that. After which, Master Wu laughed. Bai Wu thought, is today really his last day? After that, another old man entered this room and told Master Wu that he was too harsh. He did something with his fingers on Bai Wu's back, after which Toto exhaled. The old man told him that everything was fine. Master Wu just grazed his acupuncture point and blocked his airway. Bai Wu asked, what is Mr. Chi? Master Wu patted Bai Wu on the shoulder and laughed, saying that his disciple was such a nice old man who approved of him. He's in bad shape, but he didn't even put any effort into it. And turning to Mr. Chi said that he looked so tense. Sometimes you need to relax. Lao Wang was very worried about Bai Wu and asked him if he was okay. Bai Wu told him it was okay. After which the fat man began to cry and said he was so scared. Master Wu came up to him and, taking him by the scruff of the neck, said that nothing. Bai Wu turned to Master Chi and said that he and Master Wu. But Mr. Chi interrupted him and said that they were old acquaintances. He asked Master Wu to take care of him until he returned. He worried about his choice and decided to test it himself. Master Wu said yes, that's why he went to the ghost market. And I asked them, what, isn't he a great actor? They look so scared. Lao Wang said he was a very cool actor. He was really very scared. Master Wu told him that his tongue was hanging. He should reward him. Lao Wang asked what to reward with what. Master Wu said that 10 million yen for him and 50 million yen for Bai Wu. He would write them a check. Lao Wang asked that why is Bai Wu 50 million yen and he is only 10. Master Wu said that everyone gets as much as they invested. But if he wants to, he can show what he can do and maybe he'll change his mind. Bai Wu thought that everything ended well. It was a routine test. Then Mr. Chi asked him if he wanted to know why this place was filled with fakes. Bai Wu said yes, he was very surprised when he came in here. Mr. Chi turned to Master Wu and asked him to explain everything to them. Master Wu said that they were gathered here not only for verification. They should be able to recognize fakes, but at the same time they should not lose their honor and beliefs. One must always be vigilant so that the demons of greed do not devour them. Everything in this room can be a work of great art, however they have to distinguish them. First, he collects them in order to study their technique. And secondly, in order to harden your character. Thirdly, and most importantly, many experts were created by one gang. Sing Gontang. This is the gang of forgers he's looking for. Bai Wu asked him that he was studying the enemy from their works. Knowing the methods of the forgers, they can cope with them. Master Wu said it's not bad, he's right. This office is called the Room of Lies. Bai Wu thought that was why he was collecting crafts, but he was more concerned about something else when he used the system to calculate. Could the Wu family have something to do with a gang of scammers? The system said that this is likely to be 7.7%. Bai Wu was surprised and thought that Master Wu was not related to them, but someone from their family most likely had something to do with it. But when he tried to question the system, it didn't give him a clear answer. The system boot has started. Bai Wu thought that he needed to find this person as soon as possible. And turning to Master Wu, he asked to be allowed to study with him. Master Wu said there was no need for formalities. His child is good, and he likes it. Well, Old Chi has one suggestion, and he agrees with it. Bai Wu asked, what's the offer? Sir, Chi said that they are the official representatives of the ancient society, and they invite him to join as a full member. Master Wu added that he has honor and ability. He is suitable for joining the ancient society. Bai Wu was happy and thought that he was really a member of the ancient society. He has to agree, today is just a wonderful day. Bai Wu thought that it was really possible to become a full member of the ancient society. 
That sounds good. Then Lao Wang said that you need to be calmer because this is just the beginning. The ancient society consists of 1,000 people. He's a member there too, but he's not bragging. Did he ever brag? Bai Wu said they are bigger than they are now. Mr. Chi said that, of course, they do not take into account the talents, abilities in Mr. Bai. They think he could become a core member of society. Master Wu said yes. He also thinks that Bai deserves more. So let them catch these forgers as soon as possible. Lao Wang and Bai Wu simultaneously asked what is the main member. Lao Wang asked if this was really a hoax. Will Bai Wu become a core member of the ancient society? Bai Wu asked what, and who are these core members? Lao Wang said they were big shots. 17 main members of the ancient society. Even the decisions of the president and vice president of the society will yield to the result of their vote. That is why they are called the basis. Being a core member of society means being a leader. Bai Wu asked him what, and how did he know all this? But Lao Wang had already run to Master Wu and said that Bai Wu was already a core member, and he was still a private. And I asked him what about raising his level as well. Master Wu told him to continue to develop his potential. Mr. Chi said that in order to become a core member of society, you need to have huge potential. Even greater skills, always improve and have knowledge in the field of politics. All questions about promotions are solved by Master Wu. Master Wu told Lao Wang to convince him of his abilities. Then he asked Mr. Chi, what, why is she protecting him? Wouldn't it be better for them to make a decision together? He should give his opinion. Lao Wang said that Bai Wu is his brother and he supports him always. They can't separate them, but the main participants are added as the old ones decrease. So instead of whom will they accept Bai Wu? Master Wu said that Lao Sun's place was from the western part of the city. A group of scammers bribed him, and he committed many different crimes. The evidence is indisputable and all the votes were for his deductions. Mr. Chi said that he was absent because he was responsible for solving his crimes. Master Wu said he was too soft if he were in his place. Sir, Chi told him they were following the law. Not all issues can be solved with fists. Bai Wu turned to two masters and asked them where this group of forgers came from in the first place. The two masters looked at each other, and Master Wu said, Well, now it's time for him to find out. Sir, Chi said they would discuss it over tea. The four of them moved to the tables and started pouring her tea. Master Wu offered everyone a drink, saying he was good at drinking. After that, they began to tell that the ancient society has existed for about 100 years and all the time of its existence, it struggled with fakes. Everyone who supported them was coming to an end. It was a good time, but, like all good times, it also came to an end. A new face has appeared in the trading arena. He started selling fakes again, and others followed him. Master Wu was so angry at them that he squeezed the chair. Lao Wang was scared and told him that it was the same chair from H.A.I. Hong and asked the master to be more careful. Bai Wu thought that this organization even had a sinister background. Master Chi said that their skills are growing every year. Now even they find it difficult to distinguish the fruit of their ignorance from the original. Bai Wu thought that yes, if it wasn't for him, Mr. Chi, he would be hugging a fake vase of nine dragons right now. Sir, Chi said that in addition, their influence began to penetrate into the core of ancient society. And an example of this is Lao Sun, but he thinks there are more of them. That Master Wu couldn't stand it and called them all, said that let them just get to him. As soon as he learns their names, let them not expect mercy. Lao Wang was sweating all over and asked the master to calm down. Bai Wu thought that it would be better to sell his soul to Master Wu himself than to cross his path. He needs to find out who from the Wu family betrayed them. He turned to the system for help and asked her that who from the Wu family is connected with a gang of forgers. But the system said that the question is not clear and there is no answer. Bai Wu thought that she had not been able to answer such questions before, but he needed to stop asking the system such questions, and ask her that there are members of the Wu family among the forgers. Is it a man? His age is from 20 to 30 years. The system has started downloading. Bai Wu thought, is it really broken? Or did she also decide to give him a test? Okay, he's just making things up for himself, he's just nervous. The system said that the content of the question is unclear, the answer is impossible. Bai Wu thought that it looked like he would have to find out for himself who was behind this, and he told the system that it could rest. Sir, Chi said that now that all sides have reached an impasse, they need to unite. Master Wu said that becoming a core member could put him in danger, so the final decision, of course, is up to him. Bai Wu thought that he and the Forger's gang were no longer on the best of terms, but even if that wasn't the case, he still wants to fight for what he thinks is right. Besides, it's a good opportunity and he still has the system. Unless, of course, she continues in the same spirit further. He slapped the table and stood up and thanked them all for their trust and said that he would make every effort for the benefit of a common goal. He would join them. 
Master Wu said it was a good attitude. They will support him, so he doesn't have to worry. Mr. Chi said there were still some formalities left, such as voting, but he shouldn't worry about it. They will be able to help him secretly, but most of the time he is on his own. Lao Wang said that it turns out there is still a vote. He thought they had already taken care of it. Bai Wu told them not to worry, he would be careful and solve this issue. And he himself thought that he would definitely get their votes. Meanwhile, Scar was on the phone again. He said that Lao Sun had been expelled from the circle. Old Chi would try to put one of his own in his place. The man replied to him that he already knew that this cowardly old man had convinced everyone to vote for his deductions. His business is suffering. He won't let their plans come to pass. The next step is sure to be successful. Scar said he hoped he wouldn't have to remember his old skills against theirs. Master Wu said that he was so happy and invited everyone to sit until morning, because it would be so much fun. They will invite their family, and they will also call those small ones, let them join. He's talking about his grandchildren. Lao Wang said that he often heard about the skill of the Wu family's personal kitchen. They were very lucky. It's like tasting a divine peach. And Bai Wu thought that this was a good opportunity to check out the rest of the Wu family members. Then Mr. Chi received a message from Chi Zio Zio. She texted him that she would be late. Master Wu said that it was not worth waiting for her, they should continue. And then he turned to Bai Wu and said that they would wait, because they had nowhere to hurry, and invited him to play guess or pinch. Lao Wang told him that you are a great opportunity to show off his abilities. Bai Wu thought that he would like to play, but he doesn't even know if the system can help him. But he said that then he would start. He will try to guess what time Zio Zio will come. And I thought I should try. And I asked the system that it would come by 18. The system said that the probability of arrival by 18 is 0%. Bai Wu was surprised, said it was clear, but they were trying further. And I asked the system that it would be by 7. But the system said that the probability of arrival by 19 is 0%. Then Bai Wu asked her what could happen by 10. She can't come any later, can she? But the system said that the probability of arriving by 10 is 0%. Then Bai Wu had already tensed up and thought that really she wouldn't come. Is something really going to happen? Is it life-threatening? The system said that the probability of danger to life is 76.4%. Bai Yu was already scared and thought it was related to death. Then he told his masters that he had just calculated and realized that Zio Zio could be in mortal danger. Master Wu got up first and started shouting, what made him think that? She's just walking around. They're all going now. Mr. Nachi said that quietly he would call her now, but the girl was unavailable. Mr. Chi said that most likely she is busy, maybe she is on a mission, there she usually turns off the phone. But the deadly danger, Bai Wu asked the system to indicate on the map where Zio Zio is now. The system has started downloading. Bai Wu asked her if she was joking. After all, a person's life is at stake. Master Wu asked Mr. Chi, what, why is he so calm? They should ask someone and go after her. Master Wu got up and tried to call himself. He was told that Zio Zio was hunting a petty thief. Nothing special with her skills. Then Mr. Che got up and told them to sit down. Then he himself will find out what's the matter. Then Bai Wu got up and asked them to let them find her on their own. He would find her. Sir, she told him that then let him be careful. Master Wu said that well, he should start looking from the apartment. It's not far from here. Let the Hong Tai go with him. Then Juntoi and Bai Wu came up, said they had gone. Huang Tai said that he would drive the car and let him tell what to do. Bai Wu said it was fine, and he himself thought that he was her older brother, so why wasn't he worried at all? He must be very experienced. He thinks that with him he will have a safety net, and asked the system if the road is safe. The system said that the road safety is 100%. Bai Wu thought that they were having such a good time, but you need to stop thinking about it, because now is not the time. Zio Zio was on a mission right now. Her man contacted her. She said she was there and asked what about them. She was told that they had blocked the windows he could not escape. She asked what was good and how they were doing. She was told that no one was safe. Zio Zio said she reminds again the killers are armed, they have to be careful. After that, they started climbing the stairs and she said that they had started. The man was sitting in his apartment and talking on the phone. He told his brother not to worry because everything is fine and they just have to wait for the buyer's call. His brother told him that he should keep his eyes open and not screw up. Then they knocked on his door and asked if anyone was at home. They introduced themselves as a gas check. The man looked through the peephole and already had a gun ready. He started opening the doors and said that he was already on his way. Let them stop knocking, he had just woken up. Meanwhile, Bai Wu was racing in a car with Wu Hongtai. He asked the system, what is the percentage of danger to Zio Zio's life now? The system said the danger to life is 81.4%.
Zio Zio entered his apartment and asked for forgiveness for disturbing him. She said she needed to check the gas pipeline. The man said she seemed very capable. Then Zio Zio immediately pounced on him. Bai Wu told Hong Tai that after 700 meters he should turn left and then right and straight ahead. The system said that the probability of using a weapon is 100%. The probability of Chi Zio Zio's death is 89.5%. The probability of arriving at the destination soon is 71%. The probability of information about the enemy's weapons is 55%. The system keeps on loading. Then Bai Wu shouted that it was necessary to stop by the residential complex. At that moment, Chi Zio Zio and his partner had already prepared the handcuffs. That man pulled out a gun. Chi Zio Zio noticed this and rushed to defend her partner. At that moment, the criminal jumped out of the window. Chi Zio Zio ran after him, shouting that he would not escape. Then the man started shooting at her with a pistol. But then Bai Wu and her brother came to the rescue. The man ordered them to get off. Then the Juntai opened the car door and hit this criminal with it. Then he laid him down and tied him up. The police arrived, and they took him away. Bai Wu exhaled. Ch Zio Zio also thought that everything was finally over. She turned to her brother and asked, What is he doing here? And I saw Bai Wu behind him. Bai Wu was scared and thought he was alive. He fired from a real loaded pistol but did not survive. Hong Tai told his sister that he had come to check on her progress. Thanks to Mr. Bai, they managed to arrive on time, and they managed to avoid disastrous consequences. Then Chi Zio Zio grabbed Bai Wu's hand and asked him if he even knew how dangerous it was. These battles are not something that ordinary citizens should be engaged in. Then she was informed that they had problems upstairs they could not approach. The girl said it was good. She thanked them all for their help. Bai Wu wiped the sweat off his smiling face and said that he wouldn't have come if he was indifferent to her life. He thought that he hadn't even planned to get a thank you. He hopes that nothing else will happen. That Juntai told him that it was time for them to return, and asked him that everything is definitely fine with him. Bai Wu tensed up again and thought, is this how the problem is solved? And asked the system what is the probability of a threat to Zio Zio. The system said that the probability of no danger is 0%. The probability of Chi Zio Zio's death is almost 91%. Bai Wu wondered how such a thing was even possible. They ran up the stairs, and the percentage of her death continued to grow. They never stopped growing. Bai Wu thought that the bandit had already been arrested. There are several other people upstairs besides her. Does this mean that there is someone else? He burst upstairs and shouted her name. He entered the apartment, but did not see anything suspicious. Chi Zio Zio and two other policemen were standing in the apartment. Ch Zio Zio asked him why he was so surprised. He has to get out of here. Bai Wu rolled his eyes and thought that he was scared, because he thought that something really had already happened. But what could threaten her? Antique dealer, who was this criminal? One of the policemen said, Chi Zio Zio, that the evidence points to the presence of accomplices in the criminal. Ch Zio Zio said that they probably left for a while. He had a gun, it was pretty dangerous. She ordered the doors to be closed, to inform the others so that they would closely monitor the staff here, which arouses their suspicions. They should check everything as carefully as possible. The percentage of threat to the life of Chi Zio Zio continued, is 91.7%. Bai Wo thought that there was very little time to do, what was threatening her. At that moment, Chi Zio Zio was contacted by her man and told that the facility was receiving complaints from curious residents. He asks if they haven't finished. Bai Wu thought that the curious residents, the object, the hostage, how dangerous is it to rescue hostages? The system said that the average percentage of failure in the time of hostage rescue is 97.3%. Then Bai Wu couldn't stand it and told Chi Zio Zio that he had to tell her something very important. And the percentage of her mortality was increasing. Chi Zio Zio was very busy right now and told him that it would be better next time it's not safe here right now. And I told them that they already have to go back. And turning to her colleagues, she said that they should already go ahead. Bai Wu didn't back down and said no. The thing is, but Chi Zio Zio didn't let him finish and told him that he had to go. Does he stop her from working? Then Bai Wu couldn't stand it and shouted that enough was enough, he couldn't leave her here, and thought he might just ignore her possibility of dying. And he asked her that maybe he was meddling in his own business, but she didn't think she was relaxing too much. Now she's looking for someone. The search area is too big, she doesn't have enough people, and she doesn't know where to start. The more she is to me, the more likely it is to lose control of the situation. Chi Zio Zio thought about it, but told him to continue. Bai Wu told her that he knew where to start following. 
Should she trust him? She should listen to him and then make a decision. And thought he hoped she wouldn't send him. She looks very sullen. Maybe she didn't believe him. But Chi Zio Zio said that she listens to him well. Bai Wu was shocked. Chi Zio Zio blushed and cleared her throat, saying that he should say what he wanted. If he wants to help her so much, he'd better take the matter very seriously. Besides, today is an emergency. Bai Wu thought that it seemed possible to deal with her. You don't often meet such people. She got straight to the point. He told her that criminals can't stay holed up anywhere. Besides, one of them had just been caught. He thinks, but then he noticed cigarettes on the floor and picked them up, said that besides, he would have to go out before buying cigarettes. He showed her the map and said there should be a small supermarket to the south of here. Chi Zio Zio didn't wait any longer. She grabbed his hand and said that it was good they were going there. She informed her people that she was heading to a small supermarket in the south. For search and possible arrest, the system would say oh, that the probability of civilians being involved is 80.4%. The probability of going to buy cigarettes is 100%. The readiness to escape is 95.7%. He looked in the phone and said, Chi Zio Zio, that there is a small street to the south, from there they can get out. But there are too many people there. At that moment, the probability of a threat to civilians began to decrease and amounted to 44.25%. He said he must have realized they were looking for him. Then Chi Zio Zio was informed that the target had been found. They are coming from the east and it seems that he is ready to escape. Chi Zio Zio started climbing into the car and told him not to worry there are a lot of people around. Let him run away. He must not lag behind and protect civilians. He has to get in the car. They drove the car at full speed. Chi Zio Zio said that if he went to the supermarket to the south, then they should move out from the east. They should pass the fork. And there is just a commercial area. Bai Wu said there are two multi-story villages to the north. CH Zio Zio said that they would check everyone for documents. The traffic management service will cooperate all drivers will be checked for alcohol consumption. The criminal escaped armed, most likely, requested reinforcements. She was told that everything was accepted. Two passers-by at the fork. Chi Zio Zio reported that she is obliged to evacuate the residence. Liu is still following the suspects. She was told that he had left the high-rise building and was heading towards the unfinished buildings. CH Zio Zio told them that they had to warn Liu that the enemy was armed and he had to take people away from there. They should order the exit to be blocked. She is obliged to send someone to outflank the enemy. Meanwhile, they had already arrived at this place and Chi Zio Zio immediately rushed to look for the culprit. Meanwhile, Bai Wu was very unwell after this trip. Jin Tommy stood and supported him. Bai Wu told him that he was fine. He should hurry up and catch up with Chi Zio Zio. Should he protect her? After Hong Tai ran to Zio Zio's aid, Bai Wu thought he thought the worst was over. Then the system informed him that the probability of a threat to Chi Zio Zio is 0%. Bai exhaled and lit up again, thinking that it was all thanks to Master Wu. But then something got into his head. It was a little kid who was messing around on a construction site. He stuck out his tongue at Bai Wu, just what jumped over the fence. Bai Wu shouted to this boy, asked him that how can you run so fast with a bear. Then he sensed danger and shouted to the boy to stop. Here, the probability of danger for Zio Zio increased again. Now it was almost 100%. The probability of a child being taken hostage is 90%. Bai Wu thought, is it really impossible to do without hostages for once? And rushed to the rescue, thinking that why can't he do anything? Then the boy was almost exhausted, but he told Bai Wu that he would never catch up with him, calling him garbage. But then he noticed one of the bandits. Then Chi Zio Zio also ran up to this place. She saw a bandit rushing at this child in order to take him hostage. But then Bai Wu rushes in and saves this child. And then a shot rang out. Here the system issued a system error. Bai Wu woke up in the car. Chi Zio Zio came up to him and told him to wake up, calling him a brave citizen. Bai Wu asked if the baby was okay. Has the criminal been caught yet? Chi Zio Zio told him not to worry, because everything is fine. The accomplice has already been arrested and will soon be brought to justice. Well, it looks like he hit his head hard when he fell, and I asked him what could take him to the hospital. She was embarrassed and said that when she saw him fall on the floor, she thought he might have had a concussion. Bai Wu thought he remembered hitting himself, but it didn't seem to hurt anymore. Despite the system glitch, Chi Zio Zio's problem seems to have already been solved. Then Chi Zio Zio asked him, what, why is he silent? Is it really a concussion after all? They're going to the hospital right now. She'll drive. Bai Wu said he was fine. There was no need to go to the hospital. The system started loading data with an error. The system cannot make the calculation. He accidentally grabbed Chi Zio Zio by the arm. 
They were both embarrassed and Bai Wu, throwing away his hand, said that honestly, there was no need to worry so much. And he himself thought that the case was already over, which means he can go. Chi Zio Zio was confused and said that who cares about him at all? She is simply responsible for the affected citizens. Anyway, what could have happened to him? Bai Wu thought that maybe she felt responsible because he was trying to help her. Chi Zio Zio cleared her throat and said that again. This time he really saved the situation. And I thought that he risked his life for the sake of the child. He's not so bad. And I told him that, in short, thank him very much for helping them. She didn't treat her very well before and apologized for it. Bai Wu was surprised, but said that come on, they should leave it in the past. He was lucky to meet a man who did so much good. He is not offended. Chi Zio Zio said that Brother Tai said that they were worried about her, that's why they came. If they hadn't come to Oral, things could have ended much worse. As expected from Master Bai. Bai Wu said no, they were the ones who caught him. Chi Zio Zio told him that he had helped very well in capturing the suspect. Bai Wu said that they acted together, that's why they did everything. Chi Zio Zio said that she had formed a wrong opinion about him earlier, that's why it turned out that way. She even feels a little hurt. Bai Wu said that he did not agree with this, if she had not made a mistake then, he would not have been able to be where he is now. Then Chi Zio Zio got angry and hit the car with her fist and said that it turns out that he knew everything, and he knew that that thing belonged to her family and deliberately sold it to her grandfather at a high price. Bai Wu got scared and got into the car, told her to stop, he could explain everything. But then Chi Zio Zio, exhaling, leaned against the car and said that why explain something now, because it's already in the past. He helped her family, and these things still returned to her grandfather. Bai Wu asked that she was always worried about her grandfather. Was she really afraid that he would be deceived? Wasn't she? Given her sense of fairness and professionalism, it's understandable why she's bothered by a mysterious stranger like him. She is very reliable and an outstanding specialist in her field. Chi Zio Zio asked him what was he doing. Bai Wu thought she was so arrogant. Then Chi Zio Zio asked what could examine him. She opened the car and sat down next to him and said that in order to avoid trouble, he should behave with restraint. She doesn't understand him at all. He doesn't have the strength or the ability to protect himself. He needs to be careful. She's absolutely serious. It's for his own good. Okay, I'm also her grandfather, and if the bad guys get interested, he'll have problems with them. They are not so easy to stop. Bai Wu grabbed her hand, which she had recently given birth to, and thought, where did she get such strength from? And said he knew that. And he thought that he knows that the fewer people know about him, the better, especially the enemies. But then he remembered something and asked that these two criminals were chasing antiques, wasn't it? Chi Zio Zio asked that why was he asking this? Isn't he their prophet who sees the secrets of heaven? Bai Wu asked that secrets can't always be seen, right? Chi Zio Zio said that one of them has quite a lot of criminal records, she had documents somewhere, but she herself is not very knowledgeable. But the same thing that she knows, she can't just tell him. Bai Wu thought that she wouldn't do anything that would violate the privacy rules. But even so, he doesn't think she knows all the details. A group of scammers have yet to deal with Master Chi and the antique circle. Then he remembered something and told the girl that her grandfather and the others were still waiting for news from them. But he appeared to Wu Hongtai and told them not to worry, because he had already notified them. They're waiting for the two of them to come back. Bai Wu thought her brother was there, and asked what about what time is it now? Will they have time to return to them? Maybe he. But then Chi Zio Zio stopped him and said no. He's a hero today. Therefore, let him not even think of sneaking away. She got behind the wheel and told her brother to get in the car. After they all got into the car, the girl hit the gas and said that she would definitely make it. Meanwhile, at a family banquet, the man with glasses asked the girl how much longer to wait. When will the sister come already? The girl said her sister told her she was stuck in traffic. She's probably still late, but he shouldn't be so worried. The blonde guy said that yes, let him not worry so much, because she is always unlucky. Maybe she was cursed in a previous life. Brother Chang told him not to waste words. Then the girl jumped up and said that Grandpa had come. And with him came Bai Wu and Chi Zio Zio. Master Wu said that he was their distinguished guest today. Everyone is familiar with Chi Lao and Chi Zio Zio, right? He also solemnly introduces Bai Wu or Mr. Bai to them. He's a good friend of his, he met him recently. He is a wonderful young man, and he really hopes that they will get along. Now let's have them all sit down, and told Bai Wu to sit down here. Brother Chang told his other brother that he was able to impress even their old man. He probably has something to tell. Well, the blonde guy was clearly not thrilled and told him to just look at him. 
he doesn't know how he was able to deceive Grandpa. Let him catch him red-handed, he will show him where the crayfish hibernate. The girl said that Bai Wu is a good person, she already knows him. Her other brother asked her how she knew him, not that it's her ex. The girl told him to sit and envy in silence. With his face, it must be very hard to find a girl. Then hearing all this, Chi Zio Zio was furious and asked that who was mocking her little sister here. She can't wait to teach them a lesson. The girl rushed to hug her and said how much she missed her. The blonde guy said that Zio Zio she came. Chi Zio Zio told him that she had asked him to call her sister Chi, and he called her Zio Zio again. Then the guy who was sitting next to that girl told her to sit down with them. They didn't defend anyone here, they just sat and fooled around. Brother Chang said that yes, they wanted to find out what kind of fates they had such guests, would she tell them. The blonde guy said that yes, they don't look like the children of noble families. Did their old folks just pick them up somewhere? The other guy laughed and said it was true. It's an eerily strange situation. And he asked that how could this ignoble one take such a place? Chi Zio Zio did not get involved in their conversation but thought that they were from noble families. However, without their surnames, they would not be worth anything. They're just idiots. After she couldn't stand it and put a glass of wine on the table, she told everyone that Bai Wu was their guest. And Grandpa recognized his ability, they should behave decently, not create problems. And going up to her sister, she said that they needed to go, because they hadn't chatted together for a long time. The sister said yes, she had so much to tell her. She stuck her tongue out at her brothers and said they had just been fucked. After that, two girls left. Master Wu told Bai Wu to drink more. He shouldn't be shy. Then these three brothers came up and the fair-haired one said that why don't they make a toast in honor of Mr. Bai. Master Wu supported them and said yes. They should respect him, and he really hopes that they will learn a lot from him in the future. And I asked Mr. Chi that he respects him. They hadn't had a drink together for a while. The blonde guy apologized to Bai Wu, and he said that they would like to ask him for some advice. He is their esteemed guest. He must have extensive knowledge of ancient art. Brother Chang said that yes, he and his brothers would like to learn a lot from him. The third brother also supported them and said that it was true. Wai Wu thought that he no longer liked these trolls. It was obvious that they wanted to make him look like an idiot. And I asked them that maybe they would recognize each other first. But Brother Chang ignored him and went to Master Wu to say that they had recently acquired some good works of art. But he doubted their authenticity. Could Mr. Bai help them? And we will just learn from him. Well how? Lao Wang heard this and asked, what is the authenticity? Let him take a look. Bai Wu thought that thanks, of course, to him, but now you can't disgrace yourself. And he said that he was grateful for the opportunity given to him. And I told Lao Wang to sit here and finish his meal, and he'll be right back. Sir, Chi thought about Master Wu, said that let him teach them well. It is useful for them to learn something good. After that, Bai Wu left with three brothers. The blonde-haired man thought that what a liar he was, now they would bring him to the surface. They went into another room, where there were antiques on the table. Mr. Chang said that he doesn't know much about antiques, and he really hopes that it won't be difficult for him to tell them about their origin. The blonde brother said that yes, it should be easy for him. Bai Wu thought that since they decided to squeeze him, they shouldn't blame him if they fall into their trap themselves. Master Wu noticed this too, thought that these youngsters decided to reign in Bai Wu, but he thinks that he will take care of himself. But as soon as Bai Wu decided to ask the system, it gave him that it was not subject to download. Bai Wu was stunned, asked what the hell, has the system finally broken down? Then one of the brothers asked him, what, why is he silent? Master Wu also thought about it and thought, is Bai Wu silent? He's always just been given antiques. Maybe something happened. The blonde guy asked that does it really require such a long examination? Maybe he just drank too much today. Someone intervened Lao Wang and asked this guy what he had just said. His bro is the best at antiques, he's never wrong. The blonde guy asked, then why is he silent? Had the gods abandoned him? And having already turned directly to the Bai University, I asked him what and how much to buy these things. Doesn't he know? How dare he lie to his family? Lao Wang shouted at him to keep his mouth shut. He had to go through a lot today, he was just very tired. And I asked the guy that he was from the Wu family, wasn't he? He has to keep his voice down if he doesn't want Master Wu to. Meanwhile, Master Wu was still sitting and reasoning. He thought, what happened? Is it possible that his abilities have decreased due to today's circumstances? But he is definitely not a fraudster. He has some outstanding abilities. Are these kids completely brazen? He thinks that he will have to teach him a lesson. Let them know how to slander others. Bai Wu has not recovered yet. Yes, how dare they? Meanwhile, Bai Wu was very scared and then the same thing happened to the system. Have you ever happened? What should he do now? Also, these guys clung like a leech. How would he get away? 
Then the blonde guy started screaming at him already and asked him what happened. Is he still not aware? Then he himself is his. But then Master Wu intervened and, calling them all, asked that how dare they talk to the guests like that. They are idiots. And approaching Bai Wu, he said that these beasts lacked discipline, and he should not blame them. Bai Wu thought that he didn't even have anything to blame them for. His system has really failed. He will not be able to determine the authenticity now. Master Wu was smiling at him, but in fact he was very worried about him and thought that he really made such a face. Is he still sick? Or was he just angry at these kids? After that, he turned to these children and began to drill them with an evil look. Master Wu called them idiots again and said it was like they had been raised by dogs. They should apologize to Bai Wu faster. The blonde guy was very angry, said he was just a liar. Then Master Wu couldn't stand it, he already wanted to hit this guy. But Bai Wu said that it was not worth interfering in it for his own good. It's just a normal argument. And he said that these ink stones were fakes. They were only a few years old. They were forged under the inkwells of the Republic of China. They are very well made and collectors could appreciate them. And as for them, this is a porcelain jug from the Yongle era. It has a rich color and very fine work and technique. The production is just beautiful. It's a pity that it was made only this year. The Yongle era is the period from 1403 to 1424. The guys started googling it all on their phone and said he was really right. Bai Wu said that all people have different views on things, and he himself thought that. Fortunately, Mr. Wu helped him because it took time to reboot the system. This time, the system really almost failed him. But this time everything went pretty smoothly, but without the system, he would not have been able to do anything. This time he fought back, but this is far from the end. Master Wu said that he was worthy of being called a master, even he would not be able to determine the authenticity of some of the things here. Master Bai has such sharp eyes. Bai Wu thought that besides, and looked at the system that said it was 100% fake and it was 100% related to fraudulent groups. He thought that among the antiques there are those that are related to fraudulent groups. Last time, the system said that there is someone in the Wu family who has a connection with scammers, but who could it be? Brother Chang came forward and said that he was worthy of being called a master, and he asked his forgiveness for his rudeness. Another brother hugged him and said he was really amazing. He hopes that they will see each other often, and he will help him earn a fortune. Brother Chang also added that he respects his abilities. Only the blonde guy said that he was doing well. Brother Chang suggested they go out together for a drink. Bai Wu said no, he didn't want to bother anyone, and he himself thought that the system had failed. This family is not easy to deal with. Besides, there is a traitor among them. He needs to leave as soon as possible, because the traitor may be here. Master Wu was worried and thought, did they really make him angry? He hugged Bai Wu and said that there was no need to be so reserved, and offered them a drink together. He should have forgotten about these little scoundrels by now. Lao Wang also supported this for those and asked that why should they be in such a hurry? It's better to sit a little longer. Bai Wu thought about it and remembered the words of Qi Zio Zio, who told him in the car that in order to avoid trouble, he should behave with restraint. She also said that she does not understand him at all, because he has neither the strength nor the ability to protect himself. He must be careful. Therefore, he thought that this situation is very alarming to him. While the system has problems, he cannot be sure of his safety and if something goes wrong, he will be under the gun. And he told everyone that it was too late and offered them next time. Bai Wu was about to leave, but his master Wu stopped him and told him to wait a second. And he said that he had heard that he and Sio Sio had known each other for a long time. Maybe it's fate. Then Lao Wang's eyes lit up, and he said that Master Wu was right, it could be fate. Master Wu also added that he had heard that Master Bai was not married yet, and asked him what about becoming part of the Wu family. Everyone was in shock. Sir, she asked him what he just said. Another guest supported him and asked if it was too early and sudden. Mr. Chi told the master that if he became a member of someone's family, it would only be the Chi family. He has known his granddaughter for a long time. He blesses them. Master Wu told him that his blessing didn't solve anything. He and their Zio Zio have mutual feelings. Mr. Chi began to get angry and said that his Zio Zio and Bai Wu also love each other. Will they be happy together? Then Chi Zio Zio couldn't stand it and burst into the room. She told her grandfather, what kind of nonsense is this? Wu Zio Zio told her grandfather that she was still too young and didn't want to think about marriage. Ch Zio Zio was very upset and told her grandfather that he had never asked her and was already marrying her off. Did he really care about her opinion? Then she ran away in tears. Bai Wu clutched his head and thought, what is going on here? How he got involved in all this? And why did they talk about marriage? Only one blonde guy was furious and looked at Mr. Chi with hatred. 
Then Brother Chang came up to him and whispered to him to listen to him, because the old man is still here. Ai Wu noticed this and thought that these two were clearly hostile to him. Maybe they are traitors. Then the master thief laughed and told Bai Wu to go along with them. Mr. Chi joined him and told him to leave them and go have a drink with them. Bai Wu said that was exactly what he wanted. At first he wanted to leave because of his well-being, but now that he is better, he would like to have a drink with the elders. And he himself thought that they both wanted him to stay, they must care about him. Whatever it was, he had to find this traitor. After that, they sat down at the table and Bai Wu again. I kept looking at those three brothers and thought that I needed to check everyone present here. Gu Lai behaves strangely and treats him terribly. Could it be him? But the system gave an error again. Bai Wu tensed up again and thought that he couldn't believe it, that the system wouldn't help him. After all, he can't rely only on his own strength in his search. Brother Chang told the blonde-haired man that was he crazy to talk such nonsense in front of his uncle. Does he really want to die? If he wants to die, then let him die alone, and not involve others in it. Then Bai Wu came up to them, and I thought that this brother Chang is quite perceptive, and he's pretty brave. He sat down next to them and said that it seemed he had not been able to have a drink with them. And looking at the blonde guy, I thought that he would start with him. Brother Chang told Bai Wu that he was so polite, and he has amazing abilities and handed him a glass. The university said that they were strangers, after all, his concern was justified. But, as they say, after a strong fight, the strongest friendship is born. And looking at the blonde guy, I asked him for forgiveness and asked if he had offended him in some way. And he himself thought that this guy does not know how to hide his thoughts. He is too stupid for a traitor. Does he want to burn a hole in it? But then this guy grabbed his hand and said that he was very interested in how he met Zio Zio. Bai Wu asked, what is Zio Zio? Wu Zio Zio said that she was also very interested. This guy was very determined. Therefore, Bai Wu decided to tease him late and said that it was fate. One day she wanted to sell one thing, and he bought it. Then they had to deal with one bandit, and they. But at that moment, this guy squeezed his hand even harder. Bai Wu wondered if he really loved her that much. So he said they were just acquaintances, they weren't even friends. Then the guy loosened his grip and asked what was true. Bai Wu said that she is a little hot-tempered, but he probably knows it that way. And also she is arrogant, it's not so easy to communicate with her. To be honest, he's a little afraid of her. That is, for a woman, she is strong. And he himself thought that he was hostile to him and because of Chi Zio Zio. And because of Master Chi's words, everything only escalated. Then one of these brothers laughed out loud and said that he understood. Men like gentle and lovely women. Brother Chang told him that she had beaten him up for molesting her. You got there, came back and told your brother to let him tell everyone about it. People like him don't need La Romane Conti 94 years old. Bai Wu thought, what are they talking about? Brother Chang said he heard he bought a yacht last week, didn't he? Is his sports car still out of the country? His brother said that what was the use of it and everywhere they put speed limits. If you increase the speed at least for a while, you will immediately get a fine. Of course, it was possible to drive two laps on the racetrack. Then he decided to ask Bai Wu that he is fond of racing. Maybe they go there together. The man who stood next to them and told him that all he does is drink and have fun all day long. Does he really want to seduce Master Bai as well? He thinks he should block his card and let him think in the company for a few days. Bai Wu thought that these guys were just having fun. Especially this one doesn't look like a bandit at all and their money depends entirely on their elders. Maybe he should look among older people. So he decided to move to another table. There were three men sitting there. They were all smoking and drinking. The bald man said he was meeting Mr. Wang next week. They want to play golf. The man who was sitting next to him in a suit and tie asked him what? Why don't they talk about their acquisitions? The man who was sitting next to them asked them what? Do they really do charity work? And the man in the suit asked them that they voted for an angel. He seems to be having bad luck this year. Then a woman came up to Bai Wu and said that she had heard that he could guess. Spring necklaces of the new collection look too ordinary. After that, he was surrounded by girls. The girl with the fan said yes, but the young like it with him, she looks fresher. The girl who was standing next to her asked what they had heard, what had happened near Jan's summer house. The girl with the rim asked, what, is there some kind of problem? She heard that it almost came to a fight. Then Bai Wu's head was already boiling. He sat down on a chair and thought that these rich people talk only about earning and spending money, not a single useful information. How much time is wasted? There is no one like a traitor among them. Then Master Wu came up to him and asked if he was really ill. Then Bai Waz asked him that why did he call him Master. He is more comfortable when he calls him by name. And he himself thought that the system is not working now and since the traitor is part of the Wu family, it is not easy to find him. 
maybe the master of the university, could find a way. And he said he was interested. He was thinking about what he said in the afternoon. Hiding groups of scammers, and they. He approached Wu Hongtai and told his grandfather that Miss and Uncle had come. Bai Wu thought, is there really someone else? A girl in a red dress came in and a man followed her. The girl asked for forgiveness, and she said they were stuck in traffic. Bai Wu thought that this guy didn't look like a decent citizen. The system showed that this is 88%. Bai Wu was surprised and thought, what is going on with the system? The system showed him that Uncle Wu is a bad person by 88%. Bai Wu thought, is their uncle a traitor? Then Wu Zio Zio came up to the girl and said that they had been so long. The blonde guy came up and said that his sister decided to come right to the final. Another brother said that his sister had a lot of good workers. Brother Chang said that they had not seen each other for several days, she began to look better. Only this suspicious guy was standing on the sidelines. Bai Wu thought they were ignoring him, but the system gave an error again. So I thought the system was still buggy, he would have to deal with their uncle himself. So I decided to ask the master, in what, who are these two? Master Wu said that this is his granddaughter and her name is Wu Ruyu, and his grandson Su Jai. Wu Ruyu came up to grandpa and said that she was very sorry that she was late, and I asked him not to be angry. Then by him approached one of the brothers and, pointing to Su Jai, asked that this was his sister's husband. Why is he in such a gloomy mood? Why don't they ask him about it? But that blonde guy said he was just trash. If he hadn't become part of their family, he wouldn't even be able to feed himself. Bai Wu asked if he was really a son-in-law. Then another brother came up to him and told him not to worry about him. This kid is not so simple. He does not know how he convinced his sister. He has a good education. But alas, he is useless. Bai Wu thought that how could an accomplice of a dangerous group be useless? But 88% of him is a bad person. It's not that simple. Who knows if he's a petty thief or a much bigger one. Maybe he's Da Oolong. This man looked at him very menacingly and adjusted his wedding ring. Brother patted Bai Wu on the shoulder and said that, unlike him, Master Bai is young and promising. If the old man really wants to marry Zio Zio to him, then he should know. A lot of people were chasing her. Bai Wu even choked on it and said that he thought there was a mistake. He doesn't think Master Wu meant it. And he himself thought that it looked like Uncle Vova was not taken seriously here but he needs a way to be sure of his assumptions. Then Wu Ryu came up to him and grabbed his shoulder. She told him that he, the esteemed guest that Grandpa brought and his name is Bai Wu, isn't that right? She thought that Grandpa would bring some old man to them, and it turned out to be such a young man. Bai Wu thought that she seemed to be more difficult to handle than Wu Zio Zio. After all, Zio Zio is stupid and cute, but wait a minute. He told the girl that she was much more gorgeous than him. And I thought that if Uncle Wu has problems, then his wife should be aware of them. Then this Uncle Vova could not stand it, went up to his wife and grabbed her by the hand. But Wu Ryu pulled her hand away, and she also continued to ignore her husband and asked Bai Wu what he was doing. Bai Wu said that, to be honest, he doesn't have a job as such yet. He's currently borrowing with an antique dealer, and he asked what about her. She seems to be very successful, and he himself thought that Uncle Wu had such an evil face. Maybe he just misunderstood the situation. They don't seem to be on the best of terms. Then Master Wu got into the conversation, and he said she was no match for him. Mr. Bai has a real talent. Her life is a complete fairy tale. This Uncle Wu said, what an absurdity, the Wu family is seizing some crook. Bai Wu glanced at Uncle Wu again and thought that if the couple didn't get along, then perhaps Mrs. Wu didn't know about her husband's affairs. But does he need to confirm it somehow? And asked him that Mr. Su is also a member of the ancient society. Mr. Su said he wouldn't dare, so to speak, he just knows some of their business and he likes old things. Wai Wu told him that he looked quite businesslike. Ms. Wu said that he deals with finances. He must be the head of some big company, too. Mr. Su said no, he was just an office worker. Bai Wu said that he thought that the husband of a woman like Mrs. Wu certainly knew about antiques. Well, or is part of the elite. Mr. Su said that no, he is a simple office employee. He cannot compare with him because he has already become revered at such a young age. Bai Wu said yes, Master Wu and Master Qi are always telling him that. But he is still part of the Wu family with the support of this family. Even being a street vendor, he would still be expected to succeed. His income must not even be enough to satisfy Mrs. Wu. But then he apologized and said that he had forgotten that it was being conducted. She was the breadwinner of the family. Then he noticed that Mr. Su was frantically adjusting his ring. He said that, of course, he was trying to give his wife what she wanted, the surname of his capabilities from the bottom of his heart. Bai Wu thought that, and he was holding up well. But why does the system not work and said that yes, this is the most important thing. Happiness is not in money. 
and offered him a drink, and I thought he was just a great actor. No wonder even Master Wu and Master Qi were deceived. As soon as the problem with the system is solved, he will immediately tear off this mask from him. But he can't just sit and wait for the system. Then Lao Wang asked him what was wrong with him. What was he thinking about? Did you really drink too much? Bai Wu told him that and how does so much food fit into him? But then I remembered something and asked the fat man that he kind of told him that he was very good at gathering information, wasn't he? He took him by the head and turned it so that he was looking at Mr. Su and asked him to help with one guy. It was already late at night. Everyone decided to go outside. Everyone came out to see Bai Wu off. Master Wu was driving him and said that it was already so late because you couldn't get behind the wheel now and asked him if he could stay the night. But Bai was told him that he was too hospitable. He couldn't bother him like that, and he had already called a taxi. And he himself thought that he should be careful with the uncle of this family. But how would he test it again? The system kept giving him an error. But now the most important thing is to fix a system error. He had already arrived at his home and decided to take a shower. After he went out and drank some water, he thought what a hassle. No matter how much you ask, the system is still silent. This is also his fault, but I would like to gain a fortune by relying only on the system. He didn't know what it was, and he doesn't even know it now, but the system was still unavailable. Bai was clutched his head and asked, what should he do? Maybe he should turn it off somehow, and then turn it on again. He broke away and asked if they couldn't attach at least some instructions to it. Is the system still not working? But then in one of the ads it was written that there was not enough energy. Bai Wu immediately jumped up and asked that there wasn't enough energy. The system told him that a vital part of the user's AM requires a lot of energy for stable operation. Bai Wu didn't really understand and asked, what is the vital part? The system showed a picture of the brain and circled one of its parts. Then Bai Wu remembered that it was this part of his head that he had hit and he asked if the injury was really that serious. It turns out that the system can not only determine the probability, but also heal wounds. It turns out that there is not enough energy, because he is now recovering. It's strange, because before that everything was fine. But still, it's not his one injury. The system said that there was a system update, and it apologizes for the inconvenience. Bai Wu said he understood, and he asked what that is. Now no one will be able to answer his questions, right? Now he is defenseless. The system said yes it can't. Bai Wu was scared and thought that now his dreams would come to an end. There are so many problems now, especially with a group of scammers. There should be something good in everything, but all its connections and capabilities depend on the system. How quickly will its end come without a system? Will he return to his old life? But no, he urgently needs to find a solution to this problem. He exhaled and asked the system what he needed to do in order to restore this energy. But the energy is kind of from electricity, isn't it? Or where else does the system get energy from? The system has started loading. Instructions for replenishing energy. Baiwo thought that the system works on metaphysical calculations, but in general it's something like a search engine. He received it quite suddenly and did not think about its origin. Then the system flashed instructions for replenishing energy to him. In one, it was an automatic repair system. It was written here that it was impossible to calculate the repair time. The hang-up from the battle will end after the repair is completed. Under the next item it was written that external energy collection. It was said there that it was going thanks to the contacts and fees of the owner. According to paragraph 3, it was written that the extraction of the host's energy. It's fast and takes only 3 seconds. Bai Wu asked what takes 3 seconds. Can they really extract his energy? That is, to withdraw something from it, isn't it? Well, what kind of energy can be pulled out of a person? What kind of energy does the system feed on? She could take his life, it's too risky. Well, there were many more ads that said that pumping out energy would not endanger the life of the owner. Bai Wu asked what and how would it affect him. The system said it couldn't give an accurate estimate. Probably, the probability of success will be changed. Bai Wu asked what is the probability of his success. That is, his luck. He can't exchange his luck. But then what about option B? He could have collected energy for the system. He would be able to travel through mountains and rivers, as in the Qingxiang novel and then defeat ancient mythical beasts, or something like that. But his body is not capable of that. Although these restrictions confuse him, this is the best option. After all, just sitting and waiting is not an option. And I asked the system that if he chooses option 1, can he change his choice to 2 or 3 in the future? The system said that you can change your choice at any time. Bai Wu lit a cigarette and thought that then he would have to take a chance. And he told the system that he chooses option 1. But if the external energy for option 2 seems to be nearby, then it should notify him. And I thought that it all depends on the situation. 
He can switch to any other option at any time, but for now it's better to stop at option 1. The system asked to confirm his choice. Bai Wu thought that after all, he still had an enemy as a group of scammers. Attack, defense, retreat, so many people are preparing. He can't let them down. He lay down on the bed, picking up the flash drive that Master Wu had given him then. Thought it was worth finding out if the fat man could find something, and find out what Mr. Wu gave him. Two days later, Bai Wu went to see what was on this flash drive. He inserted this flash drive into his laptop and found that there were two folders on this flash drive. Two folders were called super secret information. Bai Wu thought that there was so little information. How would he know what they were planning next? Then Lao Wang called him and said that he had very important news. Did he find some information? Bai Wu asked, what is it? What did he find? Lao Wang said he had found a fake bank that was somehow connected to him. He will send him the address now, and he should go there. Bai Wu said that a group of scammers could uncover them. They need a disguise. After some time, they disguised themselves and came to the bank. Bai Wu asked Lao Wang what he found. Lao Wang told him in a whisper that he had heard. This bank receives large sums of money from the ancient society, and they also say it's related to those people. Therefore, he could not be rash and called him. Bai Wu thought that he was really admired. The fat man was really very reliable. Lao Wang suggested that Bai Wu pretend that they were going to invest, and then they will follow their trail. Yes, and his ability to find out all the secrets is better left for a last resort. After all, it consumes a lot of energy. Therefore, they should try to sort it out themselves somehow. Bai Wu thought it was because his energy was too low, and asked the system that this bank is somehow connected with that group of scammers. The system said that the download has started. Therefore, Bai Wu thought that it was clear that she was working normally now, it was not worth waiting for. It remains to rely only on yourself. After some time, they met in the office with some man who said that this was the best project of their company. It is tested by the market and brings a stable income. He also presented everything in detail in the plan, and I asked them if they had any questions. Bai Wu thought it looked like this company was unreliable in asset management, but he doesn't see the connection with their goal here. Lao Wang said no problem. They are investing 10 million. Bai Wu didn't expect this from him and hit him on the head. He asked him what who was. In his opinion, is the owner here. He wouldn't let him talk. And he told the man that he would consult with his consultant. The man said that he would wait outside. When the man left, Bai Wu said that after everything he said, he didn't see any clues at all. And asked Lao Wang if he was sure that they were connected with scammers. And he also said so simply that he would give 10 million. How does he think what would have happened then? Lao Wang said they probably would have found the evidence. Bai Wu said it was wrong. And I asked him if he was lying. Lao Wang said no, never. Bai Wu asked him if he had already forgotten what he had done for him. Lao Wang he said that it was fine, let him just not worry so much. He was really looking for clues here. He did not find the answers, but he found that many people from society are invested here. Then he thought that he could also make money on it, but he was afraid that he would be deceived, so he called him. Bai Wu told him to learn how to prioritize already. How can you be so greedy? Besides, didn't they decide that they would earn money together? They were going to cheat him, collect all the money from him and run away so that later he could not even buy a place in the cemetery. Lao Wang said no. Several of his friends also invested and made huge profits. He knows his place. During this time, he earned a lot with him. Well, what awaits them in the future? He wants to be always ready for the future. Bai Wu said he couldn't explain it to a fool like him, but he had to remember something. He will take care of his future. He should stop talking this nonsense and follow him. They left the office together where the man was waiting for them. He asked him if he was really leaving already. Bai Wu asked what? Is it really forbidden to leave here? Lao Wang told this man that his brother did not find him reliable. The man asked them to believe him to see them. The main shareholder and the boss are influential people. Especially in the ancient circle, they are influential figures. Bai Wu asked, what is the antique circle? The man said exactly what. Bai Wu thought that was really an influential figure from the ancient circle. Are they investing in an underground bank? But what kind of person could it be? Fatso, what is the forger's bank show by chance? How is this even possible? And I told this man that he would have said it earlier. He really likes this famous and influential antique circle. And I asked him what, maybe he would give him recommendations. He wants to meet their boss. If he turns out to be reliable, then he will give him the monthly income of the Lao Tzu Foundation in the amount of 3 minus 5 billion. The man asked them to follow him. They came to another office. Another man was waiting for them there. It was the owner of this place. He greeted the distinguished guests and told them they could call him Mr. Z. They'd better sit down and talk. Here Bai Wu, notice he has that ring on his hand. And I thought it was him after all. 
Dear uncle, Bai Wu thought that he was right after all. It's the same person. How many faces does he have? Then this Mr. Z asked what his name was. Bai Wu told him to call him Hei. A few years ago he was engaged in the sale of coal, but he had already given up on it. He had heard from his subordinates that he was a very important figure of ancient society, and I thought that maybe he should develop in this direction. Uncle Wu said that there is nothing complicated about it. It all depends on his connections, capabilities and, of course, capital. If he is interested, then he could bring him up to date. Bai Wu said fine, let him tell him everything. Uncle Wu said it was a very lucrative business, but the risks are not small either. But he should not doubt their professionalism. Bai Wu asked what kind of professionalism. He should just tell him how to make money, shouldn't he? And he thought that he should pretend to be an amateur because you need to talk to him. And I asked him that he was very poorly versed in antiques. Is it really possible to make money on this? Is it at least profitable? Can he just help him earn? What's in it for him? Uncle Wu told him that he must be joking. They are businessmen, nevertheless they can help him earn. Their operation is specified, he has nothing to worry about. Bai Wu said yes, they were going to use it. Do they really want him to invest in their empty chatter? Uncle Wu said that he did not understand it, because it was a trade secret. This is a rather difficult question, but he should not doubt their capabilities and authority. Bai Wu asked him if he really thought he was doubting. Then he should see his capabilities. He wants to invest in it. And I asked him how much he needed. Uncle Wu thought, who is this kid anyway? Is it really some local big shot? Or did someone else? Bai Wu said that how slow are they? Have you spent so much time on idle chatter? How can it be that antiques make a profit? Maybe he should find another company then. Lao Wang was delighted and thought that the boss was playing arrogance so cool. He didn't even dare to intervene. What should he do? Bai Wu asked the fat man that didn't he say there was a more reliable company. He should take him there. Dead Uncle Wu got up and called out to him. He told him that he shouldn't worry so much because they are an honest company. Recently, a lot of forgers have appeared. He needs to be very careful. Bai Wu asked him what he had just said. Uncle Wu said that recently they had a big antique business that needed funds. If you, Mr. Hay, could believe them, then they would have gone to a big plus. Of course, dividends will be paid in accordance with the investment. Bai Wu asked what is true. Uncle Wu said that, of course, he was so attentive. Bai Wu thought that he was still being cautious. Hi, but he is lucky if he is still used, then including in speech such big words as big business or lack of funds. Does this mean that this bank is really related to fraudsters? The system said that the probability of connections between the bank and a group of scammers is 100%. Bai Wu, seeing this, was surprised, but said that it was good, he impressed him. Then he left. When his uncle was left alone in the office, he said that this guy seemed to be a local big shot, but people were still afraid of questions about investments. Bai Wu wondered if the system had already recovered. Well, the system continued its loading. Then the Bai fell out, which is understandable. He will imagine that she is not there, but he still needs to sort it out somehow. They were already in the car, and Lao Wang was driving. He wanted to say something to Bai Wu, but at that moment he got a phone call. It was Master Qi. Bai Wu picked up the phone and asked if there had been any major events in the ancient society recently, something that requires a lot of investment. Master Qi said that indeed one family in abroad puts up for auction a large number of rare copies. There have even been a lot of buyers who are determined to buy them. After which, Bai hung up the phone and said that the antiques auction, large sums of money, everything seems to be starting to converge. And he thought, are they really going to forge foreign antiques? With their dexterity, it's like printing money for yourself. Since it so happened, first you need to deprive them of this money and bankrupt the bank. Bai Wu thought that the only problem was that he had no idea how to deal with underground banks. They are very careful and use only special money channels. Even if he succeeds in closing this bank, it is just a room. Besides, he has no proof, he cannot act rashly. After all, there is a whole organization of scammers behind the bank. You need to cope with one blow, otherwise you can't avoid trouble. It is necessary to discuss this with Master Wu and Master Qi. They will certainly be able to find a solution. He was about to call them, but then the system told him that, it seems, he is not capable of solving problems without the help of the system and external people. Bai Wu asked the system, what is it about? Shouldn't it be rebooting? Why is she complaining? The system said that because he is incapacitated without the system, he should, he should choose option C right now. Bai Wu thought that the system was looking down on him, 
but he would prove it to her. Without relying on the system or other people, he will be able to destroy the underground bank. Lao Wang looked worried and told his boss that he really didn't want to lie to him about today. Honestly, Bai Wu told him that if it wasn't for him, he wouldn't have realized that an uncle from the Wu family owns an underground bank. He is acquitted. Lao Wang was shocked and asked what he had just said. Is the owner of this bank an uncle from the Wu family? Bai Wu asked him if he really only realized it now. They are run by scammers. Didn't he know about it? Lao Wang said he was in shock right now. How could he have known that? But wait, if Uncle Wu is the owner of this bank, and the banks are run by scammers, then this means Uncle Wu is a member of a fraudulent organization. Only such a fat genius like him was able to find this secret. Bai Wu told him to be careful driving. Lao Wang said that okay, he can relax. And I asked him what it means he already guessed about it, didn't he? Bai Wu said that, of course, he analyzes perfectly. Lao Wang asked him what then, what should they do now? He's going to contact Master Wu and defeat everyone in one fell swoop, isn't he? Bai Wu said they had no proof. If they blindly try to crush the snake, then it will simply slip away. A more reliable way is needed. Lao Wang asked what if they destroy the bank now? But he's not, his friend's money is still there. If you do something to him, their money will also be lost. They need to be warned so that they withdraw their money on time. Bai Wu must have thought of something and asked Lao Wang to repeat what he just said. Lao Wang said he wasn't after money. He is very loyal and will not be able to just watch his friends go bankrupt. Bai was told him not to worry, so he doesn't blame him for it. He is his blessing. He has an idea. Uncle Wu came to Master Wu and told his grandfather that everything went fine in the company. And he asked, what should he do now? Master Wu told him to straighten his back and speak straight. Uncle Vuz did as he told him, and said that here he stood up straight. Master Wu told him to hurry up, because he gets angry when he sees him. If something happens to his company from now on, then he should deal with it himself and not involve him. Uncle Wu said it was fine. Then he bows out. He was already driving in the car, contacted the man and told him that he had charged his subordinates half of the amount to his account. The rest will arrive as soon as he receives it. Scar said it was great, he was doing a great job. He did the right thing when he entrusted the bank to him. After the operation is completed, he will score a high place for him in the organization. Uncle Wu asked, is it really true? And thanked Scar. After that, their call was completed. Uncle Wu asked, what is a high position? After all, in fact, he wants his post. When he completely subdues the entire organization, he will be able to make them pay. And the Wu family will be his too. He will control both the scammers and the Wu family. Light and darkness will be his from now on. Everyone in the ancient world will respect him. He had endured and humiliated himself for so many years. Finally, he will see the fruits of success. Then they called him again. He picked up the phone and asked what happened. He was informed that something had happened at the bank, and he was asked to return as soon as possible. Uncle Wu asked if something really happened at the bank. Uncle Wu was already going up in the elevator. He thought that he had humiliated himself in front of the Wu family for many years, hiding his claws, silently waiting for this moment. All the light and all the darkness of ancient society will be in his hands, and all of them are just steps on his path. He went up to the 28th floor and thought that he had nothing to be afraid of. Then the elevator doors opened, and he saw a huge crowd of people who were swearing. Did someone say that they should solve this issue? He wants to take his money, they have to hurry. An elderly man asked what he was carrying, because he had a contract. The woman told him to give her the money now. Bank employees tried to calm people down. I told the women to. Suffered. Is their boss coming now? The man began to assure them that their money was completely safe, and they had nothing to worry about. That's when their boss showed up. He said their company has never restricted anyone. Do they want to withdraw money? Let them take it off. However, they will not be liable for damages. According to the contract, they can only receive the principal amount. The man asked what, and what should they do then? The woman said that whatever it was, they should first take their money. An elderly man asked, what then does it mean that they invested in vain? The man who was standing next to Uncle Wu was angry. He asked why in vain. Their company has strong financial resources and a reliable reputation. How is it in vain? The man said he was leaving, rumors. Uncle Vuz asked, what are the rumors? It's good that he found out about it in time. The driver said that if there really were problems, they wouldn't be standing in front of them now, they shouldn't worry about anything. The man said he wasn't sure if it was their family savings. The woman said that even if this is the case, they still have to return the money to them. Uncle Wu said it was fine. They have to go through formal procedures, after which they will add them to the blacklist of companies, and ask the others that anyone else wants to withdraw money. 
the others asked him to give them more time to think. Uncle Wu chuckled and thought that they had spread rumors, alarmed his people, and were now retreating. It's a bluff to delay them. He needs to calm them down somehow. He turned to his driver and said what about the people he was looking for. The driver said he reminded them, and they're almost here. Then two men burst in, one of whom said that he had heard that it was much safer to invest here. The owner of this place is very talented and insightful. He's definitely reliable. Another man asked that where is the owner? They want to invest all their money. They have several tens of millions. The driver told Uncle Wu that it seemed to be them. Uncle Wu thought it was just in time. Turning to them to Messrs. Chang and Zhu, he greeted them and said that he was already waiting. After that, he introduced them to the people who gathered here and said that they were the influential people of Beijing. They came here specifically to invest in. An old man asked if it wasn't Wang Ergalu and Lai Huzi. Another man confirmed and said that yes, it was them. Then this elderly man asked that when did these jerks manage to become the big bosses of Beijing. He approached Mr. Chang and said that he still owed him 300 yuan. So where did he get millions from? Is this Mingbi? After that, a fight broke out between them. A man pulled a suitcase out of their hands, and it accidentally opened. There's no money here, just old clothes. Mr. Chan told the boss that they had been found out. Their performance didn't work. Mr. Zhang also took to his heels and said it wasn't their fault. The remaining dissatisfied people asked the boss, what are these his people? It seems that something happened to them differently, why would he do such a thing? The boss was in a panic, but told everyone to calm down, because it seems there was just a misunderstanding. He is not familiar with them. An elderly man asked that he didn't know. Didn't he just say that what was waiting for them? People were shouting that it was too dangerous to leave their money here. Someone supported this person and said that yes, their company is unreliable. After that, they attacked the boss and said that they wanted their money back. He should give them the money. The boss and his driver locked themselves in the office. The boss asked the man if these were the people he had found. The man said that his friends helped to contact them. The boss said that now the bank's reputation is destroyed, and the consequences will be disastrous. He can only give them all the money and try to calm them down. The man told him that half of the bank's funds had already been transferred. He is afraid that the remaining amounts will not be enough for the ellipsis. But then the boss got furious and knocked the lamp off the table, said it was all in vain. And I asked this man to find out who was behind it. He must kill this man. The man asked him if he wanted to use the back entrance. The boss slapped him on the cheek and told him not to panic. And he didn't push. Do we need to resolve this issue faster or is it all over? It seems he needs to take a chance. Uncle Wu called Xiao Liu, said he needed all the capital from the work account. Xiao Liu asked what all. But if Mr. Wu notices. But Uncle Wu did not let her finish and said that he would take care of everything himself. She just had to do what she was told. Then he ended the call. Then Ryu called him. He took the call, and his wife asked where he was now. He told her that he was a little busy right now and asked her if something had really happened. Ryu asked if something bad had really happened. Uncle Wu told her not to worry her head about it, it's alright. Ryu told him that whatever happened, he should share it with his family and not do anything stupid. Uncle Wu said that well he has to do something, so he hangs up. Then he said that God only knows what Ryu is doing there. Master Wu burst into the room, and he said that he had just heard their phone conversation. He wants to talk about it and asked what was going on. Uncle Wu thought it was very bad. It's about to be revealed. Master Wu said he was very surprised that one of his children turned out to be duplicitous. Should he tell him immediately? Who is stealing their family's money? And what kind of organization is this? And how much did he understand? This bank is connected with a group of scammers, isn't it? Can he explain all this to him? Uncle Wu thought he should dump the blame on someone. For example, on Bai Wu. In one fell swoop two birds with one stone. He took a deep breath, and I asked my grandfather for forgiveness, told him to listen to him, because everything is not as it seems. It's all Bai Wu. This is his bank, not his. Master Wu asked, what is Bai Wu's bank? But then why does he control it? Uncle Wu said that from the moment he joined this family, he let him down all the time. He wanted to do something to make his grandfather happy. Bai Wu took the opportunity and manipulated him into taking responsibility for the bank. He receives 5% of the bank's income. But as soon as he started doing it, this situation happened. He was so excited that he almost made up for the damage with the family's money. He admits his guilt, but it's all because of Bai Wu. Now he understood everything. Bai Wu is jealous of his wife and therefore wants to get rid of him. He asks his grandfather to believe him because they just took advantage of him. Master Wu asked him if he really thinks that Bai Wu is such a person. Uncle Wu said yes. He is a hypocrite and in fact he is insidious and cunning. Master Wu asked that he was now claiming that Bai Wu had deceived him, wasn't he? 
but can he prove it? Uncle Wu said he was ready to prove his guilt. He will bring justice back, and he thought that he seemed to have figured it out. Then Bai Wu entered the room in his disguise, and asked Mr. Z why is he on his knees, and said he was glad to meet him again. He seems to be very busy today. At that moment, Bai Wu took off his disguise and asked if he didn't recognize him. He heard that someone was accusing him here, that's why he came. Uncle Wu turned pale all over and thought that no, it's impossible. How did he reveal it? Bai Wu asked him that did he really think he could get away with it. Uncle Wu said it was all because of him. Bai Wu patted Lao Wang on the shoulder and said that yes, he had asked the fat man to spread those rumors so that people would start taking their money. The fat man asked that wasn't it thanks to his wide connections and influence that everything worked out for them. Their group of scammers spread bad rumors about him tooth for tooth, an eye for an eye. Bai Wu said the same goes for his two visitors today. They were replaced by his. Uncle Wu said it was no wonder they revealed themselves like that. So he framed him. Bai Wu said that he noticed that money from bank accounts began to be transferred to fraudulent organizations and to organize an auction of fake foreign antiques. He took out a flash drive and said that the proof was here. He foresaw that he would covet the Wu family's bank account. Master Wu had been keeping an eye on his people beforehand, and he clearly heard their phone conversation. Then Master Wu joined in the conversation, who said that he came here before her rest with the last hope he wanted to give him one last chance to confess and get on the right path. But, unfortunately, he let him down. The Wu family accepted him, and he spat in their face. But the most unforgivable, he swore an oath to a group of scammers. Uncle Wu told him that he knows better than anyone why he did it. When Bai Wu heard this, he thought, was there really something that made him do this? Uncle Wu said that wasn't he the one who made him like this. Master Wu was furious and asked Uncle Wu what, did he mean to say that it was his fault? Uncle Wu asked what, but didn't he? He became like this only because of him. Lao Wang asked Bai Wu, what is going on here? Bai Wu said it looks like it's not that simple. Master Wu called Uncle Wu an asshole, and I asked him what, how dare he bite the hand that feeds him. He threw it and asked him what was wrong. Let him say what he did. Uncle Wu got to his feet and said that ever since he became the happiness of the Wu family, he constantly looked down on him. No matter what he did, he was always unhappy. He considered him incapable of anything. Did he really think he couldn't run the company? He underestimated him. He has become his enemy. He will help destroy him to everyone who hates him. He will show him what he is capable of. He will prove to all of them that he was wrong about him. And he also asks why he became like this. And what does he have to do with it? Lao Wang, wiping the sweat from his forehead, said that in large families everything is always so confusing. Bai Wu said that's why uncle became like this. Master Wu exhaled and said that this was what had always tormented him so much. He sat down on the sofa again and said, everyone except Bai Wu should leave them. After everyone left, Master Wu said that Father Rui and Zio Zio had left them early. He couldn't hand over the family business to such young girls. Rui is too soft and Zio Zio is too hot-tempered. If they became heiresses, it would be very difficult for them. When he became part of the family, that's when he checked his data. His abilities may not be strong, but he had a character. If he has to develop everything, he could become an heir. Uncle Wu the intemperate said that he had been rude to him since he became part of their family. He was always picking on him. Master Wu said that you can't bind a sharp blade. I won't finish reading it. He motivated him to make it better. Unfortunately, he was never able to understand his efforts. He crashed the first obstacle and decided to go the slippery slope. Then Uncle Wu realized, and he asked, does this really mean that he doesn't hate him? Master Wu said that if he hated him, he wouldn't be responsible for their family's biggest company. If he hated him, would he let him marry Rui? Uncle Wu asked what does it really mean that he was wrong all this time? It turns out that he was to blame for everything. He started bowing at Master Wu's feet and said that he always thought he was smart, but it turns out he's an idiot. Watching all this, Bai Wu thought that he felt so sorry for him. Master Wu said that their family would not be able to raise him again. He must sever all ties with the scammers. He would like to comply with the laws, expel him from his family and put him on trial. Uncle Wu said it was all his own fault and he would accept any punishment. Master Wu said that their family would not allow someone like him into the family. For the sake of Rui's reputation, he should get a divorce. Uncle Wu said it was fine. He doesn't want to involve Rui in this. He'll get divorced. But then his wife ran into the room and said no, don't. Everyone was in shock. Uncle Wu asked her what she was doing here. Master Wu told her to stay in the car. Had she been eavesdropping all this time? Rui stood up for her husband and told her grandfather that since childhood she had always obeyed him. But this could not be. 
She's not getting a divorce. Uncle Wu told his wife to come to her senses. She'll be better off without him. Rui said no. Because he is her husband and in sorrow and in joy they should be together. She hugged him and said that they exchanged vows. And no matter what happens, they will always be there for each other. If he leaves the Wu family, then she will leave too. The Wu family treated him so unfairly, and she was so blind that she didn't even notice it. What happened is also her fault, so she should leave too. Uncle Wu hugged his wife and told her that he was wrong. He wants to move forward, but he constantly makes mistakes, he is to blame. Bai Wu did not bother them and moved to the exit. I thought that this only concerns their family. He is superfluous here, so he should leave. He fought for fame and fortune, but did not appreciate those who were nearby, so he lost. You need to become the best version of yourself for the sake of those who are next to him. He didn't finish so badly. The underground bank may have closed down, but its claims against forgers have only increased. Things can only get worse in the future. Meanwhile, Scar contacted his man and said that the bank had closed. They did not have enough funds to hold an auction. He was currently looking through the papers with information about Bai Wu. Scar said he underestimated him. In his rage, he scattered all the papers and said that he had to die. Bai Wu was talking to Mr. Chi. Mr. Chi told him that it was all thanks to the fact that he found the bank so early otherwise the forgers would have raised a huge amount at the auction. And the consequences would be simply terrible. Then Master Wu also intervened in the conversation, who said that he was completely right and thanked Bai Wu. He destroyed an underground bank in one fell swoop. Great job. Bai Wu said that it was good that everything ended well. Master Wu picked up the phone and told him not to be modest. If he hadn't stopped him in time, it would have been tight. But how could the Vo family allow such a thing? Bai Wu wanted to say that Miss Ryu after all. But Master Wu interrupted him and said that she was more likely to give up her inheritance than her missing husband. He would accept whatever choice she made. But they won't talk about it. His old friends will be back in town in a few days. He should come too. Bai Wu thought that friends. Are they also from the ancient circle? Does Master Wu want to help him expand his influence? Could it be that this is a thank you for the bank? He also needs to thank them somehow to go to the forgers. Master Wu said he would let him know when they arrived. Bai Wu said that if so, he would be in touch. And he thought that the bank was destroyed. Now the scammers have a grudge against him. But knowing the methods, it can also kill him. The system reported that this is a very high probability. Then Mr. Chi took the phone from Master Wu here and told him to let him talk to him. Mr. Chi told him that big events were just ahead. He remembers that soon there will be an election for the title of elder of which he spoke. Bai Wu thought that already. And he said that, of course, there will be elections of the main members. Mr. Chi said that they officially meant his core member. They are only waiting for confirmation. But he heard that there were still people who recommended many people. And they are all very famous old men who know their business. But he knows that Bai Wu is very talented. But other old people will be more skeptical. Bai Wu thought that his influence connection was really inferior to others. The two elders had already elected him. If he couldn't convince the others, then he would lose. But in fact, with the system, he would have nothing to fear. But now there is not enough energy in the system, which makes it seem weak to everyone. He will be able to detect fraudsters who have infiltrated the organization. They will be able to predict it. Not only will he be able to get a membership, but he will also kill two birds with one stone. Master Chi told him that there may be accomplices of scammers among the chosen ones. They cannot claim this. But as long as he is here, they will find them. They can't lose. Master Wu took old Chi by the hand and told him that it was Bai Wu. What was he talking about there? Sir, Chi asked him to let him go because he is discussing business. Bai Wu thought that these two trusted him too much. He shouldn't give them a ride. If there is no escape from adversity, then at least he will clear the ancient Cool K from intruders. Maybe he can get rid of them completely. But now a group of scammers wants to kill him. But even without the system, he will be able to find them. There's a system here. He was told that the probability of a threat from a group of scammers is almost 90%. For leaving Hashu, he will receive 95 energy. Bai Wu didn't expect her to answer him and told her that she had scared him. There was so little energy in her. Sir, what did you ask? What energy? What is he talking about? Bai Wu realized that he had said it out loud and explained to Mr. Chi that he was saying that the phone was low on power. And he thought that maybe he really should go and fight monsters in order to replenish his energy. Danger. But he already knows about it. Running away will not solve his problem. Sooner or later they will collide anyway. Sir. Chi said that he would not distract him anymore. Bai Wu asked him to wait and thought he needed to talk to them about the scammers who had infiltrated them. Without the system, the support of two elders is simply necessary for him. He told Master Chi that regarding the confirmation, he had a few ideas that he wanted to discuss with them. 
He's coming to them now. He immediately went downstairs and drove the car to them. All this time, a man was watching him through binoculars. Seeing that Bai Wu was going somewhere, this man grinned. Bai Wu was driving along the road and there was a very slow truck in front of him, which he decided to overtake. But at that moment the truck broke down. This truck crashed into him. Bai Wu got out of the car, all scared, said he was alive. His whole life flashed before his eyes. He called on the phone and said that there was an accident at the intersection. He told by phone what exactly happened and said that there were no fatalities. And he himself thought that it was really just an accident, because a little more and he would have been dead. The driver of this truck was also very scared. But that system informed him that the probability of a threat from a group of scammers is almost 90%. Bai Wu remembered that the system had already warned him about the danger. Could everything have been arranged in order to remove him under the guise of an accident? The police arrived at the scene and said that they had looked at the surveillance cameras and concluded that he was innocent. The truck driver will take responsibility. He can leave, but only as soon as he contacts the insurance company. Bai Wu thought that this driver looked very respectable. And he told the policeman, well, the people from the insurance company will take care of the rest, it's time for him. And he thought that if the driver had nothing to do with it, then maybe it was his car. Could it be that the criminal is among the crowd? He'd better get out of here soon. He went down some street, and then a cactus almost fell on top of him. Bai Wu raised his head up and shouted that there were people there. And then I thought, what if it is too and rushed away? Then a motorcycle came towards him, Bai Wu deftly dodged. He thought, is it really a murderer? And the motorcyclist shouted at him to watch where he was going. After some time, he reached the center and, looking around, thought that it should be safe in crowded places. Maybe, of course, it's already overreacting. I don't think they all wanted to kill him. But there are a lot of cases for coincidence somehow. Whatever it is, God takes care of it. We need to get to the master as soon as possible. It will definitely be safe there. Much safer. The streets are full of people. It will be difficult to defend yourself. But if you get out of the crowd, he will be killed in some alley. In addition, they may be armed. There is a subway with weapons in this shopping center. They will definitely not let you in there. He was about to go down the stairs, but then someone accidentally pushed him. He turned around and thought it was the killer. But it turned out to be an elderly woman, which also fell because of him. He thought that she scared him to death, but it seems that she really did it by accident. He asked her for forgiveness and said that he was very sorry. The woman said that nothing was her own fault. Her ankle hurt and thanks to him she did not fall down. Here the system told him that it captures energy. Bai Wu thought what other energy? The woman grabbed his hand and said she was scared of the attack and thanked him. Bai Wu said she was too polite, not worth it, and he thought that he still needed to be saved. But the woman took him by the hand and said, no, that she should thank him and invites him to dinner. Bai University said it wasn't worth it, and I thought that it would be nice to eat. But a restaurant is a crowded place and it is unlikely that anything will happen there. And besides, she is very strong. Then they got to the restaurant, and the man was watching him all the time and giggling, thought that he finally got caught. He was holding a test tube in his hands. The system said it was advising him to leave a dangerous place. The probability of a threat from a group of scammers is almost 90%. Bai Wu and this woman took a table. That man was watching them and thought I was invisible until he got it in his mouth. Meanwhile, Bai Wu had already cut off a piece of meat and was about to eat it. The man said that, yes, that's how he should try it. After Bai Wu put this piece of meat in his mouth, the man thought that he would die in three hours, and no one would even know the cause of his death. But then Bai Wu choked and selected this piece. The woman asked him what happened. He should rather try it, he looks so skinny. Bai Wu smiled at her, and he thought, did the chef make a mistake with the seasoning? Why does he feel such a strong taste of soda? The man was furious and thought, did he spit it out? Had he discovered something in him? Bai drank a glass of water, thought that the steak with soda tasted so strange. Did the chief come from another planet? And if the steak is poisoned, then he choked it all. The woman got up and started slapping him on the back, asking if he really choked. Apparently, he eats too fast. The man who was watching all this was delighted. Then the Bai Wu system informed him that the steak was sent 100%. But the user was poisoned by 0%. He thought he wasn't poisoned, but the steak was poisoned. What the system means is that he only managed to survive because someone made a mistake trying to poison him, right? Is there a killer here somewhere? Then he looked at the man, and the system said he was a 100% killer. As soon as he found out, he pretended that nothing had happened. The woman asked him what he didn't like, didn't she? Then what else would he like to taste? He can order any dish he wants. Bai Wu said there was no need for that. 
is the stake okay? And he himself thought that it was very likely that it was just an attempted murder. It seems that staying in the crowd is not so safe, and maybe he even dragged an innocent person into it. This man laughed and thought that this time he would definitely die. After some time, Bai Wu said goodbye to this woman. The man followed him and thought, how is this brat still alive after such a dose of poison? It's strange, because he was supposed to die of a heart attack. Meanwhile, in the killer's lair, there was now an accomplice of the murderer who took the poison from the table and said that who tore the label off his bottle. He barely recognized her. This man kept chasing Bai Wu. He thought that he must have been simply deceived by an unscrupulous seller. He has to rely only on himself. After which, he began to catch up with Bai Wu. Bai Wu noticed this and thought that this rush was in good physical shape. He tried to poison him, but he's still alive. Then he abruptly sat down in order to tie his shoelace and thought that he had failed to poison him. So he wants to push him under the car so that he would hit him. Right. This man remembered that he was told to remember not to panic. He should die in an accident. And he himself thought that this was what the boss needed to complicate everything so much. He just needs to take him to a deserted place and then kill him and be done with it. Meanwhile, Bai Wu was trying to get away from this man with a quick step. He looked around and asked, what did he do? But here we have a whole show of cries for help. It was the man who was drowning in the water. Bai Wu said that the killer fell into the lake. But then this guy smiled at him and Bai understood everything because this guy is just pretending that he fell into the lake. He wants him to save him. And he, taking advantage of this opportunity, will drown him. He'd better get out of here as soon as possible. But at that moment, this man's leg cramped. And he started screaming that his leg was cramped. Then Bai Wu he really got scared and said that was he really drowning. The fishermen also caught themselves and asked someone to help, asking who knows how to swim here. A man is drowning. Bai Wu asked the system if he was really in danger or just pretending. Should he watch him die without even trying to save him? The system has started downloading. But Bai Wu couldn't stand it and shouted to everyone to disperse. He handed him a stick and told the man to grab it quickly. And I thought that he could not afford to think about whether he was a criminal or not. It was a matter of life and death. Should he save him first? Then all the other people caught themselves and said they needed to help him. After they pulled this man out, everyone started praising Bai Wu. One of the fishermen said he was so smart. Another fisherman said that he was very brave and quick-witted. Without his help he would have died. The man with glasses said what a good man he was. Then the system informed him that she had received some power. Bai Wu thought that really all systems are powered by. I gave him that system that it was a 100% falsification. He was actually sinking 98%. Bai Wu thought that this guy really faked falling into the lakes in the hope of killing him when he rushed to save him. However, then his leg actually cramped. That's the whole point, isn't it? How stupid he is after all. And he also made a mistake with poisoning. The killer is so stupid. And how did he just manage to escape? Well, now they'll see how he catches it. Bai Wu called the fat man and told him to come to him as soon as possible. Will he send his location? He shouldn't hang up and listen to him. Then he looked in the mirror and saw that man and thought that he knew that he would not give up. He just wants him to chase him. Then this man noticed that Bai Wu was walking towards him. So he quickly walked up to the shop where the woman was selling underwear and asked how much it cost. The woman said that 30 bucks each, two pairs of 50. Bai Wu walked past him and, talking on the phone, said that he suspected that someone was trying to kill him. He should get him out of here as soon as possible. When Bai Wu walked past him, the man exhaled, thought that he seemed to sense danger, but thanks to his intelligence, he did not realize that it was coming from him. But this brat is cunning. He reached for his little knife, which was in his inner pocket, and said that now he was forced to act. He started chasing after Bai Wu, shouting that he owed him money, asking him where the hell is he running off to. And the man himself thought it was better to pretend to be a collector. It'll cover his ass. Bai Wu ran into the alley, but realized that it was a dead end. He turned around and told the man not to approach him. And I asked him what, when did he manage to owe him money, because they don't even know each other. The man told him not to pretend. He's had enough. Someone asked him to kill him because he annoyed someone who shouldn't have. And he took his knife out of his jacket. Bai Wu asked him to wait and asked him that how much did they pay him. He will pay twice, no three times more. The man asked what three times. And he thought that it would be enough for him for the rest of his life. He is afraid of him. But what if you ask him five times more? Bai Wu said that if he is not satisfied with the triple payment, then he can offer five times more. Just let him let him go. The man thought that was how he found out. He was just a rich coward. But if he lets him go, he will be killed. After all, they are much stronger than he is. He can first extort money from him, and then kill him. It's a great plan. And told him that as soon as he said he would give him 500,000 yuan, he would be free. 
he has to transfer money from his phone right now. Bai Wu said she didn't have that much money in his mobile account, and I asked him that he could go home with him so that he could pay him in cash. But the man told him not to move, and I asked him that he was deceiving him, wasn't he? He doesn't believe a word he says. At that moment, Lao Wang had already arrived to help Bai Wu. He jumped over the wall with the bag, and the man told Bai Wu to give him the money. Now and quickly, Bai Wu noticed Lao Wang and told the man that okay, now he would give him. And already turning to Lao Wang, he said that now. After that, Lao Wang jumped off the wall and put a bag on this man. The man asked who it was, who caught him. Lao Wang started hitting him with a stick and said that he had asked for it. After some time, Lao Wang exhaled, said that the scoundrel was so heavy, he was already tired. Bike sat down to this man and asked him that he was hired by a gang of forgers, wasn't it? If he tells the truth, he will not punish him, but instead will even give him some money. The man just called him a jerk and said that he shouldn't even think about it. He will not attach a professional to his employer. Bai was asked him that he was a killer with moral principles, wasn't he? As far as he knows, there was a million yuan bounty on his head. How dare they give him only 10% of the total amount? The man asked what a million. But Mr. Dao always paid 100,000 for each murder. Just like this time. And he asked Bai Wu that how did he know how much he was being paid? And where did he get the information about 1 million? Is Na 5 trying to deceive him? Bai Wu thought that Mr. Dao. It seems his assumptions are correct. He's hired by a gang of forgers. Then Mr. Chi called Bai Wu and asked him what, why isn't he here yet? Lao Wang kicked the man and told him to be quiet. Bai Wu told Mr. Chi that he had encountered some problem. Mr. Chi, terrified, asked him what had happened. He should have had Han Tai pick him up. Bai Wu said that it was not necessary. He had already completely figured it out. Don't worry so much about him. It's late today. And I asked Mr. Chi if he could come to him tomorrow morning. What does he think about this? Mr. Chi said that of course, since everything is fine with him. Before the start, let him go home, and tomorrow he will send someone to pick him up. He has to take good care of himself. The police have already arrived at this place, and Bai Wu asked Lao Wang to deal with him. Lao Wang said that it was fine, let him take care of himself. Bai Wu asked the system that when will it finally start working. The system told him that she got some power. Dai Wu thought that he didn't want to see these idiotic notes, they were already infuriating him so much. The system said that the chance of a possible danger is almost 90%. After all this, Bai Wu went to his home. It was already very dark, and he thought that he was so exhausted today. However, he barely managed to escape. He got into the elevator and headed to his floor. He thought, how much trouble. He really hopes that they will leave him for a while. But will they come back sooner or later? Were all the troubles he had encountered today accidental? Or is it a trap that has been prepared by forgers in order to catch him by surprise? Or the gang wants to kill him once and for all, if he only relaxes his vigilance? It won't be that easy. Two days ago, Scar was on the phone again and said what a strange guy. He really underestimated him. They have to plan everything well. If the assassins sent by them manage to finish him off, then it will be fine. And if not, then let them wait until he loses his vigilance. They will show him where the crayfish hibernate when he does not expect it. He must die. Bai Wu entered his apartment and turned on the light. He thought that, however, the killer was so stupid. Is he really a professional? Or is he just the weakest of them? A gang of forgers will definitely send someone else. Then the system said that the owner was in serious danger. Then a man burst into his apartment with a knife. Bai Wu thought it was too late. The system said that the owner is in serious danger. The protection mode is activated. And when the man stabbed Bai Wu with a knife, he didn't even hurt him. Bai Wu thought she had blocked it, but why? This man grinned and thought that he was just lucky. The phone saved him. Then he attacked him again and cut his hand. The system said that it lacks energy, so it can no longer protect its master. Bai Wu thought it was just awful. He grabbed an ashtray and threw it at this man. But the man deftly caught her with one hand. Then Bai Wu found a spray can and a lighter on the sofa and asked this man that he wanted to do everything quietly, didn't he? The man put an ashtray under the TV and said he was right. Even if he makes a lot of noise, he can still kill him before he leaves. He should take his word for it. There were a lot of alerts from the system in which it was written that the system does not have enough energy, so it can no longer protect the host. The probability of the owner's death increases greatly. She is developing a new plan. The probability of the owner's death increases greatly, and the system strongly recommends that its owner update it immediately. Bai Wu wondered if it would work this time. He will upgrade the system only if it gives him some powerful weapon, such as a shield or armor, which could restore him countless times. The man told him that he had better stop resisting. 
and let him look here. The combatant looked where this man was pointing him and thought, what is Wu Zio Zio doing here? The girl was lying unconscious in the corner and was tied up. Bai Wu was very scared and thought that he was planning to commit arson in order to leave him and then escape himself. But this plan won't work even if he runs into what will become of Zio Zio. The man told him that if he wanted to continue, he didn't mind. However, he must think about his beloved girlfriend. She came to him this morning, but he wasn't at home, so he opened the door for her. Bai Wu asked him what he had done to her. The man said that he assured him that he would not dare to do anything with a representative of the Wu family. He just pumped her up so that she wouldn't cause him problems. If she dies because of him, then he can't even imagine what her grandfather will do to him. But it will only be to his advantage. Bai Wu was interfering and thought, what should he do now? He can only unite with the system in order to fix it. But how will it affect him? Will this update save the situation? The man told him that it was better for him not to shout and put the pepper spray in place. He won't hurt him for burning himself alive. After that, the man approached Wu Zio Zio and put a knife to her throat. Bai Wu shouted at him not to touch her, and he was already ready to start a fire. The man asked him if he had thought well, should he throw pepper spray, and just accept it. Bai Wu thought that he had no choice but to activate the last plan. He threw a lighter and pepper spray and told the system that he wanted to try plan C. The system said that the activation of this plan would begin soon, the system would receive energy from the host. The unification begins. Bai Wu told this man that he could kill him, but let him let Zio Zio go. It's very important to him, and asked him to give him a few seconds, because he wants to say goodbye to Wu Zio Zio. The man said it was okay. Put your hands behind your head and on your knees, and let him not even think of deceiving him. Bai Wu did as he said and thought that even if the system worked faster, he would not be able to buy so much time for it. The system said it was recovering. Bai Wu asked the girl if she still remembered the first time they met. A park bench she appeared out of nowhere and crashed into him. Bai Wu thought that he had to endure this in order to carry out the plan. After that, he continued to carry on his nonsense. The man couldn't stand it and asked him what he had already finished. He can't wait any longer. Bai Wu asked the system, what, how much longer would it take? This guy is very impatient. The system said the update is almost complete. He should be patient. After that, Bai Wu began to beg this man to give him some more time. It was so hard for them together. At first, Master Wu did not allow them to meet, as he considered him a poor man. He put a lot of effort into getting his confession. They just wanted to be together, and he himself thought that he was behaving like a matrilocal son-in-law. He buries himself when he says such nonsense and asks the system to hurry up. The man kicked Bai Wu and said he didn't care what happened between them. They should think about it in the next life. Stop resisting already, he won't succeed anyway. At the last moment, the system said that it had recovered after the update, and the process of endowing the host with power begins. Then Bai Wu grabbed the man by the arm. This man was very surprised and asked, what the hell? How did he suddenly have so much strength? After that, Bai Wu started beating the man. The man said it was simply impossible. Then Bai Wu was exhausted and fainted. He woke up already in the hospital. Wu Zio Zio and Lao Wang were next to him. The girl was crying and said that he finally woke up. Two masters Qi and Wu also came to his ward. Mr. Qi told Bai that he was so glad to see that he had woken up. He lay there for three days. Master Wu said that the doctor said that he was just overworked and that he would be fine. Bai Wu got up and thought, has it really been three days? Are you really the consequences of using the system? Master Wu approached him and, hitting him on the back, said that he had dealt with the killer alone. What a great guy he is. If it wasn't for him, Zio Zio would have died. Bai Wu said that, but he also put her in danger. This killer, Master Wu said that Mr. Chi was so concerned about him that he asked Huing Tai to follow him. He saw the mess in his apartment when he arrived there. Sir, Chi said that his carelessness was to blame for everything. He did not expect that they would hire a professional killer. Thus, the loss of the Hawala intermediary will not cause huge damage to the classifiers, which will push them to use even more terrible traps. Bai Wu turned to the two masters and said that there was enmity between them and the gang of forgers, so they would definitely use insidious means to deal with them. And since that's the case, they'd better get it over with as soon as possible. Sir, Chi told him to tell him already what he was up to there. Bai Wu said that the test has a high degree of importance, so the forgers will do everything in their power to stop them. They should take advantage of this situation and find all the rats that are hiding in the antique society, and then they will be able to take the initiative to completely eliminate their group. It's dangerously risky, but he wants to try, and ask them what they thought about it. Master Wu said it was just fine. He's been having the same thoughts as him for a long time. 
but he hasn't had such a good opportunity before, he can't disagree with him. Sir, Chi said they should get rid of the traitors. But since this is such a large-scale case, he does not know how the chairman and the others will react to it. And as for the liquidation of the group, they will not be able to cope only on their own. They need to enlist more support and help from other societies. After listening to both masters, Bai Wu thanked them for supporting him. And he said his plan might be a little cruel. And he told the masters that they could discuss it later, but in the meantime he would prepare for the test. Sir, Chi told him that he should get a good rest first. And after he is discharged, they will discuss everything down to the smallest detail. Two masters were already standing in the doorway, and Master Wu told Master Chi that he was behaving like a coward. How could he even think of such a thing? Master Chi said they would discuss it later. When everyone left, Bai Wu thought that he had barely managed to escape. But these killers must be patient, because soon he will make them all pay for everything. He turned to the system, said he knew it was working properly now, and asked it to boot faster. Then some light appeared, and Bai Wu asked what it was. The system said that using part of the system's energy to force the owner's gain would affect its loading speed. However, the system has been successfully upgraded to version 2.0. Bai Wu asked, is it really serious? Now the system mocks him even more and stops working at the crucial moment itself. The system told him that she wouldn't do that, is it clear to him? Bai was told her not to be so rude. First she should just tell him what she took from him in order to recover. And why did he sleep for three days? The system said it was the owner's decision, so the system does not take responsibility for it. Bai Wu asked, is it really all for the sake of fixing it? Why is this responsibility not on her? The system said he was lucky. The energy that the system received from its owner during the repair is not important in itself, since it would not be able to have any effect on the health of the owner. And I asked him that he was not satisfied with something. Wai Wu told her that he was fine with everything. The system said okay. And the next question, this is very urgent. According to the analytical data of the system, the owner had no chance of winning due to a significant difference in strength. Therefore, the system made a choice in favor of mentally stimulating the host in order to provide him with a short-term influx of energy. Undoubtedly, the energy level is closely related to the health of the host, and yet it is too weak. Bai Wu said how rude. The system said that you are always welcome. Bai him thought that it meant that what he experienced was the result of surges of additional energy. It can be regarded as the last breakthrough. He can work with a limited amount of time, and after that he will be forced to wake up for three days. But he really helped him turn the situation around, it's cool. Then he will train more. The surge of energy will be more powerful and last longer if it is stronger. The system said that dreaming is not harmful. He has the opportunity to transfer the gym membership to someone else if nothing works out. Bai Wu asked her if there was something else that was slow, except to mock him. The system said that the new version of the system could become his friend. It has a friendlier interface. Bai Wu asked me to tell you about it in more detail. He was told that the systems would develop several plans of retreat after the analysis. He'll find out about everything when they use it. Bai was asked, then where did she get the energy from that time? The system said that changes whose bred abilities can provide the energy system. He wouldn't understand anything even if she explained. He needs to do more right things. Bai Wu thought that he needed to calm down. He was just annoyed to death by the manner of communication of this system. The system informed him that he had spent his luck on restoring the system, so she had to rely on him. Therefore, from now on, he should treat her better. Bai Wu thanked her for her understanding, and asked her what she meant, that he would not lead, right. He took a deep breath and thought that he had run into a lot of trouble over the past few days, so he didn't care anymore if he ran into a few more. Can a loss turn into a profit? Updating the system also gives it many advantages. The forgers now it's his turn to show them what he's capable of. Scar called on the phone and said that yes, they lost again. They asked him what he said, that he hired a professional killer, right? Chance said yes, he knows him well, he has never been defeated. He doesn't know what happened to him this time. The man said it was okay. He should suspend the plan for a while. He won't be able to do anything with it before the test. The trial is about to begin and he has prepared well. This time he will personally deal with him. He will bring it to him after the plan is completed. Wai Wu was still in the hospital. He got a call, Mr. Chi. Wai Wu asked him that his meeting had already ended. Mr. Chi said that yes, he was there. He officially informs him on behalf of the Council of the Antiquarian Society that his application for becoming a candidate has been accepted, and the test will take place within two days. Wai Wu said it was fine. And he looked very worried. He thought, why is Mr. Chi speaking in such an official tone? Did something really happen? 
Mr. Chi said he would be given a written statement that describes the rules of the test, should he prepare well. The system informed him that the rules had not changed in his favor. All members of the jury are in isolation in order to prevent any leakage of information. Did Bai was tell Mr. Chi that he would try? Master Chi said that he had to remind him that he was recommended to Masters Wu and them. Shouldn't he let them down? He must do everything in his power. Bai Wu told him not to doubt. When their call ended, Bai Wu said that Mr. Chi must be in a crowded place. That's why he spoke to him so formally. What he said to him at the end should be regarded as the news that he had done everything he asked for. All 12 core members will come. It's his time to shine. Wu Hongtai seriously told him to fight, he would succeed. Meanwhile, in the meeting room of the Antiquarian Society, all the members of this society gathered there. Master Chi said that he had passed the information to Bai Wu, and I asked the others who, what are their thoughts? A vice president named Li Defeng said that everything was fine. This is in their competence, they have no doubt. Master Wu said that so, since no one has any objections, he suggests that this be the end of it. The main member named Kain Yuta stood up and said that the meeting was already over, they shouldn't be so serious. It's such a rarity when they can all get together. Besides, their wives aren't here. Did someone offer everyone a drink? And someone supported this idea and said that you need to enjoy this opportunity. They'll have a great time. Someone laughed and told the president that he had failed to deceive them this time. The president said that, of course, he is invincible in drinking, why would he deceive them? They know that last time he was with his wife. An hour ago, a president named Santei said that no one is allowed to cheat today. He looked through the papers and said it was a young man proposed by Mr. Chi and Mr. Wu. One of the core members named He Jiangguo said that he is young and has potential. He is four or five years younger than the invisible man when he joined the main squad. Everyone was horrified by these words. The master of the university asked that why he started talking about him. He must stop immediately. One of the members of the antiquarian society said that the two of them would not allow their candidate to break into the main team. It's that simple, isn't it? If you do not take into account his abilities and qualifications, did he at least graduate from university? Sir, Chi said there's no need to worry about it. They are responsible for Bai Wu since they recommended him. They can personally check it out if they want. Another member of the society said that then they would know what he was worth. In addition, they should give way to young people. Kane said is there a need for him to personally check it out? It's a waste of his time. Master Wu asked him if he was really afraid of losing to him. It would be humiliating. However, he can let his candidate fight Bai Wu. There is another candidate. He should ask him to come here and participate in the competition. And there they will see who is the most talented of them. Kane turned away and said that Dom. And I asked him that he wanted to arrange a competition, didn't he? The person he suggested is a well-known collector in their society and will be able to easily beat him, so let them compete. Let him ask for other candidates and ask who he recommended to participate in the competition. The president said that it was inconvenient for this person to get here. To begin with, it is better for them to discuss the additional stage of the elections. A core member named Siakaiti that Mr. President is right. Only one or two candidates will reach this stage of the election. And according to the rules, the candidate who scored more than half of the votes passes the test. This time they have three contenders and the winner will be the one who scores the most points. Kane said that, however, their experiences of dignity should also be taken into account. He's right, their strong point. Abilities are also important. They will be greatly disgraced if they take on this position of a random person, without any talents. Zhao Jingeng said that they welcome young and talented people, but the winner must have all the necessary qualities. Then one of the members of the society said that it was necessary to stop arguing already. All their opinions have a right to exist, and asked the others if they could listen to his opinion. The test result can only show a person's personal skills, which is quite objective. And as for the merits, the outcome will depend on their votes. He thinks that the final result should be determined in two stages. And I asked the Steel Ones what they think about it. Master Wu couldn't stand it and jumped up and said that it wasn't fair to buy Wu since he was young. They said they would give way to young talents, but who would vote for him after all? Kane said that they would, of course, vote for the person who would suit them. Does he think it's a good idea? The winner of the tests will have to score the highest score and will get more than half of the votes. Master Wu was furious and asked if they were in their right mind. Follow their ideas, they will not get any result of the by-election. What are they trying to achieve with this? They'd better go out to talk, he'd like to know what he means by that. Then two members of this society got up and began to calm him down. Mr. Chi thought that Mr. President also put up his candidacy, but what does he want? All these years he was out of elections. Why was he involved in the process this time? 
Kane obviously opposes Bai Wu, so he may be part of that faction. And Mr. President must already be aware of this. Then one of the members of the society got up and shouted that it was enough to argue. They should all monitor their behavior. Each of them occupies an important place in this society. Isn't that right? They are all adults, isn't it? Do they behave appropriately to their position? And having already turned to Mr. President, I told him to say something already. He can't take control of this situation. The president said he thinks Kane's words make sense. This is cruel, but the additional stage of the election is very important for the antiquarian society. They would rather leave this place vacant than put a random person on it. Everyone else supported him, saying that Mr. President was right. That man said that the Minister President is right. It's really very important. And ask your two other friends that they are going to study abroad next week, aren't they? He is afraid that only they will be able to keep this situation under control. The president asked him what he meant. The man asked if they should conduct the tests ahead of schedule. Thus, each of them will be able to take part, and he will be calm for the stability of their conduct. One of the candidates will win and receive their universal recognition. And I asked the president what he thinks about it. The president said it made sense. Master Wu whispered to Mr. Chi that if everyone participated, how would Bai Wu manage to get more than half of the votes? Sir, Chi said that's right. He's right. However, this is exactly what Bai Wu asked for. Antiquarian society. Bai Wu was already on the spot and thought that he would definitely pass this test. And no matter how difficult it turns out to be, he intends to get rid of the traitors. Then a car pulled up and the vice president of this antique society got out of it. The male escort and the men from the crowd exchanged glances. Someone from the crowd shouted that he was pleased to meet him. And these two men, who exchanged glances, passed something to each other. A man from the crowd said that it was the vice president. He had heard that he was the chief specialist in the evaluation of porcelain. Another man asked which one of them. Bai Wu asked, what is the vice president? The system said he was a 100% traitor. Bai Wu thought that he didn't expect the vice president to turn out to be a traitor. Since he had already found his church, he had just entered the game today and was very lucky. Then a man noticed him and asked that he was that unknown young man, wasn't he? He is very glad to meet you. Bai Wu said he did too, and they shook hands. And he himself thought that this man was probably a candidate from a gang of forgers. Has the other participants arrived yet? Then an old man came in and said he was so sorry. He apologizes profusely for keeping them waiting. Bai Wu wondered where they found such an elderly old man. He looks more like a specialist. All of them were watched by the Society of Antiques through the TV. Kane said that Mr. President even invited Mr. Jet. The test will be conducted remotely. The man told him that he had heard that if Mr. Jet wanted to take this place, Mr. Sun would not be the current president. Another man said that yes, he was at an advanced age. They say he is two years older than Mr. President. The president said it wasn't true. He is two years younger than him. The viewers who were just watching this test were also watching them. One of them said that all three candidates had arrived. The tests will be honest. Three participants will enter the hall, then take turns examining antiques. The jury members will watch their performance through the screen, and then a vote will be held. The winner must not only get the highest score during the evaluation of antiques, but also win more than half of the votes of the jury members. Both conditions are mandatory. If the test scores seem to be equal, then the victory goes to the one who spent the least time on it. If the candidates receive the same number of votes, then Mr. President will personally determine the winner. After hearing this announcement, one of the spectators said that he needed to go soon, because the competition would begin soon. After hearing this announcement, Bai Wu thought that, of course, he would score the highest test waves. But as for voting, who will give for him with his icon among the main members? Besides, the traitors are definitely trying to cheat. The rules are against him, aren't they? Then they announced that the competition was starting. All three participants entered the room with antiques. They stared at one of the antiques. Bai Wu thought that the system had upgraded to version 2.0, it would be a piece of cake. Then they began to walk around and look at all the things. Bai Wu one entered the performance room. The other two participants were surprised and said how fast he was. Bai Wu thought that he didn't say the answers out loud because he needed to maintain the right bar. The members of this society were also shocked. One of them asked if he was serious. Another said it only took him a few minutes to check the antiques and he was already done. Kane said that the current generation behaves so self-confident. Here they were interrupted by Master Voi, who said that Tisha the candidate was preparing for a speech. Bai Wu came into this room and introduced himself as a member of the jury, saying that his name was Bai Wu. He said that one antique item is a golden elephant bowl of the Xuan era, the Ming dynasty. This series was first produced on time three years ago. 
its luster is visible and the color is well preserved. Its current market value probably ranges from 17 to 20 million. The next item, a jade figurine, was a fake. It was produced about 10 years ago. It is made by a modern craftsman who works in the style of Yangju. The quality of the work is excellent. The third item is a three-color ceramic product covered with glaze from the Zhang Guang era of the Tang Dynasty. At the moment there are only a few similar ones. A ceramic product of this kind is characterized by a market value of more than 30 million, which is an excellent purchase. The jury members began to check his information and more interference, saying that he was absolutely right. Master Wu was proud of him and said that yes, it was a great job. Bai Wu kept saying that the antiques at number 10 belonged to the Wu Zong era. Kane asked how this could have happened. And I thought that did this brat also know the topics in advance. The president said that this young man is definitely very talented. And I thought that he accurately told about every antique thing. But he coped too quickly. Which is pretty hard to believe. Something strange is definitely happening to him. Another member of the jury said that he is young. But already knows so much about antiques, it is such a rarity. Another man said that moreover, he was not mistaken in any detail about these items, even named the year in which they were made. And the market value he provided is pretty close to the truth. He shows great promise. Another member of the jury also supported him and said that besides, he quickly examined all the exhibits. Where does this young man come from? The vice president said yes, he had impressed him today. But still, it's kind of too much, isn't it? Then Bai Wu said that that was it. The evaluation of 10 exhibits was over. He was told to go to the break room and wait for the rest of the participants to finish their performances. Bai Wu thought that he had correctly told about all the things and spent the least time. So that's what it's like to be the best among all. It's all thanks to the fact that he has a system. The system said that it was the complete new and improved version of the 2.0 system that would be its only correct solution. Bai Wu thought, is she really bragging about this? The system asked him that he didn't even have to strain his brain to answer all the questions, did he? He wondered if the system could even be so crude. The system told him that he should be smarter, but he is not, by the way. They said that candidate number two named Mr. Wu should start. Bai Wu entered this room, which also had a TV, and he thought that from here he could watch him answer questions. The man began to say that this exhibit belongs to the Yongjin era of the Qing dynasty. Bai Wu thought that he also knew quite a lot about antiques. However, he is wrong about the Ru Kiln type, which imitates the style of the Song dynasty. However, it was produced in the Yongjin era of the Qing dynasty. Obviously, the color refers to the type of Yao Zhu Kiln, however, he said otherwise. He's wrong. Then how does he manage to answer questions if he makes such gross mistakes? And given his age and experience, he shouldn't have shown himself like that. The system told him that he had prepared in advance. Bai Wu was shocked and thought that was he cheating. Did he know the topics in advance? How could this happen? After all, the jury members were isolated long before the test. He had no contact with the participants. The system told him that he was not only stupid, but also extremely inattentive to details. And she showed him the fragment when the vice president's guard handed the man a note. Bai Wu thought that was for sure, but will he be able to get proof? The system said he couldn't do it. This man flushed the note in the toilet before the start of the competition. Bai Wu thought how mean it was. It was not so easy to get evidence. Moreover, he cannot prove that the vice president is also connected with this. Then another participant came to Bai Wu. Bai Wu smiled at him, this man just chuckled. Now the last three participants performed. Bai Wu thought that he was trying so hard to outdo him, but he did not succeed from the word at all. So he has no manners. And as for the one who goes last, he has no chance of defeating him anymore, since he has spent too much time. Even if he scores as many points as he does, so he doesn't have to worry. He has to meet all these bigwigs and from the jury if he wants to figure out the moles. The plan he had discussed with Master Chi should have succeeded. Then he was still in the hospital and told the Master, Chi, that all the jury from the Antiquarian Society probably wouldn't recognize him just like that and the moles would immediately want to take advantage of it. The master, who's told him that first he and Wu would be with them, and then they would act against them by all means. And when they think they have already won, he will convince all members to hold by elections. Bai Wu said yes, so they wouldn't suspect Master Wu and him. Right now, Bai Wu thought that the rules of the test had been changed. The candidates and the jury cannot meet in order to prevent cheating. Did they miscalculate in this? It was announced that all the candidates had completed the test. Now they will announce the test results. One candidate, who is Bai Wu, answered 10 questions correctly and spent 16 minutes on it. Two, the candidate, whose name is Mr. Wu, correctly answered 10 questions, spending 28 minutes on it. Three, the candidate, whose name is Mr. Ji, 
answered 10 questions correctly and spent 43 minutes on it. Then the members of this society contacted them and told Bai Wu that it was a great performance. Although he is young, he already knows a lot about antiques. Among the 10 antiques, some are fake, while others are genuine and they were made in different dynasties and different types. But Mr. Bai he told the smallest details of these antiques and answered questions without hesitation, which happens very rarely. It was a flawless performance. To be honest, they have been in the antique society for quite a long time, but they have never met such an erudite young man like him. Bai Wu said he was flattered. He just learned a lot from the elders from his family, and he himself thought that he thought this was their plan. First they will praise him, and then they will try to fill him up. Just then, this man said that it would be a pity if he missed the opportunity to ask him a couple of questions and asked him that he didn't mind, did he? Bai Wu said that, of course, he was only in favor, and he himself thought that this was exactly what he wanted, just perfect. Then the man told him that among the antiques there is a Ru oven that imitates the style of the Song dynasty and was created during the Qing dynasty. How do they know everything? The Ru Furnace is the official furnace of the Song Dynasty, but it is rumored that it is also the Im Furnace of the Northern Song Dynasty, and asked Bai Wu what he thought about it. Bai Wu thought it was a history question. He clearly considers him uneducated. Or does he have some other purpose? The system said it was 50 minus 50. Bai Wu thought so. This question was prepared especially for him and the moles will definitely not let him rest. Perhaps they came up with the idea that it would not be difficult for him to determine whether the antiques were genuine or to find out its details, but they decided that he could not cope with the history. Because he is still young and not that experienced, it will not be difficult to pass the test, but what should he do after that? What should he do if their votes are equal? The gentleman asked him what, why was he silent? It must be too difficult a question for him. He learned crafts very quickly, but then why is he silent? Well, it's kind of weird. Bai Wu asked him if he really thought he was cheating, and he thought that he was the one who cheated, but was trying to blame it on him. The gentleman said he didn't say that. He thinks that today he has already surpassed himself on the test, given his age and level of education. And I asked Mr. G what he thought about it. The old man said he didn't know if he cheated or not, but he was just wondering how he managed to look at all these antique items, because he spent so little time examining them. Bai Wu thought that they started knocking him down as soon as there was even the slightest chance. It's great, he will give them more such chances. He can't wait to see what they do next. In other words, the official furnace of the Northern Song Dynasty. The gentleman asked him what, why did he suddenly start stuttering? He also talked about fakes without hesitation. Bai Wu was actually delighted and thought that let him continue like this. The president thought, doesn't he really know that? But it can't be, can it? Someone from the jury said that his answer was very different from how he described antiques. Master Wu began to defend Bai Wu and asked the man what he meant by that. Kane said that Mr. Chi has the right to inspect all the materials and things of the antique society. And the two of them recommended Bai Wu. He thinks that everyone already understands what he is leading to. The vice president told them to stop. After all, he trusts Mr. Chi, he wouldn't cheat. Did Master Wu tell Kane that he was mistaken? What did you say to Master Chi? Who said that, however, as he knows, he can even conduct an investigation. But only he is not the only one who has such a right. That president told everyone quietly. I suggested that everyone listen to the candidate first. Bai Wu said that as for the official furnace, it appeared during the Tang Dynasty. It was presented to the emperor or some official. As for the porcelain of the Tsung Dynasty, the official furnaces always mean those made in Bianliang and linen. Opened by the Imperial Court of the Northern Song Dynasty and the Song Dynasty, respectively. According to Gu Wenjian's Fushuan novel about the Northern Song Dynasty during the reign of Xuanzheng, the Ru Furnace has been considered an official furnace since the time of the Northern Song Dynasty. So to some extent, initially there was no official furnace in the Northern Song Dynasty. The whole jury was shocked. Only Master Wu and Master Qi were happy for him. The president was also delighted. Bai Wu thought that how could he let them old men bully him when he had a system? Or do they really think that everything will be so simple? Bai Wu said that this was his answer and apologized for keeping them waiting. And he himself thought that he was already wondering what they were going to do next. Master Wu said come on, where is the one who was against Bai Wu just now? Doesn't he want to say anything? Kane admitted that he had answered correctly. And I asked Mr. Chi for forgiveness for what he said about him. Master Chi thought it was pretty close to failure. Thank God to Bai Wu is smart and knows this period well. The man who asked Bai Wu this question said that his answer was good. He was impressed. The vice president told the candidates that they could rest for now. Bai Wu thought it looked like they had started discussing. 
he is already looking forward to the results. The vice president suggested that they should just forget all the differences and return to the discussion. Kane said that yes, his answer was certainly correct, but why did he answer for so long? Besides, he was so nervous then, it seems to him very strange. Master Wu started shouting at him and said enough was enough, and he asked that they could not just forget about it. Can they discuss on the merits or are they just opposing Bai Wu? Master Qi thought that in order to figure out the so-called moles, Bai Wu specifically answered for so long. Therefore, he needs help. And he said that, again, they may suspect him, but they have no evidence of his cheating, so they accuse him just like that. The vice president asked them all to shut up and stop arguing already. And turning to Mr. Chi, I told him that he was a wise man, so please don't let him argue over such little things. Yes, Mr. Bai is ambiguous, it's just that he really shocked all of them, and he suggested that everyone just check it again. If he still passes another test, then without a doubt he will be the winner. This will be a test where he can prove himself. Besides, this will stop them all thinking that he cheated somehow, and I asked the chairman what he thought about it. The president said that this young man is really unusual. He'd say he's just amazing. And I asked his masters that maybe they would check him for the last time. Master Chi told him that as he wished. The president said that it was good, he thought that he, too, would not mind. And as for the additional test, Bai Wu wondered if they hadn't decided yet. Did these moles notice that he pretended on the last question? The system said no, they didn't notice it. He's not such a lame actor, but they still think the situation is under their control. Bai Wu asked her if she really meant that they had a backup plan. They've thought it all out well. How do they want to get rid of it? The vice president said that since Mr. Chairman agreed with his proposal, each of them should prepare one product, and Bai Wu would have to verify their authenticity. Thus, Bai Wu will not know the antiques in advance, nor about the test itself, so he can show them his real skills. And, of course, this way he will prove to them that he did not cheat. And I asked the master what he thought about it. Master Chi told him to just do it. However, now that each of them can choose an antique, then why not ask Bai Wu to come here and check for authenticity right in front of them? Then no one will doubt the honesty of the additional test and continue to suspect him. Someone from the jury said that Mr. Chi was right. Mr. Chi exhaled also because it seemed to have turned out what Bai Wu asked him to do. And now it's up to him. After some time, all three candidates went to another room. There they were met by the jury. The vice president told them that choosing a key member of their antique society is very important. After discussion, they decided to conduct an additional test. And I'm already turning to Bai Wu. I asked him to try to show them all his knowledge. This is his chance to prove himself. Bai Wu said he understood. He will take it very seriously. And he himself thought that of course he would take it seriously. But are they already ready to admit defeat as old people? Has he prepared something for them? The vice president thought that it didn't matter if he was lucky then, or if he somehow cheated, but nothing would help him this time. Bai Wu thought that he would have to check the authenticity of this antique before he found these moles. He even wonders what they have prepared for him there. The system began to show him the truth of all these products. Almost all were 100% fake, only one thing was a 50% fake. Bai Wu wondered if these crafts were made by a group of forgers. The system said it's almost 85%. The vice president told Bai Wu to start already. Bai Wu thought that it turns out there is only one item not made by a group of forgers, isn't it? But apart from the moles, all the other old men believe that the antiques they presented are genuine. The system asked him what he was only wasting time on such thoughts. He's some kind of fool. Bai Wu thought that they didn't know that antiques were fake. The vice president watched him closely and thought that he still had milk on his lips to go against him. He knows that he is capable of responding. To say about the authenticity of antiques will not cause him any difficulties, as long as he proves that items that others consider mean are fakes. Everyone will think that he definitely cheated, and no one will believe him anymore. The vice president said that since each of them can choose an item, it's better for them to show their most precious antiques. The president said that of course, and I asked him if he remembered that he had shown him the porcelain that he had recently bought. The vice president looked closely at Bai Wu and thought that even if he was already starting to care, if he ever made a mistake about their antiques, he would not only offend them, but also lose any opportunity to prove his case. Bai Wu also looked at him and thought that did he really think that he had already defeated him. Even if he can prove that this antique is a fake, then these old men will not be offended, and he will lose their votes. How mean it is, but that's exactly what he wanted. He should just wait. After all, he has an idea. After which he said that these four items are authentic. This ceramic pot with enameled lotus of the Kangxi period, He Qing Dynasty. A box with pink gardenia from the Guangxi period, Qing Dynasty. 
Buddha sculpture in bronze and gold wooling of the Wangal period, Ming Dynasty, and a ceramic pot from the Zhang furnace of the Song Dynasty. One of the jury adjusted his glasses, said that everything was right, and Cain thought that he didn't know anything about his subject anyway. Hereby University said that as for these two subjects, these two subjects are very interesting. They are half genuine and half fake. The president asked him what he meant. Bai Wu said that as for the Celadon teapot with carved flowers of five dynasties, its bottom, lid and handle are authentic, but its shell itself is fake. This is a modern fake. The original parts were added here not so long ago. As for this Buddha sculpture from the Tang dynasty, more precisely, or rather, he wanted to say that the exact period when it was made should be in the middle of the Tang dynasty, as well as the early years of the Huang dynasty, the middle of the reign of the Ming dynasty and the middle of the reign of the Qing dynasty, and even restored in modern times. Kane was shocked and thought, how does he know this? Bai Wu said that, as everyone knows, antiques are a valuable treasure that their ancestors left them. They store a lot of historical and cultural information, people have to restore them in order to show the characteristic features of each dynasty. The sculpture itself was made during the Tang dynasty, but it has been restored many times. But why is she here? He understands that one of them has to restore it, doesn't he? The president thought that, as he thought, he was good not only at valuing antiques but also. Bai Wu looked at everyone and thought it was time to start, and he said that as for the other five items, they are fakes. Then one of the jury members asked what he was talking about. What other fakes? Bai Wu said yes, that's right. All five are fakes. The vice president told him that it was better not to joke. These items are their collections. If he considers them to be handicrafts, then he must show them the evidence. Bai Wu asked, what is the evidence? Kane seethed with anger and said that it was so. He is obliged to show them irrefutable evidence. Otherwise, his words are just an empty place. Bai Wu said that of course, as they wish. The vice president chuckled and thought that the only proof is inside the porcelain. It is impossible to prove it without breaking it. He dared to break the vat with the nine dragon patterns just because Chi was protecting him. But will he dare to repeat the same thing here? He can't do that, can he? But then Bai Wu broke this vase. Kain couldn't stand it and started shouting at him, asking if he was really crazy. The vice president was very surprised and thought that he really broke it. Do we really have so much confidence in ourselves? One of the jury members was shaking with anger and asked him what the hell he was, how dare he break his antiques. And he asked someone for help, after which he began to call the guards. Then the guards burst in. Bai Wu did not expect this and thought that he really called her. And I asked the system that he messed up again, didn't I? But the system told him not to worry, because he could still rely on it. The president was very surprised and thought that he really broke it. How brave. They're getting more interesting. But Master Wu stood up for Bai Wu, and he asked the others what, who allowed him to touch it. To which his friend said that he himself had just seen what he had done, how he could protect him. The guards have already started tying him up. Bai Wu told the others that they themselves wanted evidence that would prove that the antiques were fake, right? He will show them to them, and if he turns out to be wrong, he will give them tenfold compensation. And he himself thought that the system can't be wrong, so he's right, anyway. The vice president thought they would have problems, and told Bai Wu that he was too rash. He broke his vase without their permission, he doesn't respect them at all. The owner of the vase said that it was he who should show them respect. Master Wu told them to shut up and I asked them what it means to show them respect. Do they even hear themselves? Another member of the jury said that this is how a young man should act, isn't it? Master Chi thought that, like the vat with the nine dragon patterns, this item should also be from a group of forgers. He remembers that it was he who brought this porcelain here. Is he really this small because of a group of forgers? Bai Wu was dumbfounded and thought that he didn't expect this to happen. They don't give him a chance to prove anything at all. But then Master Wu slapped the guards on the hands and told them to move away. Kane was quite angry and asked Master Wu that he was still protecting him. Has he gone completely mad? Master Wu asked if he was crazy. If he had really gone crazy, he wouldn't be talking to him like that right now. Can't they give him a few minutes to prove the forgery? If he is wrong, then he will compensate for it. They seem to be wise people, but they behave like small children. The president said he was very brave. Well, since he broke the porcelain, so let them give him a few minutes so that he can prove that this is a fake. If he turns out to be wrong, then they can do whatever they want, at least give him to the police. Bai Wu was surprised and thought that he didn't expect Mr. Chairman to help him at such an important moment. The vice president wanted to say something to the chairman, but the chairman indicated with a gesture that he did not want to listen to him. The vice president thought that everything was very bad. 
The chairman sided with Bai Wu. Meanwhile, Bai exhaled and said that, as he knows, the craft of antique objects has existed since ancient times, and they know how many groups of forgers exist now, and every year they make their crafts more flawless. He just doesn't want them to remain deceived. He didn't expect it to hurt them so much, he apologizes wildly to them. And turning to Mr. He, who is the owner of this vase told him that this porcelain cost him a lot of money, didn't he? Mr. He said that of course. Bai Wu said that well he would tell him about how he found out that it was a fake. He started digging through the wreckage of this vase and then found the same QR code and asked them to look at it. Everyone was shocked. One of the jury members asked how it happened that there was a QR code in the porcelain. It turns out that it was hidden inside the porcelain during its manufacture. Bai Wu said that the one who made this craft is really a master of his craft. Every detail of the porcelain is made perfectly. Who can do such a thing? But he thinks they should know more about it than he does. And he himself thought that everything was going like clockwork. The 2.0 version of the system is just awesome. Then the chairman asked him what, then how did he find out about it? Bai Wu told him that he would just immediately recognize the fake antiques that were made by this master. And now he, too, was lucky enough to find out his fake. The chairman thought he was really amazing. Bai Wu thought that it was not so easy to convince the chairman. So he said it was funny, but this master is quite vain. He hides a QR code inside each product, which he makes a very eccentric person. Each of his products has this code, so you can only find out about a fake by breaking it. Kane was still very angry and asked Bai Wu what he was looking at, that he was just lucky. But he better not do that, and after all, luck is not infinite. Bai Wu thanked him for reminding him of this and said that if he ever made a mistake, he would pay every penny. But he was right, wasn't he? The loss of fortune and fame may not be such a big problem as if they find out that they are engaged in the production and sale of fake antiques. It's going to be a huge problem, isn't he right? People are not saints, they have their flaws. But those who are engaged in the production and sale of fake antiques are worse than the villains. Whatever position they are in, they have to figure them out. And he himself thought that it looked like the deputy chairman was not directly involved in these crafts. He's pretty calm, but he's involved in this, isn't he? The system said that he is involved in this by almost 84%. Then the chairman got up and said that they had all heard Mr. Bai's speech. It's a shame for them. Now he thinks everyone trusts Mr. Bai and there's no point in smashing the rest of the items. There's no need for that, is he right? Did Bai Wu think that the chairman was protecting him or someone else? He needs to watch him. The chairman said that he thinks that all of us should now check the items they collected. If they are not sure of their authenticity, then it is worth checking other experts. They should not sell them until they are convinced of their authenticity. If these crafts continue to be sold, then blame yourself. Then the vice president turned to Bai Wu, and he said that he had one thing and asked him if he could check it. Bai Wu thought, why is he being so nice? The vice president smiled at him and said that he seemed to understand porcelain, but still made a mistake. Mr. He said that Mr. Vice Chairman was right. People tend to make mistakes. Another man said that there are so many antiques from different dynasties. Even an experienced expert can make a mistake due to ignorance of the smallest details. The other man said that yes, it is. Bai Wu thought that these old men with, they are trying to disown any troubles and justify themselves. Then the Vice President grabbed him by the shoulder and said that thanks to the reminder of Mr. Chairman, he wanted to say that he had a subject in which he was not quite sure and I asked him if he could confirm its authenticity. Bai Wu laughed and said that he was probably just joking. He will definitely weigh it when he has time. And he himself thought that he always tried to keep neutral and egg others on. Now they think that the vice chairman has nothing to do with the individual items they bought. And he's as unlucky as they are. Then the vice president told everyone that the hour was already late. They should hurry up already. And turning to Bai Wu, he said that there was the last antique left. But it would be worth checking for him, wouldn't it? Bai Wu realized that he was being cunning again. Well, they would see what the object was. The system told him that it was 100% fake. Bai Wu began to examine it carefully and thought, what is wrong with this vase? The system, having scanned the whole vase, said that the trace element is missing. Bai Wu thought that this forgery was made by another group of forgers, didn't he? The system said that yes, this is exactly the case and there is no QR code 100% in this antique. The system also told him that this technology of making fakes is simply perfect. Its shape, style, and pattern are exactly like the real ones. But the materials from which she made are slightly different, but it is simply impossible to prove this without the necessary tests. She regrets it. Bai Wu tensed up and thought that he thought it would be much easier. The system also told him that this item belongs to Mr. Chairman. Then Bai Wu was really scared and thought that it belonged to Mr. Chairman. 
The chairman has already helped him several times. If he screws up now, then he will no longer be kind to him. Then the vice president came up to him and asked Bai Wu that he looked bad. Is something wrong? And I asked him to study this vase better. This time it's better to be more serious and take your time. Bear thought that maybe he was being nice again. It couldn't be. So he needs to focus. Breaking this vase is no longer an option. He will not prove anything by it. Well, the composition of the material can only be checked with the help of some special equipment, right? The system told him that he was right, but no equipment would allow him to check the material without damaging the item itself. Bai Wu thought that the item would be damaged, but this item belongs to Mr. Chairman, so it won't be difficult for him to convince him, right? He wouldn't mind a little damage, like a hole there, would he? The damage will be minor, so the products will be almost in perfect order. Had he specially prepared this vase for him, and he is even ready to check the material, he knew that authentication would not be difficult for him, so he could easily fake the verification results. Is this really a hopeless situation? Won't the system help him too? The inspectors will be the front man of the deputy chairman, right? Or they'll just fake the test results, won't they? But the system told him that the person checking it was the deputy chairman by 0%. They will fake the test results by 0%. And she told him that he had her, but he was just getting dumber and dumber. Then she hit him. Bai Wu asked her if it was really necessary to beat her. What the hell is he up to? The system said that she had already given him a bunch of tips and now let him try to strain his convolutions at least once. Bai Wu thought that he had a serious rival for once and she immediately throws him. But okay, he will figure it out himself. So the item belongs to Mr. Chairman and the only proof of forgery is the composition of the material. He must be testing it, not intentionally creating difficulties. Well, then why such an ideal craft? He is the chairman, and if he proves that his antiques are fake, what will he tell him then? Could it be that he would say that he didn't know it was fake? Come on, he's the chairman, but what is this stuff? The vice chairman will definitely oppose him. In any case, he will say that he is wrong, but then what should he do? He was the one who took this vase, which belongs to the chairman, so he could quite do something with it. Perhaps he replaced the original with a fake. After all his thinking, Bai Wu said to the chairman, What? As for the last item, if he is not mistaken, then it belongs to him, isn't it? The chairman was surprised, as was the vice chairman. After that, Bai Wu whispered in his ear that his antiques had been replaced. The chairman was even more surprised and looked questioningly at Bai Wu. From hopelessness and ignorance, what should he do already? The vice chairman asked Bai Wu, What? Why doesn't he tell everyone? But the chairman told him not to interrupt them. After Bai Wu said everything he wanted to the chairman, the chairman stood up and told him that he needed to go with him. Then they moved into his office. The chairman looked at Bai Eva carefully and told him to tell him everything now. Bai Wu said that if he understood correctly, then his Celadon vase from the Yu Furnace of the End of the Dynasty is there. And she has something to do with the deputy chairman, doesn't she? The chairman said that, of course, because they bought it together, but in the end he gave it to him. Bai Wu asked him if he could tell him everything in detail. He would like to make sure of his guesses. The chairman said that the fact is that, after he told him the whole story, he said that somehow so. The Evo thanked him for telling him everything. The chairman asked him what he was saying, that it wasn't his vase there, but his vase was replaced, divided, wasn't it? Then what about the evidence? Bai Wu thought for a moment and said that he probably thought he was a little strange. And how he finds out about the fakes. He probably thinks who he is. Is he a fraudster or has he something to do with it? The chairman said that yes, he was right about what he thought and asked to tell more about himself. Bai was said that he would tell him about how he determines the authenticity of a thing a little later. And he offered to talk about his vase first. The outside of the vase is this craft, but he can't prove it directly. In addition, this is not the same group of forgers that made past crafts, so there is no QR code in it. The only proof is the composition of the material from which it is made, and the composition can only be checked with the help of special equipment. The chairman said the inspection would definitely damage the vase, so he's afraid he won't agree to it, isn't he? But Bai University said that it's not really. He is worried that they have secretly replaced his vase. He believes that the one he had was genuine, but the one that this fake was replaced with, if he had said it in front of everyone, they would not have believed him. Even if he somehow believed him, the others would definitely not. The chairman said that, come on, no one will oppose him anymore. Bai Wu said that if he had arranged for the vase to be inspected, they would have replaced the fake one with the original one. The genuine vase would have been damaged. Therefore, he would have been wrong in any case, they would have definitely replaced her. The chairman asked him what he meant by the vice chairman and his people. Bai Wu said that as the chairman said, the vice chairman and he happened to see the same vase. He thinks it wasn't an accident. 
The deputy chairman specializes in porcelain. If he sees such a treasure, then he won't give it to him so easily. He might not have tried to buy it back with him, but he would have offered a higher price behind his back. But he's not who he claims to be, so he must have bought a perfect fake of this vase before they met. That's why he gave him the original one, which was intended for his subsequent plan. And it happened right now. As deputy chairman, he can open any of the departments of the Antiquarian Society, where there will be as many of his people as he wants, except for those who belong to the Evaluation Center and the Laboratory. The vice chairman arranged all this as if it was him and would even replace the inspector. He is ready for anything against Bai Wu. He had been planning this for a long time, so he should have known about it long before. And Bai Wu himself thought that he had no serious evidence, and he needed to finish the test first, so it's not worth taking these moles now. Then the system told him that it congratulates him on becoming at least a little smarter. Bai Wu was surprised and thought, was he really right? Then the chairman sighed and said that it was his own fault for what had happened. He neglected the management of the antiquarian society. Bai Wu noticed that the chairman was quite depressed. The chairman asked him what and what should they do now? What should they do? Bai Wu said they should avoid the trap. He won't break the vase, but he won't let him check it either. He will find a move that belongs to the chairman and then he will not need to prove that it is a fake. He thinks the real one must be here somewhere. The chairman thought that he was too smart, it was even amazing, and besides, he was kind. He got up and said that he understood everything. He should hurry up, find the genuine vase, and go with him, catch moles.